Hey, I'm, uh, so I'm still stuck up here on the, the ISS. I've been waiting for food for ages. That's the reason I'm losing weight is because they just had these crappy packets up here. Um, I've got my cat and it's just been shitting everywhere. Look, you need to send help. And the best way to send help is to share my stream so NASA might see it. Um, so what I'm saying basically is share my stream. There will be robot dancing. I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that does the stupidity what Professor Dave did to James Tor live on stage. That was fucking brutal. Yeah, don't swear in the first 30 seconds of your stream, Craig. YouTube doesn't like that. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining once again. I hope you had a wonderful Saturday. Um, you probably wouldn't have seen it yesterday because the uh, idea of giving $25 to a flat earther is repugnant to most people. So the pay-per-view debate I did against Brother Sanchez yesterday actually went quite well. I destroyed him as usual, but of course, in the normal Flat Earth way, um, he claimed victory and patted himself on the back with his flock in the after show. Um, Jaronism was actually a great moderator, which is, is, is strange, and has led to a possible conversation between me and Jaronism. Um, I will be posting the entire debate. Uh, I'm allowed to do that, as well as making an episode of Flirts or Idiot, so look out for that in the next couple of days. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it was fun. A lot of fun. Um, the, this debate is, once again, uh, with Gene Techman, um, the baby Flurf. He was on the channel um, like last week, but my internet hamsters died because I didn't feed them enough cheese uh, and the stream got cut short. So I do apologize if, if you super chatted during that stream and didn't get it read out. I'm very, very sorry and thank you very much for your support. Um, but let's just get on with it. Uh, Gene, hello. Welcome back to the channel. How are you doing? What's up, Craig? How you doing, my man? I'm doing good. Let me actually put the right screen on there. That will probably help. There we go. Um, thank you for coming back again. And I'm... Um, Apologies about the uh, issues last time. Yeah, that's okay. Um, there, there's no satellites over uh, where you live, so I mean that could be an issue. Well, I, I don't yet get my internet from satellites, um, but my Starlink is due to arrive soon. So soon, I will be getting sa uh, my internet from satellites, which is going to be good. Debating flat earthers from space. <laughs> uh, in, in case the people don't know who you are, do you just want to take a minute introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm, uh, my name is Gene Techman. Um, I am a truth seeker, uh, perspective, um, perspective uh, guru. I, I love it all. Um, give it to me from all angles. I wanna, I wanna understand life, the world, challenge science. Um, I am a, um, a a person that is completely open to anything and everything is possible. Um, I I am a, a skeptic. I uh, do not trust government, and uh, I'm I'm here to discuss the flat Earth. And I think conversations like this are important because we get to evolve from our old uh, caveman thinking when we do. Right, cool. You said uh, you like having it given to you from all angles. I I assume that's the title of your sex tape, yeah. 
Uh, definitely, definitely, uh, my sex tape. I have an OnlyFans, so you know, if um, if you if you want to hit me up, then uh, I can definitely, uh, I can definitely, sh- I can definitely give you a show. <laughs> right. So, uh, in our previous discussion, we um, we went over uh, refraction things, you know, being too far away, etc. And we uh, we just started to talk about um, radio and Marconi's um, transmission across the Atlantic and stuff. So, do you just want to carry on with that? Uh yeah well and where did we leave off we were we were getting uh, getting into the thick of the uh, the the ideal of radio Marconi uh, Marconi um, I like to call him the grandfather of radio uh, some some of the basic principles of radio um, I think it's very simple when you just take the animal kingdom and you look at a, a couple of different animals I like to use whales and I like to use bats uh, for a for a very prime example um, as as you know um, they they use um, Sound. They use sound for communication. They use sound to sense where these objects are. You know, you can see a bat. I don't know. I don't know if you see bats around uh, the area of the world where you live, but I live in Michigan yeah, in the nighttime. Scotland, yeah, you know, and you, you, can, you know, as a kid, I remember just throwing little things up in the air at them. Uh, I don't know if I was necessarily supposed to, but I would throw like little no. pieces of maybe hot dog or you know whatever. It's probably the worst thing you could probably do in the in the in the true like ecosystem of uh you know. Uh, man conflicting with animal but um, one of the things obviously you could see is they would see that object you know it could be pitch black and they could see that object because they're using sound and um, that being said um, in order order for an operation like that to work similar to radio um, it only makes sense that that could work on a flat surface Um, when a radio works there's a there's a transmitter and then there's a receiver just to be very basic Um, so if if Let's just say I'm a ship and I'm in the middle of the ocean in uncharted territory. Um, there's nothing that's going to be able to tell me what's up in front of me, around me, 360 degrees, except for my radar. And how that's going to work is I'm going to send a signal out. And we have all seen that, that you know, that, the, the, the picture of a radar. Bloop, bloop, right? It's scanning. 360 degrees sending out a frequency and now that frequency has to bounce off something or it's completely empty radio it just gets shot out right it doesn't come back so it bounces off an object um depending on the the power of that radio uh depending on the the frequency of that radio that's going to determine obviously how far it can it can see and obviously that radio is going to bounce off of something and then that frequency needs to return back to the receiver that's on that same very vessel that sent out the signal in the first place now in order for that to happen that can only happen on a flat plane because we're uh, we're ultimately stating that we're sending out a signal it's curving around however the dist- however far the distance is on the globe it's bouncing off of that object and now that frequency then has to come back perfectly back to that receiver back over the curve again that's just that's just astronomical um we can we can try to say that there's a, an explanation for that but it makes a hell of a lot more sense that that is the operation of radio on a flat plane i mean the operation of radio doesn't you know you know it, it works whether the earth's a globe or a flat earth but but radio and, and radar and things like that in general actually present quite a problem for the flat earth because unless there's certain conditions you know you do get horizons that radio can't pass depending on the transmitter type and the energy used um uh, you know in the fact that there is limitations to radio i can't without the right equipment pick up a radio broadcast from the other side of the world but if the earth was flat there's no reason why that wouldn't be the case um Mar- marconi when he used his um radio and you know bounces you know, sent a signal from america to, to england that at the time kind of defied the conventional understanding of radio at the time but um the the type of transmitter that he used and the energy that he used made that radio wave able to bounce off the the ionosphere the charged particles that are in the ionosphere and come back down and keep going and that matches the understanding of how radio works and what we would expect on the globe with something like the ionosphere. I mean, the ionosphere exists. This is an indisputable fact. So oh, yeah, it definitely gl- exists. Globe, globe or flat Earth, radio waves are of the right frequency would be able to bounce off of the ionosphere. Um, I, I think so, that's a. I think that's a, a definite speculation of science. And in, in my personal perspective, with the debate of 
globe to flat earth. I think this is the biggest psyop the earth has ever, the world has ever seen. Um, I think this is hidden science personally. So I think the ideology of stating charged particles in the air are the, the medium that is ultimately harnessing radio, making it curve around. And I like to use my, my, my pop filter as an example. This is where a glow, but signal being transmitted from over here to a object over here it now has to go all the way over the the curve of the earth bounce off that item then curve all the way back and we're stating that the ionosphere is the vessel that holds that within that container um yes that's that's just simply not how radio works that radio, well, no, radio no, that, according to all knowledge of radio and how radio operates Indeed. that's exactly how it would work I'm not challenging that. I believe it is well, in you academia. Just, you, I believe you, we can grab. No, not in academia. By... In the re, in real life, you know, we we've since our knowledge of the ionosphere uh, and everything's increased, and our realization that certain frequencies could bounce off of it, we've done countless experiments of interacting with the ionosphere of radio waves. That there is no argument that the ionosphere can reflect radio waves. That's just something that has been demonstrated empirically, time and time again, to be a fact reflect as in it may reflect it into a different direction but in a harnessed and contained arrangement yeah, well, it's going like to have an radar, angle of incident it's going to have like, an angle of incident because you know um radar uh, rad, radio waves are just an electromagnetic and magnetic wave and when it reflects off of surface you know the angle it goes in is the angle it comes out so it's gonna you know you, you've got that curve and you've got the, the curve above it of the atmosphere, it's just going to be bouncing up, down, up, down, all the way around. Uh, you know, and, and that's and, how it propagates. And, 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 and you know, if you, if you tell a kid that Santa Claus flies with reindeers at first, that's the story that you believe until someone else finally yeah, says, that's the dumbest you with that thing ideology. to say because you can actually demonstrate with experimentation the the ionosphere does that however santa claus is not you know is not demonstrable on any way you using science or experimentation you know they're, they're completely different ideas because one can be done using science you can set up an experiment yourself and bounce radio waves off the ionosphere it happens multiple times yes that There's would experiments um, all around would... the world that do this that would that would that that and that is where I challenge what we are given <coughs> is science. I can nod my head and agree with that. But okay, I, so you're I disagreeing would, with all the experts in the world about radar and radio waves. Sorry, I, I, because I all, believe all that, of the experts in the world agree that this can happen with radio waves. But what you're saying is that uh, I I don't think all those experts are right. I don't think that everyone has spent over a century studying radio and the propagation of radio waves and its interaction with charged particles in the atmosphere. I think all those people that have ever done that and given expertise in scientific papers, they're wrong because I don't agree with it. That's what you're saying. So what are your oh. particular expertise that give you the authority to disagree with these scientific experts on this matter? I, I, I'll tell you this. I came across a quote. Are you familiar with Edward uh, Victor Appleton? Is that a yeah, familiar um, name? You're going to nicely and, avoid the question I just gave you, but um, but this is this is ultimately my answer. Honestly, this is where my skepticism comes from. Your 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 question was rooted in I don't believe these people that are experts. I don't necessarily personally disbelieve these people that are experts. I believe that there, that there is big science, just like big tech, just like big pharma, and a lot of other big corporations that I think have ultimately controlled the narrative of what we understand about the earth science um well, then it radio can be falsified and, that's and a this, fantastic this, this, thing this, about science is it can be falsified the thing is you personally can get a radio capable of bouncing off the ionosphere and test it yourself you can narrow the beam enough that you can aim it directly at the ionosphere so it's bouncing up and then you can test if it is received at a certain point or if it bounces off of something and comes back, even when you're pointing that very narrow beam at the sky. Of course, the beam that um, Macroni used, it was like a, a sinusoidal kind of spherical toroidal wave. So it went not, not just we talk about the radio wave here. So it kind yeah. of went in almost one direction, but spread out enough so that it could bounce off the ionosphere. But what you can do is get radio wave 
narrow that band enough so that it's a straight thing going off the ionosphere and down and test it yourself. That can be done and it has been done, repeated time and time and time and time again. So your skepticism here is completely irrelevant because you have the personal ability to falsify the claim. Um, actually, if I could read this quote from you, um, from Edward Victor Appleton, and when you read quotes like this, this is this completely supports my claim that I don't think that they're being honest about their information. And again, this is the man that has been the person that claimed the ionosphere existed, that it is an actual thing. His quote from Edward Victor Appleton, he says, I am the only physicist that has, well, I'm sorry, I'm the only physicist with no nothing material to show for my labors. I have never That's even true. seen the ionosphere. Although I have worked on the subject for 30 years, that does, that does show how lucky people can be. If there had been no ionosphere, I would not be standing here this morning. So he ultimately, so, in a sense, yeah. admitted, like, I have no way of even proving this to you. And no, I made a that's claim. that's not what that said at all. He said forward. that he'd never seen it. But the fact, he literally then said, if the ionosphere wasn't real then I wouldn't be standing here today because he's in spent his entire scientific career experimenting with the ionosphere. But like the air, the ionosphere is something you is not something you can see. So of course he can never... You've taken that entire quote out of context when the at quote actually debunks what you're saying. No, I'm not taking it out of, uh, out of, out of context at all, whatever. He said I have just nothing did. to show for it. There's no material at all whatsoever. Yeah, as in he's, as in, yeah, that means that he's not made a bunch of money out of it because that it you know, wasn't what he was interested in. He was interested in doing actual science. So just that because he did, just because he didn't make a bunch of money from it doesn't mean anything. He, what that means is he didn't get, you know, a bunch of wealth from his work with the ionosphere. But then he literally I mean goes on to say that. If I didn't work with the ionosphere and it wasn't a real thing, I wouldn't be standing here today in front of you because the ionosphere is I mean, real and that guy spent his entire life working on it. And, and in his quote, he said, that just shows how lucky people can be. Yeah, but he's very lucky. With, he spent his I mean, entire life working I, on... I, I, he spent his entire life working on something that he enjoyed. I, I think he's pretty lucky, too, to make a claim about radio that would then have to violate so many different properties of law. It would in, it would that would it violate, violate the any square law. law. No, that, it would, it, that would violate the, the inverse square law. No, it wouldn't. Ha, ha, absolutely, it would. Explain, that would, that how, would violate, explain how it would violate the inverse square law. The, the inverse square law um, is is definitely <laughs> it's, it's based on the it. amount of frequency per distance obviously uh -huh. there's a math there's a mathematical equation i can completely break that <clears> down <throat> but it would be absolutely impossible for a radio frequency to challenge the 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 waves the, of the ocean literally it's it has to go down it's not going up it's going to have to challenge the waves of the ocean it's going to the waves the waves, of the, the waves of the ocean of have frequency. nothing to do with the inverse square law you've completely ignored what the inverse square law is by talking about waves and, and I did bring it up, uh, waves is a different subject, but the inverse square law is, is not going to support radio <clears throat> on a globe. You haven't explained why. Um, because radio would be would break down by the time it makes it to that distance and back. Why? On the, globe. Um, the inverse square law does not say that um, it will reduce to zero. I didn't say so, it would reduce to zero. So it will always it would, be detectable. It would be, it, would be it would be impossible to travel in that course and still be able. I mean, it would be impossible to travel you, that course. You're going to have to provide the I maths am, to back up that claim because you're just saying something. So could you provide the maths based on the inverse square law that shows that that would be impossible? Please, is that is that right? Um, you know what? Let me let me let me retract that statement. The inverse square law is a is a different subject matter to what I'm saying with radio. Radio loses its frequency at a certain distance at a certain point. So I am I am jumping into a different subject. You are correct. Um, radio is still impossible to be contained by the ionosphere. To well, that, that, that's a claim. 
whoop, whoop, that's mm-hmm. a lovely claim, but all of science and scientific experimentation disagrees with you. Scientific nothing experimentation... In, nothing in uh, science no, no, can on. support the ionis, ionosphere okay. bending radio and then making it bend back to hit a receiver. Uh, absolutely, it can. The experimentations to test it have shown that that happens. And so, and, and, and again, and so how... you can do this yourself. You can test it yourself. It's just, just saying flat. it can't, can't happen is wrong. Because what you're doing by saying it's impossible is disagreeing with everyone in the world that has a knowledge, a functioning knowledge of how radio operates. So the people that know how radio operate disagree with what you're saying. You haven't. I think that's a. I think that's a false claim. I think that's a false claim. I think. I think the people that you are saying are these knowledgeable people. I think there are people that work under a veil of operation. There are people that go to work. There are military that go to work. There are people that 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 work in departments. Individuals, individuals, college students doing it themselves. They they are not they are not shooting anything at the sky. Yeah, and they literally the, are. The, That's and the, the test. And, and what and what and what you said, Craig, and I, and I and I guess, and I'm and I'm and, and forgive me for the inverse square law, you but what you're saying, you're saying, you're saying that that they send a radio frequency. They they're shooting it up into the sky. I'm using my pop filter as a globe again. They're shooting it up into the sky, and then you're saying multiple different bounces. Now it's bouncing yes, off that's exactly two different things that are not great. Like not great for bouncing radio frequencies. You're saying it's bouncing off well, the no, sky the and the ocean. And the water are both very good for bouncing radio frequencies. Absolutely not. No, they're both extremely reflective for radio frequencies. Say it again. Maybe saying maybe maybe what you, you, no, but stop, you're stop, saying stop, stop, no 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 stop, no no. That's stop, that's, that's absolutely there, that's absolutely no, not what right. You've done there. Now Hold now on. this is no, where I can't one I can't let you just run with the mic because water water can totally bounce radio. Okay, maybe a flat surface, but we're talking the ocean. We're talking Marconi yeah. 21, 21 what is it? Uh, he was 2135 miles, like yeah, 2135 miles. Absolutely. That's over no, 500 no. miles of curvature. It's yeah, absolutely no physically impossible for radio to no, bounce, it's bounce, not. bounce, you bounce, keep bounce, saying bounce, 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 impossible, but you haven't given a reason why you just keep saying it is. But that's all that's of, not how radio all, works. All of, again, what you're doing there is disagreeing with everybody in the world that has a no. functioning knowledge of radio. Yes, you are. Because everyone there's nobody in radio radio that says Uh, that, Craig. Nobody says the radio bounces off the surface of the air and the water over and over again five different times, hundreds of miles. I don't want to have to mute you, but if if you keep not letting me talk, I will have to mute you. Okay. so everybody that studies radio at college actually does these experiments themselves and you can do it yourselves. Everybody that has a knowledge of radio all the experts in the world that understand radio know that you can bounce radio waves off of the ionosphere. You saying that they are wrong is implying that you have a better understanding of how radio propagation functions than all of the people in the world that have a functioning knowledge of how radio works. Is that your claim? I'm, my claim is that it, that the people that are claiming that radio bounces up and down off the frequency are also off the hiding, frequency. That's not hiding the flat earth. I it, so everyone a, a flat, in the world a flat surface, has ever done a flat an experiment. surface of wait, wait, sitting wait, a radio on, frequency makes me, a lot more stop, sense than a glow. To that. Stop, stop, stop. What you just said is dumb it shit because what you're saying is everybody that ever does an experiment with a radio to bounce off the ionosphere is hiding the flat earth. Radio students at college do not give a shit about if the earth is flat. I'm not talking know, about they, students. I'm, I'm, I'm talking well, about no, the uh, people uh, that you are you said that, that everyone conduct- that does it. The school, the people the that conduct the school, the people that give the regulations, the people that are in control the of don't the care areas, the, the areas the of testing, the the people that are that pay the peer reviewed experts. That's right, who so, I'm talking about. Uh, so what, that's what, who I'm specifically so explain talking what's about. Happening not what you're you, baiting uh, me to talk about. I'm not talking about a college like, student. Shut up. Stop. Explain what's happening when you point a radio antenna at the sky. And you receive the signal from somewhere, you know, miles and miles away. Explain what's happening then. There's there's radio frequencies that are being picked up. There's a no, flat no, no. Surface. It's the particular radio frequency that you are sending. That particular radio frequency is coming back. The signal that you are sending is coming back from miles away. Yet the antenna of the radio with a narrow band is being pointed directly at the fucking sky. Explain and, what's happening. And, and and let's say, Craig, let's say, Craig, that I side with you for a moment for this debate. And I say, sure, radio frequencies well, can speak. bounce off the ionosphere. Well, they can. It's been demonstrated if, if, as an empirical fact. And I will also state with that. 
that that it makes a lot more sense to be able to bounce something off of, let's say, a mirror or a flat surface to bounce it down at another surface to to think that I could bounce a laser beam off the sky, water, sky, water, sky, water. You know, uh, a that accuracy of beam. measurement, that accuracy of measurement is just radio, beyond radio anything that's even beam. physically possible. Oh, yeah, again, you keep claiming it's beyond what's physically possible, but what evidence do you have that it's physically impossible apart from you thinking that it's physically impossible when all of physics and science disagree with your assertion? I don't. I think you're asserting yourself by saying all of physics. I don't agree with you by making that statement. I, I, no, I don't think I, all I of physics agrees with physics that. Because I have a bachelor's degree in physics with a first with honors. So I can absolutely say that physics disagrees with you with an authority. Um. Yeah, I, I challenge that authority that you claim that you think you have. I don't, I don't think you have an authority at all. Because be I used my um, physics degree and, in, and my, in a, my career. And, and I think, so we, I think I have we discussed this in maybe one of our first When we're talking debates. about physics, I have an authority compared to you. Because I have a degree that says I understand physics and sure. you have issues tying your shoelaces. And, and again, this is where I'm stating to you, I believe your degree is controlled well, by people there's your who problem. have you believe. created the narrative. These are for children right? that think Santa is real. Not adults. Um, I mean, some adults do. No, some adults do. Beliefs are not for adults. And and I think we had this discussion on our uh, maybe our first debate. One of the things that that make perfect sense to me of a flat Earth is the royal the royal navy samson radar that has can see four thousand um four I'm sorry four hundred kilometers. That's pretty yeah, far. Not, not now, in order for it to see ground, that it far, sees into the sky. see that far, uh, uh, how do you yeah, do yeah. that? Because it's it's not 400 miles on the ground. It's 400 miles to a target that is up. It is actually also the surface. I have looked no, into not. it. No, it no, is, it's not. It is it's, surface. It's, it's actually And of not. course, they don't release that right, information well, to the public oh, because oh, right. that so destroys because, the globe. So just because they don't release the information, it, so the manuals and everything behind the radar are now again propaganda the people that use it and function uh, function accurately using it they're all involved in the propaganda and only you are right because you need it to be because you know i don't need to be right bias yeah you do you, you no, what I do you not. need what you need is for the manuals for these military things to be propaganda for you to be right that's dumb as fuck actually I actually don't need it. I, I what I'm doing with this entire globe earth and flat earth thing to be honest with you Craig, I don't have an ego attached to this. Yes, you, you know, do for me, simple, no I don't. I, I, I really don't. I really don't. Really I actually do. just enjoy you having really, this discussion really about anything else like I stated when I first came on the show. I I like, enjoy having debates humongous. about life and having different perspectives. No you don't. Now, truthfully, you just truthfully, right. what I do is I contrast flat earth and globe earth side by side. At first, when I approached this whole thing, I thought flat earth was the dumbest idea. Why? Because I grew up, which I call myself, I was indoctrinated to believe that everything were, was a globe. Sure, those are stars, no, that's no, the moon, that's not the sun, that's it's reflecting. And, uh, of course, I believe the heliocentric model. Yeah, yeah, stop. Now, for me, babble, for me to I'm step deeper into this, I'm not hold on a second, babble, let me just finish this right? thought. I'm, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful. And for, and for me to even step into this whole department of the debate, truthfully, it was it, it came down to me like what makes more sense and for me and it, it to me it's obvious there's too many flaws in the heliocentric model there's no holes that there's no holes there's no flaws in it there's you not understanding it that's a difference okay what you did there was you went well false I claim no it's it's a fact you don't understand the heliocentric model that's not a false claim. i do understand that the heliocentric model. no you don't not in the slightest not in the slightest. Oh, okay the, uh, tell me what it is don't. craig since i don't know you, you, what what's the 24 well, hour the, thing the, i don't know what that is tell me this entire conversation shows you don't understand the heliocentric model and we don't really use the heliocentric model because we don't think the sun is the center of the universe so you know try and get that right to start with but um what you did there was you went well what i do is i take the globe and the flat earth and i compare them side by side but you mm -hmm. don't have the ability to do that you don't have the knowledge the intelligence the, the okay functioning now you're ability. just insulting me but i do have no, the intelligence not. of the knowledge uh, no, thank I'm you not in, no it's not an insult it's a fact you do not have the intelligence or the ability or the knowledge to compare the globe and flat earth because you don't understand physics you've never studied physics you you you, you got don't me, know bro. the first thing about physics and this isn't insulting I've, you i took Who a i took a physics ignorant? class at a freshman in high school bro i'm i'm actually a smart yeah, guy yeah and freshman high school which you barely passed okay um high school. i actually passed with a with a nice grade thank you very much you did physics at high school 
Yeah, yeah I, I was in fucking high school. I had to, to pass I to, to, get to get in that class, I bro. To I had to be a smart person to get in that class as a freshman, right? bro. You, you, I, I <laughs> I, I'm a very intelligent human being. No, you really aren't. Anyone that thinks the flat earth is not intelligent. Uh, I went to then college. You're and indoctrinated. You're not that smart because no, no, you no, think no, it's no, a globe no, still. No. I've tested these things. I went to college and then university. I have too. I've tested it too. No, you haven't. I went, stop interrupt me. Stop interrupting me, Okay. Because every time you interrupt me, I have to start again. So shut your fucking piss flaps for two seconds and listen. I won't okay? shut up if you talk to me like that. I don't really well, care have that some, much. Have some respect and stop interrupting me and I will treat you with respect. Until then, please shut your you're piss flaps. You're insulting me. I only have so much respect if you're insulting you me. Once. We can have a gentleman's discussion, but I don't insult me. I have not insulted you once. All right? Saying that you are not intelligent, that you are ignorant, is not an insult. It's an empirical fact. You okay. do not understand physics. That's okay. not an insult. That is and an you're an arrogant, fact. weird guy that likes to debate flat Earth, which is crazy to me. Yeah, I'm so... not. I, 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 I definitely weird. I'm not arrogant, and I do enjoy debating flat Earth because displaying the stupidity of flat Earth to the but world. But let's be gentlemen, dude. You're insulting teacher. me. All right. Well, that's great. Don't I will be. Me. I will. I will be a gentleman if you stop interrupting me. How about that? That's the that's the respectful place that we should be. Okay. Well, stop interrupting me, and I won't refer to your mouth as piss flaps. Okay. All right. Go for it. Okay, everyone was telling me my volume slightly too low. It was too high before, but uh, I obviously went too far. There we go. Um, yeah, so all of physics disagrees with all of your assertions. And, and this is just a fact. Everyone that has a physics degree knows that you are wrong. And when you get a physics degree, you, you're not, you don't just do as you're told and copy and paste. You test. You test if these things are real. You show that your knowledge is a working applicable knowledge. So I've actually tested to see if the Earth is rotating. I've tested to see if the measurements of the curve are correct, using navigation that works to test if those things are correct. So I've done the tests. What tests have you ever done to, to confirm or deny that the Earth is flat? Where does your expertise come from to be able to make this determination? My expertise has yes. come from a lot a very basic study and research. I again, I started off what study? with observations. I've started off with observations. Started off with observations, and I completely challenged the whole ideology of our last conversation, where we talked about refraction being the reason why we see things in the distance. I mean, I'm that's completely challenging that. You now, and this, and this, is, and this is where I don't want to. This is where I don't want to go yeah. back and forth and argue with you. This the the whole thing of my preface again is, I think you, Craig, you you are indoctrinated into the ideology of no, yes, I, no, I have the no, answer. I, I'm not and my ego's attached. That is just false. I'm not indoctrinated. Okay. That is just false because I don't believe what I'm told. I test it to see if it's correct, which I've always done. Can I, That's the can opposite. I, can I maybe... uh, wait, wait, hold on. That's the opposite mm. of being indoctrinated. I don't believe things. I do. Okay. I, I claim to have no beliefs because I base my position on logic and evidence. Logic and evidence yeah. that I have found myself. So I test these things, which is the opposite of indoctrination. So do not say I'm indoctrinated because I am the opposite of indoctrinated. I mean, I could be indoctrinated. I'm humble enough to admit that. I do things on a regular con You're basis that I'm completely unconscious of. So... If your ego is there that you think you have all psyops figured out, then hey, cool. That's where you're at. Flat I Earth challenge is not that. a psyop. And that's all I'm simply stating. So when there's elements like this, these are these are a couple of different things. All right. I I can again I can see Chicago, and then we're gonna say that's refraction. Yes, and every is. time I ever have this discussion, it's always the bottom of the buildings that are moving up and down. But we never take into the factor of like that we can see the top of the building all the time, unless there's some type of like cloudy. You can't or see haze. the top of the building all but the time. If, if, Sometimes if, you can't see yes. it at all. Of course, because it's because it's foggy. Sure. No, 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 it's no. Not a, you know, it's no, not a mirage. No, no, that's not that's not true. Um, sometimes you just can't see them. But this could be a completely clear day. But you can't see it above the horizon because the refractive conditions aren't correct. And I this, have video this, evidence of that. I have video evidence. Of what I, I have video. Ev I have video evidence of it not being visible. So Should it's we not compare. So it well, no. It's we have to agree that it's not visible all of the time because sometimes I'm telling you it is. But it's I not. don't I agree with I, you. There's video evidence of it being a clear day and it not being visible. There's people I know. I have, have video evidence that, of uh, a time that, lapse but, video of being able to see it for an extended period of time. I live so in an Michigan. Extend, an extended I period have, of time is not your credit card info every time you check out. With yes. Where's, Trust the way. What am I hearing? 
when there's nothing holding and you I'm back. I'm sorry, can you hear that? What would you yeah. And forgive me, you shouldn't be able to, yeah. and I'll mute that. Apologize. So, um, what that really put me off. What were we saying? Um, I I would love to oh, show yeah, right. you a video. Right. So, so uh, of, I um... I know people that have lived on that lake for years, mm -hmm. and they actually yep. tell me, well, most of the time you can't see anything. It's only in certain conditions, right? What you don't have is a video of always. You say you got a video of an extended period of time. Well, fantastic. There's plenty of videos and photos of it not being visible. So there is times when it is not visible. So what's your explanation for that? Um, if, if you're making a statement about times it not being visible, I'm, I'm saying that it's probably because it is of um, cloudiness, fogginess. No, no, it it's on clear, clear days. Away. I have video, time-lapse video of no editing of the, you could see the skyline the entire time. Yeah, and, and I know people that live in Michigan. I live in Michigan. They live on the west side of the state. I visit the west side of the state every summer. You can see Chicago regularly, and there are people that say, yeah, you can see Chicago regularly. I'm challenging what you just stated. That's it. That's yeah, all I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm saying right, regularly saying does not mean all statement. of the time. Regularly does not mean all of the time. It is not visible because it's fifty-five all miles away, Craig. Yeah, and, and, and it's not. Instance, and it's not on a clear day. You can see Chicago it's not on a clear day regularly, and you not can see Chicago on a clear though. day regularly, but not all of the time. That would be silly to make the statement that you could see it all the time because it's fifty-five miles away, and of course, uh, no, be I'm talking about on, on a clear day. Miles. On a clear day, you cannot see it all of the time. Yes, you can. No, you can't. I've got evidence yes, that you, you can. cannot see it on a clear day all of the time. Okay, I don't want to get looped into your semantics of what you're saying. This you're isn't saying, semantics. Okay, this is just time. an empirical and I'll fact. I'll agree with you. You I'll cannot you, see it Craig. all you of the time. You can't see it all the time, but when the weather all right, is brilliant. clear. So you've agreed with that. So what's your explanation for it? On a clear day, why sometimes can you not see it? Because it's 55 miles away, Craig. That's my answer. And what does that mean? On a clear day? It's 55 day, so miles what? away, and it's over so, a lake. So, it's over one of the yeah, biggest bodies of water in the world. So on a clear day, why can't you see it sometimes? Because it's over a body of water and there's atmospheric conditions that get in the way from time to time. But we're saying they get in the way from time to time. Day, the tops of the buildings clear day, do not change. Uh, the top of the buildings disappear sometimes on a clear day. This you can see the, the sunset behind the skyline and see the cityscape. Uh, okay, stop changing the subject. We're talking about the skyline. That skyline I, on a clear day that's what I'm talking sometimes about. is not right. That skyline on a clear day is sometimes not visible. Please explain that. Because it's fifty, because it's over the, one of the biggest bodies of water in the world. That's why. That's but you my can see answer. It sometimes, why can you see it sometimes and not the others on a clear day? Um, because it's over one of the largest bodies of water in the world. That's my answer. And um, and what there are atmospheric that? conditions that are going to get in the way from no, no, all the time. Uh, again, I'm I can't get clear day all the time. I'm talking that about is a clear why, day. It's over the clear, one of the biggest right, bodies of listen water. Listen to the words coming out of my mouth on a clear yes. day. When there is not fog and atmospheric conditions in the way on a clear day, why can you not see it all of the time? Um, on a clear day, you can mm -hmm. see Chicago nearly all of the time. But not all of the time, right? Um, under any type of other condition, it's, again, 55 miles away, it could be clouds, I know, we just, it could wait, be dust. Clear day, no, no, clear day, clear day. Your words were just on a clear You're day. You're going to see you Chicago. Can see it Ne you, well, your words were just nearly all of the time on a clear day. So we both yeah. agree that on a clear day, you cannot always see it. So why on a clear day is it sometimes not visible and sometimes visible on a clear day? My, clear my, day. my answer, my answer. I don't know why it's not clear all the Refraction. time. But I do know you can see it just about every day in the summertime. All, not all of the, the time, time, though. Not all of the time, though. At nighttime, no. Sun goes down. You can't during see the day. No sometimes uh, maybe it's raining. No, not really, because it's raining. No, no, it's no. Foggy. Clear day. Um, clear day. Early in the morning, the there's haze. There's tons. No, of no. Clear reasons. day. Clear day. You keep changing the subject. Clear day. If, it's if, in, it's, in if the it's a clear of the day, day. You cannot. If it's a clear you day, it. you're highly likely to see a nice clear shot of Chicago. But sometimes you can on a clear day. Um, you're more than likely going to see it. But sometimes I can't tell you, all you that, cannot. That little anomaly that you're picking up, I don't know why, you know, I don't know. I don't Refraction. Got that Refraction. Uh, but, oh, but, oh, so when, it, but when it's inconvenient to your day, argument, you when it's, it, no, clear. you cannot. No, you cannot. Uh, you can. No, I'm some days you cannot statement. see it at all. I'm making that claim. I'm standing by that claim. You can right, see Chicago provide, provide regularly. Right, provide me evidence you can see it every single day on a clear day. Go on, then. You know what? I, I could actually play video footage of Josh Nowicki who took those video footage, that took that video um, footage. Was he there every his, day on a clear his, day? His direct claim. If I can make a, a quote of his direct claim. Yeah, 
on a normal day, you could see 10 or 12 of the tops of the buildings on a regular day. But on this particular day, yeah, I could see a lot more. It's crazy. But on a regular day, oh, so where the rest of these buildings day, go? You can see ten or twelve of the tops of the building. Why? Because water is level. Water is flat, and you can see no, fifty-five not, miles across the flat. We've measured ocean. water is not being flat. And on a, oh, but, on, but sometimes you, you know, can. you know what we should see regularly, Craig. We shouldn't see the tops, Craig. Regularly, apart from no, refra refraction, says that we should be able to. No, they do not. That's a lie. Refraction does. That's no, it's a lie. not. That's a lie. That's no, it's a lie. not. Earth is flat, it's not a lie. That's why we see the tops uh, of the don't, building. Uh, uh, don't, don't start turning with a little baby going, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. I'm not. It's not a lie. That's how refraction works. That's not how refraction works. It's no absolutely way. how refraction works. Just because you don't understand refraction doesn't mean that's not Just how refraction works. Just because you want to make a claim, no. I do understand refraction. You're not going to. No, you really to don't understand I don't refraction. Know. I do no, know. You don't I do know. And I do know. We showed in this discussion you don't understand refraction. You do not understand refraction at all. I do understand refraction. I don't think you understand refraction. No, I understand I think you're refraction a false very well. About refraction. I think you uh, and your no, science is uh, making false claims about Mine is verifiable. Mine is verifiable, and it's been you're shown. not verifiable at all. You stole me software that's already been debunked last episode. It's we never did, been bro. debunked. No, it it's has never been, been debunked. debunked. How has it been? It debunked? absolutely has. There's been, been analytics debunked? that have gone deep into that software and broken it. Show apart. me the analytics. I can totally show you. I have evidence. Show me the analytics that have debunked that that uses Snell's law. Um, you know, I have a, I have a video I can totally send you. It has the the link information. Explain it then. And Come it's on. been debunked. Um, and Metabunk is full of it, crap. Their software, their software. It, it, explain it's how it's been debunked. Get, go, go explain the, the how the maths in it have been debunked. Go on. I'll I, I'll explain this. The the visual that is displayed in their software is absolutely false. They are give, give the evidence for that. I, I could I, you could look right at it. You you were showing it. Anybody it matches reality. It record. matches what Snell's law says should happen. No, it does not. I'm challenging no, it does. It's, saying it's, it's, it's absolutely BS. It's BS. No, it's it's literally you, based bro. on refractive index, which is directly related to Snell's law. I am a true seeker, and this, this is not no, the you truth. Aren't. You're not telling. No, the you truth. aren't. You're not a true seeker in the slightest. You're an egotist. That's it. No, th this is where I'm going to ask you to remove your ego for a minute, Greg, and be honest. I don't have Look, an ego. Wait, listen, this is, this is, this is, this is, and this is where, you know, if there's any no, listener no, what you need to do right, right now is this, provide the math and, and, and honestly, debunks. And, and this what is how you need I, to do right now is I don't provide the math that with you. debunks let, let that the program. Audience be the, let, let the audience be the people that speak the truth, right? So in your, in your software that you were showing that was made by Mick West, Mick, yep. Mick West has been called out by, um, by college professors for this to take his software down for being no faulty. he hasn't why why yes he has no, he hasn't. yes he has which college I can professor you, i can give you my evidence which college and, and professor what, which college I, you know, professor me, what's his name uh, if you if you want to hit pause i can look it up because i i don't have it in my visual in front of me but there's I no have college professor that's that told me all, to take his software down i could stop what i'm doing right now if you really want me or I what, can uh, all right so what's what the what's the college professor a professor in it, you can i can i pause for a moment and look it up because I was yeah, just looking at it earlier today. Yeah, yeah. Find I, me I did, um, the name the of the college, college professor, professor and uh, yeah, right. The name of the college professor and specifically what that college professor is a professor in. That would be great. Yeah. Because I bet he's and, not and, an expert I, in refraction in any way. He because actually that program, is an expert in refraction. That program is written using Snell's law. So that's what can Snell's I can law I make my point happen. about why I think that software is BS? And this is what well, I, what this you is think what I'm going to say relevant. about it. Okay, I know, Craig. I know, I know, I know. I, I think yes. I got you in a tizzy because I'm calling out your software. All you, you have is indoctrination. Can I can I call out your software? Am I allowed? Well, you can try, but everyone's going to laugh and point at the stupid person saying dumb and, things. And that's what and that's where I want you to just let me do this and let your audience, let the globers, the flat earthers, make a decision okay, on their right, own. Right. What Quit I'm going to do is I'm just tell me what screen. I do and don't know how to do. Let me explain this. Can well, I explain you, you, this? Yeah, yeah, but you don't understand refraction. You don't understand physics. Oh, that's I know. Just a fact. That's all you want to tell me. You want to insult me. But can I explain it's this? It's not an insult. It's a fact. Please don't get. Can I? Can triggered. I show where I'm yep. calling out yep. your bullshit? I, I'm. I'm just going to put you on. I'm just going to put you on full screen so that you can provide all of the evidence that um, Mick West is, is a fraud. Actually, I totally could. And and this is and this is where I'm completely going to start off with 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 this whole ideology. Do you know he programmed Tony first Hawks, of, right? First and foremost. Mix, mix West software as you adjust it, right? Let's just say this is this is the horizon. This is the building that we're talking about here, right? So mm -hmm. what we're saying refraction is doing by Mix, Mix West explanation is that you could see the bottoms of the building do this as refraction yep. change, right? Exactly, yeah. That's what we expect to happen, okay. yeah. Yeah. 
that's what we expect to happen on a flat earth too when you look at I don't something look like, in the yeah. distance. You're uh well, flat earth, right? Okay. So let's just say that's what we both see, right? Okay. That's what so, refraction says will happen. So yes. th now this is what the software is doing, right? Now what refraction what we're claiming refraction is doing is that it's light entering a molecule of water and it's bending it, right? It's it's causing it's calling a refractive property of, no, it's of not the light entering a molecule of water. That's wrong. I'm try sorry. Again. It's not entering a molecule of water. That's not refraction. Try again. It's it's light being being bent by the density of the water, causing the no, the light to it, bend it go into another direction. Why water? Right? It's it's just to do with a medium, nothing to do with water. Water is just a medium. And it's this not is the water. this is it, the claim of the not, globovers. It's not, it's not the, the water in the, the it's not the water in the air that causes refraction. It's a difference in temperature and density of the air. It's not the water. Okay. Try again. Which which I love that even more so that that's your claim because it actually strengthens my claim even more so because well no that's just is, what refraction is sure I, I'm I'm I know you're gonna keep repeating that but let me just finish what I'm saying because I don't agree with what you're saying you're gonna tell me I'm wrong I'm wrong I'm wrong you're right you're right you're right but science let me tells you you're wrong my, yeah. okay Physics tells so you this is wrong. my perspective yeah. right the, what the globers believe is what everyone this thinks is about horizon and refraction in your software believes. in your software. You're saying that hot and cold air can make the building go up and down like Absolutely, this. Absolutely, yes. That That's what right? refraction does, yeah. On okay. both the globe and so, the flat earth, that's what refraction would do, yeah. Okay, so so with that claim, and this is where I am challenging your claim directly, and it's not about what you learned and what you know, right? What you're stating is that light is traveling on, on the surface of the earth, no, Hot not on the surface air. of the earth. No, that's not what I'm claiming. Okay. Try again. Then what is it doing? It's traveling through the air, not on the surface of the earth. Okay, okay. So surface, yeah. I'm saying surface, you know, um, refractive. We're, we're looking at things from the surface of the earth. We're not in the air. We're, 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 we're down Light's here. Light's not down traveling there. along the surface of the earth. It's traveling through the air. Okay, light's traveling through the air right above Correct. the surface of the earth. Okay. So light is tra traveling in the air on, on the surface of above the surface of the earth. And we're stating that it's go traveling through the sky. Now the atmosphere, what's yes. happening is it's bouncing off of this object that's on this side of the earth, right? Yep. This should the, the 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 Willis Tower is 1400 feet tall. It Correct. should be 1000 feet a 1000 feet below the curve. There's 2400 feet of curvature. Yeah, come on, get if, me we're, your point. if we're I'm sorry. Get on with your point. We don't need your babbling about numbers. Just get on with your point. Okay. And so the the as as the light now bounces off this building to come all the way back here, fifty five yes. miles, say Chicago, we're we're stating that the the only property of this building that we're going to see is it's just, it's going to go up and it's going to go down without yes. any distortion at all in this area. No one's saying you there's not see... going to be distortions. There's always there's, there's sometimes distortions, sometimes there isn't. Depends on the refractive conditions. And it's impossible to have that happen without any distortion at all. You cannot could you have provide, could any you provide type of refraction to, of all could whatsoever. You, could you provide the maths to back that up, please? Um, That refraction, that light can't bend, then, then put itself back in its original form of what the original object looked like? So do me a favor. Do I, need to, um, do, I, do I need to provide mad for that, Craig? Do yes, I you do. To? Absolutely. Come on. Yes. Yeah. So okay. what you're saying is so, refraction so you, will always. So you're cause stating. Distortion. So if is I can that, get this right, so I can get wait, this right. Wait. wait I, I want to. I want to clarify what you're saying. Are you saying refraction will? Wait. 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 wait, wait stop. Stop. Form? Are you saying that refraction will always cause distortion? Is that correct? Um, refraction will always cause distortion. Yes. Okay. Do me a favor. Put your glasses back on. That is just, that is completely changing everything. Yes. No, no, that's no. That's completely not. changing. Put, put, put your glasses on for me. That's completely changing the, me a favor, the, put your the glasses view on of everything. Me. Do me a favor. Put your glasses on for me. And then you could see, right? Okay. Yeah. So what? Yeah. What are you? What are you really trying to wrap me into? What are so, you trying uh, to say? How How are your glasses allowing you to see? Do you know what's going on there? It's It's changing my bad vision from my yeah, astigmatism. How's it doing that? And it's distorting. It's distorting what I see correctively. No, it's making it clear. The the sky will never do that. Why not? That's how refraction works. Refraction can make things clear. Our glasses are not hot and cold air either. Our glasses are are our glasses, you know, do they function using refraction? Yes or no? Um yes. 
Yeah, and there, are, the see, are the images now, we if, see? Are the images we see clear? Yes or have, no. If you have twenty twenty. Are the images we see clear? Yes or no. Are the images we see clear when wearing our glasses? Yes or no. Um, if you have twenty twenty vision and you put on prescription, no. If you no. are correcting no. that distortion, yes. So, so when you and I put on our glasses, does the refraction make that thing clear to us? Can we see? It is. It clear after the refraction yes or no it is cr it is a solid piece of glass or plastic no, that has been adjusted properly and it's standard the sky is not standard uh, and is hot and cold air glasses, is not standard yeah, your comparison does refraction is happen does refraction happen with our glasses and the air yes or no um refraction can happen with our glasses to correct distortion the sky is not correcting distortion I'm being very clear about what I'm can, saying. Can you provide the maths to show the uh, refraction through the air cannot correct distortion or make something look clear? Because these, these are lovely claims that you're making that go against Snell's law. So I think uh, that's a I, silly I would, thing with all of your experience to think that that's absolutely well, uh, no. Again, I, I'm, just, I'm just Snell's law is what our knowledge of refraction is based around. So just using Snell's law and the knowledge of Snell's law, what you're saying goes against Snell's law. So no, I'm what just you're wondering... saying goes against Snell's law because you know what? No, no, Snell's no. Law the... Also states it's a change in medium. There's not a change in medium when you're looking at at Chicago no, either. Snell's That's law the same doesn't... medium. It's air. Snell's law... Yes, it does. There is a change in medium. But of course, it's a change there's not a change the... in medium. The medium is change. That... Oh my goodness me! The it's medium. Air. The... Yeah, but the change in medium is the fact that it's going from air of one temperature and density to air of another temperature and density. That's a different medium having different. That's the same medium. Proper... Do you not understand that I have different refractive hold properties? On, hold though? on, Craig. Hold on, Craig. Did you just say dense air and thin air are two different mediums? Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Say that again. And just be not... clear. Those are two different mediums, right? Yes. A dense part okay. of air and a non-dense part of air are two air... different mediums that will have air different air refractive... Uh, excuse me. Do not interrupt me again, piss flaps. Thank you. Air, air and air is the uh, same thing. Uh, 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 please... Uh, if you keep interrupting me, I will just refer to you as piss flaps. Please do not interrupt me when I'm talking. Air that right. is dense and air that is not dense will have different refractive properties because they are different mediums. I don't care they what are... you just said. You ju you're changing it again. You said air and no, air I'm are not. two different mediums. That's, a, that's not true. No, I said dense air and non-dense air are two different mediums. That's not true. It is absolutely true. That is not true. It this is true. Air and air is the same medium. It's air. We'll, right, water okay, and air we'll, are two we'll different dense, mediums. Right, listen, Plasma and water simple are two question, different simple mediums. Simple They're question for thing. you. Stop talking. Simple question for you. Will dense air and less dense air have different refractive properties? Yes or no? Um, Depending, possibly, sure, still not the same medium. You're, you're right. They are different mediums. There's a layer of one medium, and below that and above it, there's a layer that's another medium because the variables are different. The temperature and the density is different. It's going from one medium to another. Like, you can have glass of different densities, and if you shine light through that glass, that the light will change as it goes through that different densities because the dense glass and the less dense glass are different mediums creating an angle of incidence change because of different refractive properties of the medium. My God, you're fucking dumb. You just said that air, dense air and uh, not and, uh, thin air are two different mediums. That is 100% you correct. And you're yes. calling me dumb. Yes. Hold on now. 100 percent correct. That's not science, bro. That's not Snell's No, that law. is science. That's you're what Snell's law and science says. And your audience, bro. Uh, this isn't this isn't a podcast. This is a YouTube stream dipshit. Um, and that's Same what thing. Snell's law. According, no, it's really not. This is not a podcast, dumbass. Um, Snell's law. Sure, there's video involved. Same thing. <laughs> Snell's law says that media things that are different densities and different temperatures are different mediums because they will create an angle of incident change. So you can no. have two things that are the same material properties, but if you change the medium, uh, the temperature, or the density of them for refractive purposes with light, they are now different mediums that it has to pass through. Snell's law doesn't state that, bro. It doesn't. Snell's law. Snell's law is waves passing through the boundary between two different isotropic media, such as water to gas, gas 
or air. Or water, glass, or air. Those are different mediums. Water is different than glass. Glass is different than air. Air is different than plasma. Those are different mediums. What you are doing is you're applying, you're taking Snell's law, just like taking refraction, and you're applying what you would like to make it fit the globe. That's not how, what Snell's law states. That is what Snell's law states. Snell's law states when you go from, you know, something that is one temperature to another, right? We agree that air is air. There is air. That's air up there that's less dense. That's air down there that's more dense, okay? But Snell's law that... doesn't have anything to do with temperature. You're wrong, Craig. I'm sorry, yes. but you may have no, misspoken. I... You're wrong. Excuse me? Snell's law does have a lot to be... Because if you change the temperature, again, it's changing the refractive index, which means there you are... You may want to make that claim, but that's not Snell's law. That's what I'm well, stating what you do. Snell's law disagrees you're, with you, you, of course. You could make that claim, but you just can't do it with Snell's law. Well, Snell's law disagrees with you, of course, because Snell's law says there'll be a change in temp in refractive in in angle because angle of incidence change be when there's a change in temperature. In fact, temperature is generally more important than density when you're talking about refraction in the atmosphere. No, Snell's law is definitely it's it's a wave passing through a, a boundary between two different isotropic media, not Define air isotropic. and air, not water and water. Define not isotropic. Glass and glass. Define isotropic. Um, Absolutely. It's, uh, let's see what I have. I don't have a definition in front of me, but I will definitely pull up one. You don't know what isotropic means yet. You're using that word. Lovely. Yeah. So again, um, even yeah, though actually isotropic means having identical values of property, um, in all directions. Yeah. Ah, there so, we go. So density, the same as... properties in all directions. So let's focus on that. So isotropic means it has the same property in all directions, right? So you take this area of the air here look at my hand right take this area of the air here and we take this area of the air here they are going to have different mm -hmm. isotropic properties because this air here is less dense than this air here it's not the same in all directions therefore right. this is different isotropic layers right which is exactly why I'm saying the globe doesn't make sense because you're not going to have a perfect 1400 foot building if you have different isotropic layers. You're going to have different you're going to have a different perspective of that building for the 1400. That's the second tallest building in the United States of America, bro. If we're talking isotropic layers, you're right. You're absolutely right. There's going to be huge isotropic layer uh, uh, changes. But right. the so, thing that so you changes, agree it's different the thing that changes is exactly what we expect to change on a flat earth. It's the base of the bottom of the building over the densest part of of the water over the water the surface of the water though yes i'll agree with you the the air is the densest and what a snell's law state when it goes through two different medium right and we're, we're gonna get back right into the 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 water what's what's gonna happen at best at best you got this building that you see in the distance at best the water below at that's at at its lowest of the base maybe on a warm hot day it might where's get a the bottom of the building heat. Might see a little less of the building on a cool day why? you might see a little bit more you know hey it snells where's the bottom there, of, why can what? you never see the bottom of the buildings but, but this is this is what happens you don't see the what, top what, of the why building is the, move. oh you do you actually you see the top of the building disappear completely sometimes and, 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 and that's exactly what mick west software shows too don't believe me. yeah go it, look it up i'm not so lying mick, go mick ahead and look mick, it up mick west, uh, mick west software matches what we expect with refraction using snell's law and fermat's principle and everything you know, False claim right, so, because this is what we see. We see the bottom move up and yeah, down. That's yeah, not which, that's not what we're stating happens we, with refraction. The, the, on the, the tops are moving as well, and the top sometimes disappears completely. Okay. Oh, no, I challenge I challenge anybody that's watching this right now to check out Mix West software and you can be the judge. I'm telling yeah, you, mix, it does mix, not. Again, You'll see the mix, bottoms move, not the tops. It, it all moves. Do you want me to bring it up and show you how the tops can move as well? Um, they don't. Not on Mix uh, West so software. So if you're you wrong, will you give me five hundred pounds? If you're wrong, will you give me five hundred dollars? No, I'm not betting for you money. I'm debating you, man, on your channel. Well, you're no, I, I bet you right now that you're wrong. My 10,000 uh, views I, I keep giving you. Uh, uh, if, if, uh, I bet you right now that you're wrong. I'm wrong about what? The, the tops of the buildings don't move on MicWest software. Um, Show me. Do you bet you're wrong? No, I'm not going to bet. I'm telling you, you just, that. You I'm just made a your... categorical claim. Why aren't you confident? You, you and Mick West software is false. You won't see that in real life at all whatsoever. You won't see the top. No, of no, the no. Your claim, your claim just uh, you stop changing yourself. Your claim just now was that Mick West refraction, um, you know, simulator does not have the tops of the buildings move at all. Uh, could you stick with that? Is that is that your claim? You know, from what I saw, yes, I'll stick with that. All right. And if you're wrong, um, will you give me five hundred dollars? 
I'm not giving you any money, man. Well, no, what, uh, <laughs> You're already right, making right money now, off of this podcast. Right now, I will, what I do right now is I will transfer £500 to um, someone that I trust and they hold the money. And you transfer $500 so it's less for you and they hold the money. And whoever's right gets all the money. What listen, do you reckon? Listen, listen to what I'm going to say very clearly. From what I saw, it, which was a limited piece of what you shared. Oh, right. So you're cherry picking. I, I, checked, out, I checked out the web, website briefly and what I saw – it looks it doesn't replicate real world scenario i'm more yeah, or less calling out that software is bullshit completely. software and it doesn't it does not reflect what you see when you peer at chicago in the second tallest building well, it matches States it perfectly America. actually it does not at all whatsoever no it really does um so um I, i'm i'm ready to transfer 500 uh, quid to someone um uh, do you want to choose get five hundred dollars right, can... for the fourth time i've said no already but if you still want to ask me you can but i'm so what you're no. saying is you're not confident with your answer you just said something as a categorical fact but you're not confident. and i told you right? i'm 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 not completely a hundred percent but when what i saw i didn't see the tops move and i don't agree that it matches with reality that's what i'm stating Hmm. Oh wow! If you want to prove uh, me wrong, prove me wrong. Cool. Yeah, you got I'm me. going to. Ah. Um. So, what about a gentleman's agreement? Just a ten pounds versus ten dollars. Um. Sure. I'll bet you ten right. bucks if it makes you feel better. So, so if you're wrong, you'll send me ten dollars, right? Yeah. And I'll give you my word. I'm an honest man. Okay. Let's uh, bring this up so everyone can see. Do you have Apple Pay? How does that work internationally? How's how we're gonna work uh, this out? PayPal would be best. All right. I canceled my PayPal, actually. I don't have a PayPal. We'll I mean, figure you can it just out. directly pay to my PayPal address. So uh, if we look at the top of, say, this building here, um, let me bring it up closer so everyone can see. Let's just... Uh, I, know, I just hate this. that we're even getting into this software because it's trash, but okay. Okay, so if we move this down over here. Oh, look at the tops of those buildings moving. Oh, oh, the tops of those buildings are moving quite a lot. What, what happens if I just uh, let's add another point over here and adjust that? Oh, that's making the bottoms move, but the tops are also moving. What if we make it warmer and put it up here? Oh, look at that. The tops of the buildings yeah. went up and then back down. Oh, oh so uh, that would be $10. Thank you. I'll give you $10, all right? <laughs> I hope you're excited. I'll give you $10. And when, I, when I've when i looked at the software and everything that I've seen, again, uh, it doesn't reflect reality. So, cool. I'll give you $10 that I misspoke it. But, nah, that's bullshit ass software, man. Easiest ten dollars. Well, it matches reality, and it matches what we expect to happen. That's with not what we see when we look at Chicago. I'm telling you, that's not what we see when we look at Chicago. And exactly. Joshua Nowicki, not Joshua Nowicki. Anybody that's listening right now, you can check out his YouTube channel yourself and look at his skyline of Chicago, and you'll see not a single thing is moving. And you can see the sun set behind Chicago. How is that possible on a globe? Come on, man. Of course, it's we're, we're set talking behind silly Chicago. Stuff. That's that. It looks that's uh, everything you would expect it, on a flat Earth. You know what I mean? That's what you would expect. On, you would expect well, on no, a you wouldn't Earth. expect the sun to set on a flat Earth. You just wouldn't expect that. You, you would expect the sun to disappear in the soup of the atmosphere, and you would not be but able it to see the skyline. The, 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 it doesn't. The, the, the sun sets behind the horizon. Sure, and then That's we're and then we're gonna say that the 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 sun comes back every twenty four hours. It's in perfect sync. Like if I were a betting man, if you were a betting man, orbits Craig, are you a thing. Guess, yeah. What's your problem if, with orbits? If, if, did we start from a big bang, or is this intelligent design? If you were a betting a, man. The, that's relevant to the discussion about the shape of the earth and the movement of the earth. I mean, it's not, though, you know? No, it, it is. The claim of the globe is actually out The earth can be a rotating crazy. globe, whether it was made by a magic man in the sky, a pasta monster, or the Big Bang. It can still be a rotating globe, whether any of those things are true. So the nature and origin of the universe is irrelevant to empirical facts about the shape and motion of our planet. There's there's too many flaws in the heliocentric model, Craig. There's none. You, there's your misunderstanding of it. That's all. Sunspots. Sunspots aren't a, a, a flaw in the heliocentric model. No, they're not. I mean, should we be able to see spots on the sun if it's ninety three million miles away? A big yes. ball of burning gas. Yeah, you just zoom in and look at it closely. And I mean, that's not a big ball of burning gas that has sunspots. No, on you're, it. you're right. It's not a big not... ball of burning gas because that's not what the sun is. It's plasma powered by nuclear fusion. We don't know what the sun is, especially if it's 93 miles yeah, we do. away. You, we don't know what met, it is. We just know it's a tell, light in the you sky. You can tell exactly yes. what it is with uh, spectroscopy, actually. And then another thing, stars. We're supposed to be traveling 19 billion miles a year. 19 billion miles a year, which is astronomical. At a, at, a ridiculous, at a ridiculous pace of two and a half million miles an hour. And the stars of Giza, the stars line up the 
right underneath the um the uh pyramids uh, of Giza. Uh, oh, so um records no, Polaris show... is still in the same position. Okay, no, it's uh, not. No, again, but it's it not. is. Um, so it's we so see uh, dramatic, stop, dramatic stop, constellation stop. changes after all these years. Stop. So no, that is a straw man. We shouldn't. Um, the we light, should. Uh, no, that's a straw man. We shouldn't. Shows you don't understand the model. Um, I so, do. Look, piss flaps. It's wrong. You're misunderstanding the model. Okay? I can so, explain to you where it's uh, wrong. No, 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 okay. Piss flaps, please stop interrupting me. All right? Go ahead. I'll explain right? to you where it's wrong, but go ahead. Wait, no, it's not wrong. You just don't understand it. So, okay. I will explain, but go ahead. Uh, uh, okay, okay, piss flaps, please just listen. So, um... Mm -hmm. The alignment of the stars over Giza has changed over centuries and it's been monitored to, to, to change. It doesn't even align every year. And in fact, when the alignment happens, it is in fact 38 degrees different to what it was at the time of the pyramids being built, showing that the alignment is not exactly the same. And this has been documented through centuries of measuring the positions and angles of stars. Um, so you're wrong about that. Um, the Polaris has changed position. In um, the 12th century AD, sailors described the north rotational point as a blackness devoid of stars. Um, Polaris has since then, in you know just over a thousand years, become our north star. So you know definitely moves. You can uh, sailors using nautical almanacs have charted the change in positions of stars, including Polaris, over years for celestial navigation to be a thing correctly. Um, right. The stars that we see in the night sky are stars that are, galactically speaking, relatively close to us and traveling around the center of Sagittarius A with us. Right. And again, this is where I say that I could simply explain that, you know, this is where academia, big science have collectively said, no, this is what it is. We're gonna we're we are we are going to tell you what it is. And you yeah, have to just understand it is. and it's believe. Been measured. Um, because in all reality, all reality, if we were again a ball floating through we're infinite not, we're an space spheroid. at this uh, all blade spheroid, right? Whatever, a globe, yeah. whatever you want to say, right? You know what I'm saying? A if planet we're, we're traveling at this ridiculous speed, no matter how far these stars are, relative to right, what. Uh, sorry, when you say speed, what's this speed relative to? Um, what is the speed relative? Who came up with that even speed in the first place? To what well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, when you're, say, when you're saying these numbers, what are you comparing them to? Um, the numbers that I'm using are the numbers of the heliocentric model. No, uh, again, what are you comparing these numbers to? What is it a speed relative to? Um, some stationary object that whoever made up the heliocentric model is applying it to. So you don't what, even know what, what you're you talking about? What? So you don't even know what you're talking about. Um, tell me, tell me if I'm wrong. But if we're going to state that something is traveling at any type of speed, it's relative to some stationary object. Uh huh. Yep. So, what are the speeds you're quoting relative to? Could you tell me? If, well, if how, there's some how, type how, of how term that did, I'm unfamiliar with, maybe. How what are fast? You to say? How fast did you say the Earth's going? Uh, to my knowledge, two and a half million miles an hour, roughly. And what's that relative to? Um, in relation to what the universe traveling through the universe at two and a half million miles an hour is that what you're saying? Like what no, specifically the, is the two the and a half million? Universe isn't a point. Yeah. So that two and a half million miles. What what per hour? What is that relative to? What are you? What stationary thing are you giving that speed to? To be honest with you, the answer has to come from whoever is implying it to this to the um to the heliocentric model. Hey, so maybe um, I'm not understanding what you're trying to clarify. Well, um, in, in my chat, I have yeah. um, one of the world's experts on, on kind of gravity and, and, and things like that. Um, he's a gentleman called PhD Tony, an, an Australian uh, a physicist that um, works with gravity satellites and stuff to uh, and, you know, um, extremely um, sensitive uh, accelerometers on Earth to, to measure d varying densities of gravitational fields and stuff. Um, and he'd like come in to, to have a chat with you. Would, would you be OK with that? Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, he's someone I, I'm I consider myself quite smart. I've got two degrees, but you know, I, I'm like a third of a person compared to this guy. He He's extremely smart. OK, please. Yeah. If you if he comes in, um, don't interrupt him. OK, if he, he's trying I'll, to I'll, I'll try to be respectful yeah. as possible, you know, it, just don't it, disrespect yeah. me and I'm cool. Yeah. If he's trying to give you an explanation, please let him get the entire explanation out. And just if he has a question for you, try and respond honestly. All right. Um, sure, sure. All right, so I will send my good friend PhD Tony a link to this. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, so that two and a half million miles per hour, right? I think that's relative to the cosmic ma microwave background radiation, but you could also say that Earth's moving at like, what, an average of 66,000 miles an hour, you know, roughly. Yeah. You know, that is relative to the sun. You could also right. say that the surface of the Earth is moving at 1,000 miles an hour, right? That is relative to the axis of Earth's rotation, but just the equator. So yep. when you're talking about speeds, it's very, very important to, you know, give references and actually explain what you're talking about because speed is relative. There's no such thing as an absolute speed. So when you give these numbers that are massive, you have to tell me what they're relative to for them to make sense. From what I understand of the heliocentric model, it rotates on its axis at the equator at a thousand miles an hour. Um, it, it well, you don't rotate in circulate. miles per hour. There's a linear velocity of a thousand miles an hour whilst it's rotating at zero point zero 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 six nine four RPM. Right, and it, it's rotating around the sun at sixty six thousand six hundred and sixty six miles an hour. Well, um, roughly. I mean, obviously, the Earth's orbit is elliptical, so the speed changes throughout the year. Right. Right. And the sun itself is traveling at 550,000 miles an hour, you know? And again, yeah, well, well, this, I, I, these are, you know, the, I'm, the sun, I'm, I'm just, the repeating sun's like numbers taking 250 were... million years to do one rotation around the, you know, Sagittarius A at the center of our galaxy. Right, yeah. I'm going to, I mean, I'm I, let I, Tony I in. It. And, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I love math, but yeah. this, this model that you're trying to claim, there's nothing in our world that supports this. Apart from all of physics, maths, and science, of course. Right, I'm going to let Tony not. in and give him a minute to introduce himself and stuff, okay? Sure. He's just coming in now. Tony, my friend, how the devil are you? Um, just a moment. Let me um, mute my, uh, my version Tony, of your live stream. How the devil are you? Um, just a moment, let me, um, <laughs> sorry about that, um, but that That's gives right. you an idea of the delay we're working on. Um, yeah, uh, I'm okay, uh, feeling a little better this morning than I have been generally in the past. Let me straighten up my camera. So that I'm glad to hear that, quite, Tony. But... Um, I know you've been struggling a bit lately, so I'm glad to hear that you're feeling a yeah. bit better. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to come on. Um, would you just maybe take a minute and introduce yourself so that um, our friend here knows who you're talking to, uh, who he's talking to? Okay. So I'm a professional research geophysicist. Um, my um, initial topic of explanation, my initial topic of research was post-glacial rebound and sea level change. Um, I've moved on since then, and today I professionally model gravitational orbits for satellite gravimetry missions that are designed to um, uh, that are designed to um, uh, use gravity to locate um, uh, gravitational anomalies and gravitational redistributions on its surface. Um, I have represented my country multiple times in mine sports, um, and um, I have a number of external validations of my expertise and intellectual ability. And I would like to start, Gene, by asking you a question. Please. I have noticed in your debates that you are very emphatic that you correctly understand the nature of reality um, and that your internal understanding of what's going on is emphatically correct and you will state it very loudly and quite repetitively. What external validation do you have that your understanding is correct? Have you, for instance, completed any educational courses? done any real world applications, have any real world accomplishments that might explain the confidence you have? Or is it just the fact that you think you're right and you keep on stating you're right louder and louder the more you're challenged? Are, are you stating that someone needs to have a, um, a career? I am asking career. you a question. Yeah, I'm asking you a question for clarification too. Why are you yelling? Because you're not answering my question. Because I'm you asking a question. A I'm asking for clarification of your question. No, what you're don't no, yell at what me. You're, you're already no, getting sour, what, Craig. I'm sorry. Don't what yell you, at me. I'm what, asking what for you, clarification. You're what, already talking you, to me like I'm some type of low life. So I'm asking no. you to clarify your statement. In what way? Um, 
are you claiming are you claiming are you trying to imply that in order for me to discuss anything i need some form of education or career in that particular field is that what you're claiming what i am claiming is that if you are trying to overturn um the weight of modern scientific understanding yes. then you yourself should have sufficient scientific understanding in order to know what the debate is about how um, what the you you should understand the breadth of the evidence we have did okay. you know for instance that earth's um rate of rotation changes after large earthquakes when we do precise measurements of when we do precise measurements of um star trails did you know that earth's rotational axis is moving at 20 centimeters a year did you know that the rate of rotation has changed since the year 2000 are you aware that there are seismic waves that and atmospheric pressure waves which when initiated travel from the focus around to the far side of the earth and then come back again and they do this over multiple cycles are you aware of any of this evidence um i'm aware of what you're stating um i don't agree with what you're saying and how you're drawing me into this conversation actually so I you're don't. saying i'm a liar I'm I'm saying that you believe in academia, you believe in sciences that can easily be proven false that the earth is not a globe is what I'm saying to no. you, Tony. No, it That's can't. what I'm saying to you. The, 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 so you're claiming that seismic evidence doesn't exist. Um you're I'm saying, I'm saying of... you're claiming that your seismic evidence can't be manipulated. Yes. I am stating that it can. All you're of you, everything wrong. that you're trying to apply can be manipulated, and it, I think wrong. it's rather I think it's rather silly to have such a separate separate ideology of science to say no. I am the above authority. I am the religion that's going to tell you what the answer is when I can when I can apply science on my own and see that this isn't true. You've never used science. This in your is life. this is this is what you're saying is errant nonsense. Billions of lives depend on the accuracy and reliability of seismic studies and for right. you to say that size you to say that seismology is made up also i will point out the trillions of dollars of industry depends right. on the accuracy of rel and reliability of scientific techniques for well, instance we use we use um seismic techniques to explore under the ground to locate mineral deposits we use gravity for the same purpose we use gravity to map the ocean floor. Have you ever wondered how the ocean floor is mapped, given that we can't see it? Possibly the question has never occurred to you. We use gravity. Right. Do you know the inverse square law can be applied to the moon's oh, light God. and we can mathematically figure out that the moon landing never happened and that was a lie? No. Do you know um, that? No, I don't know that. What I know is that people without any academic qualifications in the um, in the study of illumination have come to that conclusion falsely. But even if the moon landing never happened, even if that were true, it. it would not. It you cannot prove it. If you could prove it, you would be able to publish it in a scientific in a scientific paper in a scientific journal. That's what dem that's what sci that's the standard of scientific evidence. If you can't, if you saw it on a YouTube video and you can't see why it's wrong, that isn't proof, right? So That's every, proof everything, everything from your standard, Tony, needs to be peer-reviewed to be validated, right? That's yes. how science works. Okay, so peer, being peer-reviewed, there's no way to manipulate a peer-review situation at all? What's no, that's, peer, that's, peer that's, that's not what I'm claiming. That's not what I'm claiming. What I'm claiming is the peer, peer review does have failures. Um, right. Uh, Very much. In fact, right. I've in fact I've been on the receiving end of some of those failures with bias against my with bias against my work by people. But um, uh, but it's still better than not having peer review. The idea that peer review is flawed, therefore not having any peer review is the way to go, is nonsense. It's, That's not it's, what I said either. Um, well, then, you know, the idea that peer-reviewed sim should simply be discarded as a standard because it has imperfections is, a, is an invalid syllogism. It doesn't make any sense. That's not logically valid. Tony, when you want to look up a conspiracy theory, where do you search it? 
I don't look up conspiracy theories. So, it, so let me ask you this, because you could just be a naive individual. Do you believe conspiracies don't exist? No. Nope. You think no Long conspiracy question. exists? No, he didn't say no, that. No, I disagree with your statement. Okay, so you could. What? It, so, do you believe no conspiracy theory exists? What are you saying exactly? Right. What I'm, I'm asking you a direct question. Do you believe that a conspiracy yes, theory I am, exists? Yes, and I now, answered your question. With now, how yes would you know no. about that? How would you know about that conspiracy theory happening? Evidence. Okay, so if I can apply a conspiracy theory of something that took place in America, the Tuskegee experiment, it was an experiment that lasted 40 years. Who would who would know that year number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight? How would you know that? And where would you source that information to know it was happening? Just like Flat Earth to the Globe. How do you find information validated about the biggest PSYOP ever? Where do you go? Okay, the biggest PSYOP? listen, idiot. Okay. For instance, let's take GPS. Let's and take I'm not GPS. Calling you names no, 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 no. You name. brought you I'll brought call you a fat fuck. Here. You brought you brought you brought um, you brought uh, flat Earth into this. Do it's you know how debate, GPS? Guys. Do you know how GPS works? With radio systems. No, Loran. it doesn't. Jesus. Not no. satellites. Okay, What's let's radio go systems? through. Let's go through the let's go through the inaccuracies in that statement. A. I went on a GPS survey to the highlands of Papua New Guinea, where radio contact is intermittent, and the nature of the and the nature of the antenna you use is vastly different. Um, radio um, radio communications are extremely unreliable in areas where GPS actually works, and GPS fails to work in systems where um, telephones and radios do work. So this claim is false. Also, I happen to work with a group of people who have written GPS analysis software of their own that uses the raw data from GPS satellites. They use this data to solve for the um, to solve for the geometry of the GPS satellites and the GPS stations, and they use that data to plot um, planet to plot continental motion and to identify regions where um, the plates are locked, and therefore there's an increased earthquake risk. Thus, saving people um, millions of dollars by telling them where not to build in uh, expensive infrastructure. Right. There's an entire science here. There's an entire body of evidence that is validated. Right? right. One of these companies. One of these companies built a built a pipeline right through an area. My colleague said not to. And then there was an earthquake, and the pipeline broke. So, you know, you can you can say that none of this none of this stuff is real, that it's a gigantic conspiracy, that it isn't what we Hold think on. it is, that we don't understand it. You're wrong. You're you didn't make any claims. Wrong. Hold on, Tony. You um, you you so you're claiming to me that there are self orbiting trucks truck size instruments in the air by themselves? Is that what you're claiming? That it's what a satellite is? In, it's it's not helium no, suspended, it, right? So, so, uh, no. so the um, say for instance, say for instance, the satellites that I recently worked on, they're about two meters long, um, uh, about seventy-five centimeters wide, um, and about a meter meter thick. So, if you want to say truck sized, yes. All right. And we okay. get the we get the orbital data from those, and they're moving they're moving at seven kilometers a second. So Are they, they can't helium suspended. Show me a helium suspended object moving at seven kilometers a second. I, I just asked a simple question. Are they heli are they helium? No, suspended? they're not. Okay. So are they self orbiting on their own? Um what does that what does that question even mean? So this is my question with, with you directly, since you're the expert, right? Of, on satellites. Have you ever seen a satellite launched into space? Yes. No, I haven't. I was invited to a launch, but I, well, I haven't seen one live. I was invited I, to a live launch, but I wasn't able to attend. And, I, and I'm going to make this statement no one has, right? You're on that side of science. You haven't seen it, and you never will. There's no. Okay, that's just an assertion, though, right? You've sure. got no evidence. This is the yeah, thing. Yeah, I don't. That's this my opinion. Thing. That's my this opinion. That's my opinion. Well, you then seen don't one? state your opinion as fact. Okay, okay show me one. Have you, have you seen one? Have this you seen is the one? Central yes or no? Point. Have you seen Don't one? Yes or no? Either have I. Your opinion is fact. Don't assert what you think okay. is true. As Let's get back to it. Have true. you seen one? Yes or no? I said no. How okay. many times so do you want me to say no? Now that you haven't seen one, I also will make the claim 
that I don't think anyone else has. I haven't and, seen one. And there's no yeah. evidence. There's the no evidence of any making... type of satellite launch ever. Yes, there is. And yeah, you, I know you people just that have been there personally. What does it look like? It. Satellites. Jesus Christ. What does it look, look up like? Gray a space satellites. launch. It's, a, it's about this big. Yeah, well, it's about two minutes long. Let's say that's its length. That's its width. It's Describe the launch to us. And it's trapezoid. They space. put it in a rocket. The rocket took up and then it got thrown out the side. What do yeah. you want? Describe um, the launch to us. What? what is it launch? What does a satellite what's launch it? look like? It looks no, like a rocket taking I'm, off. You know, what? What was that, Craig? It looks like a rocket taking off. Okay, so it looks like a rocket taking off, right? And then when it gets into its orbital peak, right? What do we do with it now? How does it look when we actually release from the rocket? Would you like me to show you a video uh, from SpaceX when they're releasing I, their um, hundreds of satellites? I, I, if to, to see them all released, that would be great if it wasn't CGI yeah. and if it wasn't fake. Well, it's not That'd CGI. Awesome, you, you're just making the assumption it's CGI no, so you can pre no, 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 what no, I said. No, it would be actually, great if I'm it wasn't to, fake or I'm CGI. To, It'd be great. I would I'm love going to, see to interrupt that. here. I'm going to interrupt here because he's running away from the central fact, which what? is that we have the coordinates from this satellite. We know where it is and we know what its velocity is. And indeed, that's essential to the science that we do. The Let science me tell you this. No, shut up. I'm explaining something to you. Every satellite's you know, helium suspended, Tony. No, it Most fucking not. isn't. You, you don't, that's just an assert. Again, and this is the thing you do all the time. You Every just satellite vomit is helium your, suspended. You just vomit your opinion and you don't introduce evidence. Every right? house, every, no, no, no. I, shut up. You shut want to see evidence? Listen. I can Learn show you evidence. Something. Learn something. Try shutting up long enough to learn something. I have evidence and I have expertise that you don't have. And you said you were going to listen to me. And you said you were going to respect me. And you don't. Every time I try and bring in evidence about Tony, you the lost my respect the moment you insulted me right when you got on this fucking feed. Well, so you stop are, calling an idiot him. an idiot is not an insult. Yeah. You it's are an idiot, fact. sir. It's just fat. an objective fact. Yes, I'm fat. Right. I'm nearly 60. I'm allowed to be fat. When I was your age, I was much, much fitter. So, cool. you know... Go to the Kyle. gym. Um, Why? He's 60. He's earned the fucking right to look how he wants, mate. When I'm 60, I ain't dieting and exercising no more. That's for sure. You... No, no, no. I I'll go to the, the gym if you go to fucking school, you loser. <laughs> okay. Are you mad? Are you mad? Mad that people like no. you exist in society. Yes, it's a no, failure of our education this system. Is, this is something... You're making a false claim yourself, Tony. You've never even seen a satellite launch, but you want to tell me what it is? I have. You've never even seen one. No, no, no. I, I have. I know you have it. For yeah, I have. I want to show you the evidence. You think it could have been on the moon, is. for crying out loud. Really? And you complete... Yeah, you know, the evidence. Let's get back to the evidence. These things move at seven kilometers a second, and they do so at an altitude of four hundred and fifty kilometers and uh, four hundred and fifty kilometers. Shut up and listen. And we know this because if it weren't true, the satellite mission would work. Oh. Because what we do is we have two satellites that are firing a laser backwards and forwards between them, and it is the range on that laser mm. that tells us where the mass is on the ground. So therefore, we have to align the um, uh, we have to align the lasers with ground positions, and we have to look at their change between distance. Yes, exactly so. And they're, and they're firing a laser. No, them seven kilometers a second. Have I mentioned the seven kilometers a second yet? You did. Yes, they're moving at seven kilometers a second, okay. and they're following. The, do you not understand how orbits work? Um, no, I understand doesn't. the false claim. I was indoctrinated once too. No, you don't understand um, how orbits work. Again, don't litter your don't litter your um, utterances with false claims. Mm -hmm. You have no evidence. That I do have evidence. Would you like to see it? No, you don't. Okay. What you have is tell me YouTube. I don't again. You don't you have don't. evidence that all satellites are helium um, powered. You do not have evidence that every single satellite ever has uh is carried by a helium balloon that is just a there's dumb not a claim. there's not a single piece of metal in the sky that is floating by itself on well, i'm itself. showing stuff being released right now into space so uh i mean it says an ignorant half with with no education so and they're on a gravity you, leash you're, you're on a gravity leash is that what you're saying 
They're on a gravity right. leash. So Gravity's as we rotate the sun the at our ridiculous speed, there we have satellites all around us on gravity leashes that are tethered to us as we float around and move in four different directions around the moon with this heliocentric model that you claim. That's you just saying? shown that you're you claiming don't there's thousands well of done. semi, there's thousands of pickup trucks in the sky floating no around said tethered there's thousands by of gravity pickup trucks. Yeah, that you don't that you don't understand or believe something. Everything's mate. helium suspended, Absolutely. everything's AI operated. There, those, okay, those again, satellites, no evidence, no days. evidence, no evidence, no evidence. You just get up. I have evidence. I have okay. evidence. Hey, hey, I have hey, evidence. Hey, hey. Okay, where Tony, Tony, Gene, Tony, let me ask you. Gene, where, where, where is, is it? Question. Where is it? Right, guys, one sec. Guys, let me ask you a question, Tony. Let me Gene, ask you a question. No, hold on, Gene, one sec. Before you do, Gene, before you do, hold on, hold on, Gene, one second. Gene, one second before before we go on. Um, the the satellites that I'm showing on the screen now. Could you point out the helium balloons carrying them for me, please? Um, dude, that's those aren't real. Come on, bro. I mean, you're just making that claim. But no, 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 no. Where is your evidence? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is your evidence? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is your evidence? Where is your real evidence? What is this? This is this is a video of satellites being released into space. Could you just point out the helium balloons for me, please? Hold on, hold on, Craig, 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 please. I, you're a smart guy. You're telling me that these things are – that's how we release and perfectly place Christmas yeah, so, light um, so what, once again, could you, could you please do me a favor and point out can the helium you, balloons? Uh, you, is, is that, could you, you go ahead? In fact, what, what, I do, what I do right now is I'll pause it here um, so it's quite yes. easy to see. So could you yeah. specifically here just point out the helium balloons for me? That would be fantastic. Can you show me the real satellite first? Well, this is the real satellite, so I don't care if you think it's not. This is the real ones. Hold so on. Could you point, so I could understand you point clear. Out? If you're claiming this is a real satellite, so you're saying this is how they launch it? This is it? This is how they release no, it to space yet? This no, is how we put things in perfect no, orbit. No. no. So this I, is I, I one continue. of the ways. This yeah, is one, one of, of the techniques which things are put into orbits. What will happen here is that those things are um, deployed in a, in a somewhat haphazard fashion, but then they will maneuver into their actual orbital um, position. How do they um, maneuver? So they, they, they will have um, jets on them. Uh, usually for low altitude satellites, it's actually compressed air that they'll use. Um, that will just supply- They have jets on them. They can accurately yes. put them in perfect orbit so they don't come crashing back down to the ground? Correct, yes. Well, actually it's fairly easy to do that, yes. So gravity, which draws all mass to the center of the earth, isn't drawing these particular items down to the ground, so no, they're just floating it, it, in the sky. You again, just, you, you don't just understand. You don't again, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> you don't understand how you don't understand how orbit. I don't understand yes, that. But, how that story makes sense to you is what I don't understand. Okay, well, imagine. Okay, let's let's go back to basics. Imagine you're on. Uh, we're going to assume a spherical Earth here. Imagine that you're on the the um, the surface of the Earth, and you um, you have a cannon right and you fire a shell out to the side okay now there's going to come a point where the faster you fire it as it falls it's going to it's not going to hit the ground it's going to miss and that's what an orbit is essentially it's something whose it's something whose tangential velocity is fast enough that even though it's falling it's missing the earth that's what an orbit is it's falling at all points in this. It is under the influence of gravity. Tony, at all I, I hope you understand. Process. I'm a 43 year old man. I know exactly what satellites are said to be doing. I no, hope you, you understand. Well, then don't make idiotic. Then don't make idiotic statements about how you don't know. Do you really think happening. that's reality, though? <laughs> yes, I do, them. and I know it. I work with the data. I get the raw. So, let no, me ask shut you up this. for a second. How I get the. Oh, yeah, you're going to, so you've got a cigarette lighter on you. I mean, you've got a cigarette happening? lighter on you and you're going sky? to lecture me about health. No, yeah. you're going, you, so you've cannabis. been lecturing me about health and yeah, you, you're, you're a smoker. You're a smoker. Is that, um, that, that's your, that's your, that's your. I consume cannabis. Yes, I do. The, okay. But that's even consuming cannabis via smoking is not healthy for your lungs i usually i it usually tobacco? vaporize it you're correct do you, how do, do we get on um, i usually do vaporize you use, it to be do honest you use your cannabis with tobacco i don't drink i don't smoke tobacco at all right okay I, I i i occasionally use cannabis i don't know how we got on it i love cannabis all the people that are out there to consume it hey be happy i'm smoking it right i'm like, smoking it right now. I'm, I'm a very healthy yeah, person so but the, um except intellectually and mentally 
um, uh, in, which ca in which case you're extremely unhealthy. You are deeply suspicious. You are deeply hateful. You cannot distinguish between reality and opinion. Can you share um, the math of satellites? And you are completely uneducated. Pardon? Can you share the math of satellites? How do we how do we launch these into orbit yes, and they just sure. perfectly simulate themselves? We were uh, able to do this in the 60s, right? Or the 50s, right? Yes. Okay, yep. the 50s, really? We had math? We had calculators? We had computers to be able to do that? How? It's not the actually the that. The average computer was okay, in the living room. Okay, if you'd shut up long enough to listen, you, might, you, might, hear, you might hear the answer. Okay, um, it turns out that Earth's gravitational field, and, and, and in fact, any um, conservative field, so electromagnet, electromagnetic fields and gravitational fields, both share this property. This thing has a certain amount of energy due to potential. It doesn't matter how I move it, when it gets back to the same point, it has the same energy. That means that mathematically... It's a harmonic, the, the, the function describing the, um, uh, the gravitational potential of this object is what's called a harmonic function. And these are mathematically well behaved and well um, understood. And we can use spherical harmonic functions to model Earth's magnetic field uh, and its, uh, its gravitational field. And it turns out that orbital um, mechanics are quite simple to work out in terms of spherical harmonics. Once you've got the spherical harmonic formulation, you can actually, um, there are only a few parameters you need to get a reasonably stable orbit. Wow. So it's an easy thing to launch something in the orbit, huh? No, it, it's easy for somebody with sufficient technical skill and mathematical expertise to do. Okay. So let me ask you this. Why are we operating backwards then? The why is why multiple let me say five years ago why did google operate loon l-o-o-n they had a satellite sataloon system which was based on ai where these sataloons could be suspended thing. for up to 300 days up to 300 days now yep. at what point at what point would we digress our technology to do such a thing why wouldn't we just use a awesome and well like refined satellite that we've been using since the 50s why would we go backwards because because satellites are cheaper than satellites okay uh -huh. so it's an it's a matter of economics um so you choose, you choose you choose that you choose the technological you choose the technological application that makes the most economic sense for what you have in mind and you're shaking your head like it literally doesn't matter what I say to you. You are you are um, going to reject it before I even open my mouth. That's you what that head shake tells you, you know why? Because it sounds you like because you're an idiot. Yes, listen, I to, do listen, know what I said, listen to what I said, Tony. Listen to what I said, Tony. Because it sounds just like the moon landing. Why haven't we gone back to the moon? They say because of economic reasons too. Uh -huh. That doesn't make yes. sense. Yeah. Okay. Have you heard, by the way, have you heard Again, of Artemis? We're you're... kind of in the middle of doing that. What's that? You've heard of Artemis because we're kind of in the middle of going back to the moon. I know it's a, it's another BS facade, and we pay for it out of our taxes. No one's ever and been to the moon. No one's ever been past the, the Van Allen belt. And no one's ever been the past the Van Allen it? belt, and NASA's what's admitted the, that. Okay, no, why don't. do I get paid? Why do I get paid? Honestly, why do does anybody get paid at NASA? You're affiliated into a system. Why does anybody get paid at their job? You applied, and okay. you show up. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, are you why? changing the world? Why? No, you're a button pusher. You're a robot. No, he do, uh, actually, he's got very important job that um, you know helps applications around the world uh, by literally measuring gravity from space. You know, he's not I, just a button pusher. <laughs> I'm. I he's, myself. Have you ever seen a satellite a, being launched? No. Yeah. Um, no, but I've been. I, I was invited. I was unable to go because I was in Japan attending a um, attending a conference there. And um, when Craig and I, showed the video, you acted like you've seen it before, bro. Like, look at that haphazard mess of garbage coming out of the rocket. Like, really? No, there, there, are, there, are, there, are, multiple, there are multiple ways of, um, you know, and for this, your incredulity is based on absolutely nothing. I explained how the There's rocket... tons of evidence satellites are on satellites. No, there isn't. There Present is. any of it. I would love you know, to. Um, your 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 problem is intellectually. You say I think this, therefore this is this is true, and you That's don't draw any distinction. You don't draw any distinction between what you think is true and what you state is true. Okay, you don't. You just vomit it out 
and you don't bother to assess the quality of the evidence you have supporting your beliefs. You believe you correctly understand the physics of everything. You're wrong. That's not true. I don't. I don't think that at all. I. You I do. Think it's every absolute. every. I I've know. seen you in. You. I've seen you in. I've seen you in four debates now. That's and awesome. Every time, I've, every time you claim that you understand optics perfectly, you claim that you no, understand gravity. I've never, gravity never, ever, ever, yes, ever, ever, yes, ever, you do. Yes, you, yes, you do. Perfectly. Yes, I'm, you I'm, do. I'm, I'm saying it out loud to you, Tony. So how are you going to tell me what then, I do? Then, then that right makes now, previous in this you. moment, I do not claim I know everything inside. Of okay, I'm then. So, you. so, so you don't more. understand gravity. So you don't understand optics. You don't understand refraction. You don't understand the inverse square law. You don't understand yes, how I do. satellites orbit. Yes, I do. You Look, don't this understand is the what thing. satalloons are. You don't. You no, don't I do know what satalloons are. They've been in operation I do for years and years, are... and years and years and years and years. Again, just a sequence of false statements. I know exactly Those are all what true, bro. Are. No, they weren't. I, None of them no, were. No, they're not. I know what satalloons are. I know what the inverse square is. How long, how long have they been in operation, Tony, since you're familiar? How long have they been in operation? Um, that would be trivia, but I would guess that they've been in operation since at least the fifties. They have, and that's been yes. every single satellite we've so ever. So therefore, I therefore <laughs> I know. Um, no, that, so every that's single thing that's in no, the air, a, a, a helium balloon up, cannot must come down. A helium balloon cannot Your go satellites up. defy the laws of gravity. No, they don't. Okay. They match what gravity says. No, they do. don't. Yes, they that's, do. Okay, they do. and this again. So I've studied gravity full time, eight hours a day for 30 years. You're indoctrinated. Okay. And you're I'm saying studied. that they don't obey the laws of gravity. No. You're wrong. You're just, for, you just said it. How, you how, just how can, said how can, a, how can a metal you just, be No, 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 no. We're not moving what? past this. You just what, literally Tony? said satellites don't obey the laws of gravity. And now you're saying you didn't say it. No, no, I'm sorry. Maybe I misunderstood you. Your version of satellites defy the laws of your gravity. No, they no, don't. Your, your they version don't. of satellites wrong. defy You're your wrong. laws of gravity. No, they don't. They're floating objects in the sky. Yes, they do. No, they're mean? not. They're permanently falling. They are falling at all points in their orbit. You can, again, you said you understood this, and you're wrong. You they don't understand what you're saying because all it, it breaks points. physics. This is also what you're saying too, Tony. This is also what you're saying too, right? With with your heliocentric model and satellites, you're you're saying you're saying that there is a ball in space. There are a bunch of different semi truck sized objects floating around it. So as as we are also orbiting around the sun, all of these things are staying tethered, and they don't float out of certain you know we're circulating we're not just going in one straight motion right that's what the that's what the globe model claims so if we're moving in this direction how do these objects all float tethered to us by gravity because it's speed the only is thing that would create moron. this dimension of floating now as okay. we're moving at such a dramatic pace movement arc whatever how Guys, are we this possibly is doing this and rotating and at the same time can you, physics, can you, physics don't allow us to do that can, Yes, you're wrong. It does, and here's the th here's here's a question for you. Here's a question for you: Is there anybody on this planet who, if they came up and told you your understanding of gravity is incorrect, you would believe? If 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 I if anybody walks up to me and tells me anything, I'm not gonna just blindly say okay. What do you mean? Like I'm not just um, gonna say okay. I'm ch I challenge science. So there's, so, you, so, there's science. so there's nobody. So there is nobody in your opinion who you will accept is smarter and better informed than you are. There is definitely somebody that's better and smarter than me, but I don't believe, who? believe a single man who? walks on planet who? Who? on this who? Who? Name yeah, one. Uh, Name a person who is smarter and better informed than you are. The um, person that played Tinky topic? Winky in the mean? Teletubbies. Like, how, how am I supposed to do this? Well, let me, let More, me smart, talk about myself. Smart, smarter, smarter, is not, smarter is not top, topic related, is it? Uh, Thomas Sowell. Thomas Sowell's a 90-year-old uh, economist, American economist. He's a uh, he's been a Harvard professor. He's intelligent. I look up to him so, rather bit. So, so if he so if he came up and said you're wrong about gravity, would you accept? His I would statement? say you know what I would say in Tom in, in reply to Thomas Sowell exactly what he would say to me. Show me the evidence. Yeah. I'm okay. Kidding. Well, let's look at the evidence. Let's look at the evidence for gravity. Okay, and let's stay on the let's stay on gravity. All right. 
Oh, I can't. So there is no evidence gonna... for gravity. You're going to tell me some story that you learned in academia. I already know, man. I don't really want to well, know no, all no, his, no. his work because I can reply to you different things about Dude, gravity. But go ahead. Uh, right. Okay. Gene, Gene, Gene can right. You hold just on, Gene. Just listen to him. For a yeah. second. Gene, just, just listen to okay. him. Right. This conversation is kind of stale. The, look, at, look up the Nash oil dome. The Nash oil field. Oh, I think he's okay. Nash. He's rage. He's rage. Quick. I'm, I'm, oh, no. Oh, no, I'm still here. I'm still here. Don't. Yeah. Okay. If you if you Google Nash oil field, the Nash oil field was discovered in 1924, and it was discovered using gravity. It was discovered using the gravity signal of the salt dome underneath, and there was no surface expression of the salt dome. So, um, this is. This was something, this is a practical, real-world um, application of gravity that is done every day. And mineral companies pay quite a lot of money for it to occur. To and that what exactly? To what exactly, to, Tony? To do gravity surveys of areas. But so what are they are doing it for? Why? What is this conducted for? Um, it is conducted to identify um, um, mass anomalies below Earth's surface that could be targetable um, mineral um, deposits. So oil fields, um, uh, metal deposits. Um, there, there are a variety of um, there are a variety of um, applications for it. Um, so, but so this... what is what is what? How do how do they apply using gravity to search for mineral deposits? How does how does that relate to gravity? Okay, so um, the rate at which objects fall the gravitational acceleration applied um, applied to objects varies as a function of position across this earth's surface it's not always the same again you just shook your head it's an observable fact mate it's just fucking uh, as i'm sorry okay. if that triggered you i didn't say a thing keep talking i'm allowed to shake my head i'm all the way in no, Michigan. Me, I don't even know no 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 Supposed to be listening and internalizing. The I was listening. I you interrupted to, to tell me yeah. that I shook my head. I'm a grown man. I shook my head. You're right. Well, stop look shaking it. Right, right. You can show him respect. Stop shaking your head when he's trying to explain I'm stuff. It's disrespectful. To. Go ahead. Well, I'm do me a favor. Do me head. a favor and just don't. Okay. I'm not even interrupting. I shook my yeah, head. But, I'm but do me a favor and just do me a favor and just pick my nose. Do me a favor and just. I didn't even interrupt you. Hey, I can't let you grown men check me for shaking my head. Do your thing. Gene, Gene, do me a favor and just don't do that. Okay. Thank you. I'm being respectful. I didn't do a thing to you, Tony. You'll be respectful if you don't shake your head. Thank you. I'm just, I'm listening and I'm disagreeing. Yeah, cool. yeah, please, I'm please don't shake your head. Thank you. Okay, if you're disagreeing, you're not listening. I was so, definitely listening. I didn't agree. I, I was listening. Otherwise, I should have shaken my head, bro. Keep going. So Quit being there, sensitive. Uh, so there are, um, there are things called gravity meters or gravimeters. And there are multiple different styles of them. And we use them to precisely measure the strength of gravity at um, given locations. Some of them are mobile, some of them aren't mobile. Um, and we can use them to go around and measure the rate at which the test object inside falls. Um, and we can measure that it varies. It is not the same um, from position to position. And we can then do gravity maps of the um, strength of gravity um, as we move the instrument around. We can use those maps to infer whether or not there is some systematic deviation in the mass underlying the gravimeters. Um, and then we can say, okay, there's a big negative mass anomaly here. Um, would you like to see a paper in which this is done so you can see a map so you can... Um, I'm actually, showing a map right now. No, no, no disrespect. Screen, I'm no showing at right all, now. but you kind of did exactly what I thought you would do, and, and I'm just telling you from my perspective, right? I I get who you I am to you, right? I'm a, I'm an idiot that's not educated, and you're Mr. Hotshot, right? But you didn't explain anything about the principle of gravity, mass being attracted to mass, and all whatsoever. Did. And this this is the word salad that I expected. There is there's nothing about the vector at all that doesn't that doesn't explain what buoyancy and density already explains. You mm -hmm. added the word gravity to what buoyancy and density already explained. Buoyancy and density okay. can't be measured with an no. accelerometer. Let me let me um, let me ask you a question. How does buoyancy and density um, at the mass that's being dropped tell you anything about what's going on under the Earth? Um, it doesn't, and either does gravity. So the fact that mineral companies use gravity all the time is irrelevant to you. The fact that 
Um, you, know, you can't just say the fact it's irrelevant. How do they apply it? How do they use gravity? How does a mineral company say we're using gravity today, guys? He explained um, it. I explained exactly the process by which this is done. There are things called gravity meters. And then once they have the gravity measurements, they can use um, Newton's law of gravitation to determine the distribution of mass that might correspond to that um, gravitational acceleration map. There's still nothing connected with mass, attracted to mass with that. Okay, nothing. right. Yes, can, there can is. I try, can oh, I try something? For God's sake. Okay. <laughs> so, um, if there's an instrument, at, if there's an instrument at Earth's surface, um, and that's measuring gravity, it is going to, under our version of gravity, mass underneath Earth's surface is going to influence the gravity measurement that is taken at the surface. Okay. We operate as though that is true. And then it turns out that we find stuff that does agree with our with our predictions from the theory of gravity. So the fact that subsurface mass concentrations have an influence on surface mass observations is reliable, repeatable, and observed. Do you know what is it, completely observable and repeatable and observed? And you can do this on your own. You can't. It, you're not going to have to rely on big science to give you the answer. You can. You can completely create a negative positive vector with two plates and a battery and use a tiny piece of paper. And that piece of paper is going to go toward the negative. The negative charge. That's. That's, I, that I, makes more. That makes more sense to, to me with I, electromagnetism. Electromagnetism okay. makes more sense than gravity. Okay. Can I? I have several questions. Please. So how do planes fly? How do they fly? Yeah. Magic. The lift is created from speed. Yep. Speed means okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. I just I just picked up this bottle top. Does that mean right. that gravity doesn't exist? Um. Does that does that mean that there's no downward force? I I can't apply. No, I, that doesn't mean anything. That means you picked up a bottle. Okay, plane. so why does turning on an electromagnet, which applies an upward force to something, to mean that gravity doesn't exist? They're unrelated concepts. Just like picking up this bottle top doesn't doesn't say anything. You know, the fact that electromagnetism can apply an upward force larger than the mm. than the downward acceleration of gravity, that's irrelevant. That, that, that then we know that there exist upward forces, right? This is yeah. not fucking ground shaking um, evidence. Why do you flat earthers go, well, therefore gravity must be electromagnetism? It's um, bullshit. It's, 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 one... it's an invalid. It's an one, invalid syllogism. I, um, one tiny unit of negative charge is multiple times more powerful than gravity. Multiple times. Have you ever heard of a, a propellerless drone? Are you familiar with propellerless drones? I'm not familiar with pro propellerless drones. They, they are, propel they are a, 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 full, a mass, a unit. They use they use a grid that creates a, a negative and, positive uh, ionic charge and, vector, and they actually uh, float, they're learning how to and, steer them. And now so that's what? that def that completely defies gravity because no, there's no, no the mass there. No, it's, 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 what do you mean? There's no mass there. You know, the, the mass of the drone doesn't disappear. It's because it's, it's not displacing air. Applied. There's not air even moving. No it's, one says so it's completely but, uh, quiet. To, right. You do understand the two forces. You do understand that two forces. It's harnessing it as it should. Right. Tesla. Tesla. No, direct this, direct is what, this is where I say PSYOP. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla didn't think they were prison. Tesla was right. in prison for having these science. Okay. Direction, uh, direction of the ether. Please provide me the engineering um, documentation where they say that it's the direction of the ether that makes the, um, that makes the drone go up. Uh, I would love to pull it up for you. You got you got ten minutes where I could spend some time and sit down and look it up for you. Or are you just asking me a question that you know that I'm not going to be able to produce for you immediately? Um, well, if you want to take ten minutes, I can actually it, I can actually entertain and educate the audience for ten minutes. Go ahead and do it. But I bet uh, you, if you bring up the specs of that thing, ether will not be mentioned in it. Ether might not be mentioned, but there's definitely a, 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 oh, a positive oh, so negative vector. So the um, not mentioned, yes. but it's definitely the um, I don't you know, know what's mentioned. Answer. How am I going to say what's mentioned? I can't say what's mentioned. You just I said don't know how they describe it. So. What's the definition because of what they're even using to well, even then, define it? Okay. Well, again, you're you're defeating yourself because oh. you said 
you said it was the direction of ether that was making this thing go up. And now you're saying, well, actually, maybe they don't say that. Maybe okay. it's some other I'm, thing. I'm, I'm labeling it as ether. What you just did is you said, make sure they have the word ether in your statement or it's false. And I'm saying, I don't know if they use the term ether. If, if they might I have some type the, of... I, I'll, I'll bet you right now $10,000 yeah. that the word ether does not appear in there. He's already lost $10. Tony, I don't, Tony, Tony I don't really care if it does or it doesn't. I'm talking about how the operation no, of the... This is, of a, the... This, is a, this is an easy 10, 10, this is an easy 10 grand for you, mate. If, if the I'll word bet ether... it doesn't because there's no scientific backing for the existence of ether. Okay. How do how do these drone droneless uh, or propellerless drones fly? What do so you think? the drones on? the drones whose technology you haven't explained and haven't demonstrated, I can't explain. Wow, what a bad scientist I am! You wait. What, a, should, what should, a, should I should I show? Do you want me to show you a show you a video? Like what do I do? What do I do here? How, yes. do, I, how do I how do I get on top of this where I'm hey, I'm not right, just just, just, right, just right, trash Gene, talk Gene, hold on one up. sec, right, what? Gene, one sec, just because. A drone can fly using electromagnetism does not debunk gravity. Two forces can exist at one time. That that's and it's, fine. And, that's no and, problem. and the force of defeating gravity is multiple, multiple. And I, and I wish I had how many zeros? It's like fourteen zeros times stronger. Yeah, yes, yeah, uh, stronger forces than which gravity. Which makes can gravity exist. next gravity to non-existent. Is, gravity is no. a very weak force. A very, very weak force is created from gravity. We know this, which is, but it's, which it's, it's the thing that's holding water. everything down to the ground. How about we just say it's buoyancy and density? It's dense, so it because goes it's down not. toward it the negative vector. The ground is a negative buoyant. vector. Right, it, right, it, okay. It is, it is, we can demonstrate that it isn't buoyancy and, um, and density okay. because we can show that masses do have an attractive force operating between them. We yeah. can demonstrate it through gravimetric mineral surveying. We can demonstrate it through gravimetric surveying of the ocean floor, which doesn't have particularly high resolution, but it is pretty accurate. Yeah, well, accurate, accurate enough. enough. Can, can you, uh, can um, you right, allow right, me to right, share one my sec, screen, Gene, Craig? One, can you one, allow yeah, me to one, share my I screen? Will, I will, just after this, okay? So going on the back of what Tony's saying there, um, the, the gravity maps yeah. of the ocean floor are actually very useful because the purpose of a military submarine is to be able to be not seen, to be stealthy. That means they can't use things like GPS, they can't use things like sonar, because these things will ping out a signal that other things can see. So, how do submarines navigate underwater when they're not allowed to use things that help them navigate, like sonar and GPS? It's simple. They use these gravity maps that are created, and then they use a series of accelerometers on the submarine to measure the change in accelerative force from the difference in mass. So let's say, for instance, the submarine goes over an underwater mountain. That is going to pull the string, the spring in the accelerometer down more because there is more of an attractive force because there is more mass below the submarine. And they use the fact that gravity maps have been created and the fact that a submarine can register the environment around it in real time using gravity to navigate successfully. Please explain to me how that is accomplished using buoyancy and density. I'm, I'm not a, a submarine pilot, but what you explain doesn't explain anything having to do with mass attracted to mass. I literally just explained it, it, how it does. It does. The fundamental principle here is that you're using gravity gradients. You're using the gradient uh, of the gravitation. That's a silly. That sounds so silly. No, like, I, 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 I know I'm the dumb guy. You don't even know what gradients are. I read gradients in a book, and it told me this. But, like, what you're saying is that a submarine can come over, like, a plane coming over the top of the mountain. And, like, a plane going over the top of the mountain is going to have a different type of gradient that's going to make it draw down to the ground differently. You know what yes. I mean? And I'm, I'm sitting here looking at a... That's a, how a submarines navigate. Literally defying okay, actually, what you're calling gravity and actually, floating no, in the air. It doesn't defy it. it's pushing away from the negative vector. You that clearly, makes more sense to me. Um, it may make more sense to you, but it is demonstrably fucking false. 
So maybe give You're it up. You're demonstrably false. Your ideal of, of science is demonstrably false. There's nothing no, that not. can, you can show me of mass being attracted to mass. You cannot uh, show except me Except the that. submarine navigation I just explained is an exact demonstration of that, right? Let, let me clarify for you, okay? That's the corny. Fact, I know right, you stop, read stop, that stop, somewhere stop, in a stop, book. Stop, 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 and let me fucking talk, Gene, right? I was a submariner in the Royal Navy. I didn't just read this in a book. I've used this technology firsthand, okay? The way that it demonstrates that mass attracts mass is because when there is more mass below or around the submarine, the attractive force and acceleration is greater, pulling the, 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 the weight on that spring more. That's how it shows that mass attracts mass using the you equipment explain in that, the submarine. You explain that, but that is like you there's there's not an instrument that's measuring the 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 center of the earth's pull on it inside apart of the from submarine. the instrument i just described to you and the way it functions to navigate billion did dollar you, nuclear submarines did you, there's did there's you no follow, gravity gradient and the moon doesn't pull follow, tides those are bullshit follow, those are bullshit did you, pseudoscience. Then explain the navigation follow, technique fuck sake did you bother to look up the nash oil field no, I didn't look up the national oil field since I've been well, sitting here on this video. I've, I've got it here or if, uh, if you'd like me to present it on the screen, Tony. Or, or do you cool. want to do it? No, 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 it's fine. We'll put up the graphic. That'll be that'll be good. Do, 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 do. Um, I definitely have on. my, my uh, propellerless drone video queued, but, you know. Yeah, again, yeah, so nobody, nobody, nobody really wants to see my I looked up propellerless app. drones and you lied about them. So, Wait, what? Um, they, they, they involve pushing air around. That's how they work. Your is claim that, your, that, is that your claim? Possible. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. So Tony, okay. here is so here is the are... gravity map of the um the, the oil field specifically. You can definitely go, show go, me. Go back up. Go back. Go back up to the top. Okay. Um. Uh, no, down a bit. Just down. You, you, we need to look at the units in the top left of that bottom thing with the two circles. Are you talking to so me? The two uh, circles. No, I'm talking to Craig. Okay. Two um, circles, the one inside the other, or the two. Um, go down. Go down, sorry. Um, which one is it? Oh, that's... So these, um, so the Nash oil field, which is which was the first oil field in Texas that was found using geophysics, uh, down further. Um, there's there's a there's a the first figure you had up, the one with the two circles on it, the two nearly oh, concentric this, circles. This one here. That one. Yeah. At the top, at the top of that figure, um, the, yeah, that one, Yotvosh unit. So a Yotvosh unit is a unit of gravity gradient. It is the meters per second squared change in gradient per meter. Um, that's, so this is a map of gravity gradient measurements. Um, and those... Um, those little circles there measure um, uh, surfaces along which the gravity gradient is equal. And you can see the gravity gradient um, uh, differences, you know, it comes up and it plateaus across the middle of the dome. So the gravity gets lower, um, the gravity gradient gets lower near the top of the dome where it's 750. Um, and you can see the 1,000 contour and the 2,000 contours. <laughs> so these are gravity gradient observations that were made a hundred years ago. Dude, and the you're fact not that showing you, me anything. You're fact, showing me like a, a a map. Cool. I see what you're showing me. Gravity map. This yes. doesn't this doesn't display mass so, attracted to mass. So, so, um. Do you accept like anybody can make a map? Somebody made Grand Theft accept, Auto for crying out loud. That's a map, accept, but and you can talk accept, about things happening in the game now, but like what's real? What's reality? I, your 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 storyline, it doesn't match reality. Except it does. And it I doesn't. get paid I get paid for engaging with reality. I get paid for um uh, determining for designing, helping to design satellite gravimetry missions into space that rely on gravity gradient measurements. So, you know, you can say that what I'm doing isn't real. And the reason the company that, that supports my position is willing to pay for this to be done is because they in turn get to sell this information to mining companies to help them find underwater, uh, underground mineral resources. This is, you know, you can, and you can say that's not real. 
but the company that is paying me thinks it is, and the company that is paying them thinks it is, and Nothing the entire you do scientific is to gravity, and, and the scientific exactly and the entire gravity. scientific community um, agrees agrees that it is, and the entire educational community agrees that it is. At some point, you're right. You I'll have, agree with that. At, at some point, you have to accept you're delusional. You know, you you're it's it's and it's quite sad. You're a forty you're a forty plus year old individual and you are throwing away your existence um pursuing a childish fantasy Tony. that any any eight year old Tony no you are you are too old to be this mad at me. I, I am a, he, he I am a man I am a man with an opinion that has observable evidence that this no, you earth don't is have not any a observable globe. evidence. You all you no, have absolutely stupidity. I do. No, you absolutely have stupidity. I do. You have over stupidity. Over and over. You have stupidity. And over you again, have stupidity. I, I have, I have evidence have that gravity is like going, frankly going toward the negative. It's not. There's no such thing as gravity. Well, you know, except submarines. There's no such thing as satellite in space. There's I've no such watched, thing as men that have ever been on the moon. I've watched, I've There's watched no such thing as boats going debates. over the horizon. I've four of your debates, mate. That's four cool. Of your debates, I'm glad. And you haven't produced a single shred of evidence through the entire eight hours. You're right. I haven't. I asked multiple times, can I show my evidence? And we're just not there. So I'm having a good time debating I mean, with you guys. I, I, like, but let's, of course, let's get I'm, evidence I'm not showing right? you fucking evidence. evidence. Right. Let's get my, your evidence my, up. Just my one quick question. My says, host disabled. Yeah, I'm going to put it up. Share, Tony. I'm going, if you listen to me, I'm so going to put quiet up. Quiet your quick... mouth, Tony. Hey, do not no. talk to my guests like that on my show. You're a ignorant motherfucker. You're way too hype. Lower your tone of voice. Gene. You're way too old to be this mad. Gene, do not talk to my guests like that on my show. Have some respect. He's the, no, he's talking about uh, no, me, Craig. Figure I it don't out. care. It's, it's okay. You I show respect boy, to people. But like, no, he's being every, Gene, but every Gene, you time, show respect to, to Tony. He deserves I'll, it. I'll just escalate. Um, you know, um, I, you, you're saying I'm too old to, I'm too old to um, be angry. No, the reality is I'm too old to put up with bullshit like this. Oh, you got me. And I'm going to plow through it every time you toss it up. Mm -hmm. Just one quick question for you, Gene. Um, how would you eat your breakfast without accidentally digging your eye out with a spoon? Um, I don't need a. Sp I don't use a spoon when I eat breakfast. Well, yeah. also he wears glasses. I, I understand That's that you remove all kind of sharp objects from your house. I completely understand. That's very. It's a very sensible thing. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, you can screen share and show us your evidence. Yeah. It was rather What's ironic up? hearing nattering about refraction while wearing corrective lenses. I know it's hilarious. You can't see clear images with refraction. Oh, my glasses must be useless then. <laughs> oh, it's nice to see that you search up my channel often. Thanks for the views. Oh, uh, you know, I was just just hit ten million uh, views, by the way. Ten myself. million views. That's ten million more brain cells than Gene has. I mean, there you go, Craig. I mean, really, don't yeah. talk bad that, about my guests, but dude, we will talk bad about you. Yeah, yeah, that's called a joke. You know, um, yep. if humor goes over your head, I fully understand. Right, 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 right. Just like all I the maths at high school. Um, oh, oh, and and I'm sorry, I gotta stop sharing. I didn't know I was sharing right now. Yeah, I, I, I mean, seeing your kinks there was quite I'm, interesting. I'm having a, I am having a little bit of audio problem. I got some latency, so I do apologize. I'm yeah, it's in your brain, not not with your audio. It's it's in your your your, your functioning cranium. All right, that's cool. Yeah. Anything, anything else, Craig? No, there's lots. Um, since I, I since, mean, since we so, all right, since you, I can't you, say anything, you're Greg, your guest. Yeah. But let's get me cool. What else? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm just pointing out facts. Um, uh, you you are the um, the current leading resident at the peak of Bounce Stupid. Do you realize that? What is that? You are the current leading resident at the peak of Mount Stupid, and that's actually oh, that's, a scientific that's awesome. term from a that's paper. That's cool yeah. too. Um, Dunning Kruger would very much like to 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 meet you. You you, you literally live at the peak of Mount Stupid. Oh man, you you got me, Craig. You're so smart. Uh, correct. So uh, this evidence of yours, where where is it? We're waiting. Screen share is allowed. Yep. Um, and, and I do see some flat earthers in the chat, um, especially Celtic, whatever his name is, uh, that that's making fun of people, but. Um, Celtic, whatever his name is, also paid for the pay-per-view debate that I was in uh, with Brother Sanchez uh, yesterday. So thank you, Flat Earther, for your money. Um, you know, surprisingly, 
for flat earth brother sanchez actually paid me directly after the debate and you know i there, there was quite a lot of money so thank you flat earthers for giving me your money i'm gonna buy a globe with it oh is he getting right, here we go here we go here we go so I'm going to step back over to the night. Um, Paul in the chat who says you should really take the higher ground when it comes to insults. It's beneath you. No, you know what? I, I stand behind my comments and later behind Jean, later tonight, Jean's mum. Hardy har har. To fly kind of the basics okay so we're, we're starting up as a, as a very young startup correct so the, the current uh, craft that we have measures five by five feet in length and has a, a height of about 18 inches all right it can fly up to 15 minutes carrying two pounds of uh, payload i mean for a propeller driven drone of that size that's not great but for something which near as i can tell is flying by magic that's pretty incredible Yes, I mean it's definitely a technical challenge. We are, like I said, we're we're just starting in the development of this of this journey. Uh, the uh, the feedback we have received from the industry has been great because that's that's a tool that the industry really needs. It's a silent drone that is silent. No, that's a good point. There are no propellers, so it's quiet when it flies. It's extremely quiet, extremely quiet. So not even my own dog wakes up when I fly next to it. So. Well, it's it's extraordinary. I mean, I just I don't think I can say that enough. It's really amazing. So hey, Tony, let's please keep in touch as you continue to develop yet, this because or... I am fascinated. And if I'm being honest, a little and and, and simple enough, it's, it's propellerless. So you... It's not displacing like a, a normal drone does. I have a drone. I fly a drone myself. Um, it's, could you point it's out where the they said thing. that it's um, what it's uh, doing? Could, it's yeah. actually. Pushing off of the negative vector, it's what well, could you point out that that's why they say I that's understand, how it works? What I understand, I am very limited as ether. Could you please point Bullshit. out where they say that's how it works? What's that? Could you please point out where they say that's how it works? I don't know that's how it works, but I just oh, so you're I, just making I, this up that it's pushing off ether by by oh, my definition. So you don't know how it's your evidence is something you gravity. Don't... No, it isn't. Jesus. This is like saying that me picking up a banana is breaking gravity. The fact that there exist various forms of upward force that can overcome gravity is not a mystery to um, science. It, you know, it's just, again, this is not a valid syllogism. You know, there are, there are so many different styles of forces that you can use to provide upward momentum. Maybe they're using Earth's magnetic field for this one. I don't know. Um, but um, that's different from gravity. And we know that gravity and magnet and electromagnetism are not the same thing because we can observe both at the same time and they don't correspond. Yeah, so uh, they actually you could, use... You could observe the, uh, gravity uh, and electromagnetism at the same time? How would that apply? Yes. In, yeah, would yeah, you observe you can, those at the two, same two time? Two forces can exist at the well, same time. Well, for instance... For instance, when you're doing mineral exploration, you may do a gravimetric mission and also uh, what's called a magnetotelluric observation, which is a um, an observation of the electrical field where you send an electrical field, um, you actually send an electric pulse down into Earth's interior um, and, um, and watch it come back to detect the conductivity of the material um, inside Earth. Um, so, yes, both of those are used in um uh uh in didn't explain uh, the gravity part he, yes oh i did God. you observe gravity you observe gravitational acceleration you observe the rate of which would you like to see the inside of a gravimeter sure okay uh well give me a moment to bring it up and i sh i'll um i shall explain it to you yeah, and just so you're aware, uh, that drone doesn't fly the way you think. It uses ion propulsion to displace air. That's it. Yeah, and the ion propulsion is what I was understanding yeah, so, as so, being the negative. So it does move air, right? Yeah. No, uh -huh. it does not. Yes. No, it does. It uses ion propulsion to displace air. That's how it moves. And it it doesn't it doesn't. That, that's according any type to the people wind. that made it. Doesn't it. create a displacement. According to the people that made it, it uses ion you know, generation to displace air. That's how it works. This, this is another case it's, where it's you've not made up your anything. own. 
Um, you've made up your own explanation, and you won't even believe. Did you watch the video, Tony? Before you start making a, a false claim, I just looked um, it up. So you, you won't even listen to the people who designed the thing when they tell you that you're wrong. Did you look at the video? Is there any type of air moving around it? The guy even said, "I can, I can use it next One to my dog." One of the things about air that you may have noticed in your extensive <laughs> scientific research yeah. is that it's transparent. Okay. So no, I didn't see any air moving because air is transparent. Yeah. And the reason it can be used next to his daughter was because the method of his moving dog. the air is very quiet compared to a drone that uses a propeller. You absolute dipshit. No, I'm not an absolute dipshit. And uh, what is, you the, the evidence is, you just presented it is, it is not, shows it is that you not are a displacement. Dipshit. It is what, what, totally. Uh, so you disagree totally with the using that, the, the negative So you disagree vector. with the people totally, that made right. right hold if, on. If air is if air is being so, pushed through that, so you hey, disagree cool, with the people but that it's made not it. Displacement, the typical displacement that you're trying to imply. So, so you are disagreeing is, with the people that made it, then, yeah? No, 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 not at all, not at all. You're implying it a certain way, and you're also no. saying that they said it's displacement. It's not displacement. Yeah, th those it's are the words they use. They use this ion propulsion to displace air. That is how they describe the function of their drone. I read that off of their website. Uh, so, again, you know, you're making a you're making a uh, a claim about the nature of something that you just don't understand and whenever um whenever you're contradicted on it you just make more assertions so say it say it is it say it is moving and displacing air we're still we're still using the the ionic vector the negative charge of earth to do no that. no then not that's Which, not how that it works. energy that energy that's is not how it works that is not gravity. how ion propulsion works it's how nothing it work, to do Greg? with earth's magnetic field Fuck well, how could it not? How could the magnetic field not ha have any implication on it? <laughs> Maybe, all right, do me a favor, go and research the drone, then come back and present it as evidence because you haven't a clue how it functions. It's, it is displacing ions, negative ions, pushing no, them toward the negative no. vector. No, fuck it, me, no. It's ionizing. Anyway, I'm going to share my screen now. Yes. This is what this is what's known as an FG, FGX5. It's a Lacoste gravimeter. Um, <clears throat> you can see the um, thing on the um, on, in the image on the right, and you can see it on the left. So what this consists of, those three legs are um, uh, basically a suspension system. If the system senses any motion then an actuator will compensate for it so that the um, uh, so that the um, machine is not influenced. That top um, uh, metal cylinder is the drop chamber. That's the chamber in which the um, in which the drops will occur. Below that um, uh, that blocky thing um, is a vacuum pump. So we pump as much air out of that as we can. We can try. We measure the temperature and the um, air pressure within the unit, and then we drop the corner cube. You can see the corner cube. Um, uh, we drop that. That's actually in, surrounded by a carriage. Um, that is on the left uh, of the of the corner cube. You can see the um, you can see a sort of thin track. There's actually a carriage that surrounds the corner cube that is moved mechanically down. Um, and that's to protect the corner cube from resistive forces due to air. So there's no air, air pushing backwards against it because this carriage is coming down through it. There are compensate. What isn't shown on the diagram here is there are compensating masses that move upward at the same time so that there's a um, minimum of, um, mechanical problem. So what happens is that while the corner cube is falling, um, there's a laser that is um, fired to it and fired back that measures the distance from the laser to the corner cube. And that distance is measured multiple times during the drop. Um, uh, so that's how we measure the rate at which something falls. As you can tell, the container is metal. 
which means that it will be protected against electromagnetic external electromagnetic influences um, because it's being conducted inside a Faraday, ca Faraday cage. Um, this is a different type of um, gravimeter. This is a superconducting gravimeter. In that chamber there, there is a niobium ball that is being, which you can see on the right, which is being um, supported on an electromagnetic field. Any force that is any um, acceleration of that ball, because this is it's it's surrounded by superconducting coils. So any force that um, moves the ball will induce a current in the coils that will force it back to its that will suppress the motion of the ball. So any tendency to motion of the ball will be suppressed by um, uh, by the magnetic field. And we can record the forces that are um, that are acting on the ball. Um, this is a cold atom gravimeter. The way it works is that you supercool atoms, um, uh, mostly rubidium, into what's called a Bose-Einstein condensate. You then um, put the Bose-Einstein condensate into a chamber where um, lasers firing um, from above and below split it into different parts. Split the, split the cloud of atoms into different paths and then recombine them. Once they're recombined, you can look at the interference patterns and the interference patterns will tell you um, the, the strength of gravity that the, um, uh, that the uh, satellites, uh, that the, sorry, that the, the um, uh, atoms have experienced on their different paths. Um, we can also go into orbit. These are the satellites down here on the bottom. These are the satellites that I was telling you, I'm um, telling you about before the gray satellites. Man, that stuff is not real, bro. I'm so sorry that you guys look at that shit and you look at it like it's real. I cannot look at that and not think fucking yes, Disney, this is, Disney well, Star Wars. Stupidity is this, is an artist's, this is an artist's rendering of okay. what the mission good. Looks like. I was going to say, so, I hope that you're not saying that's real. Ooh. No, no, I'm not saying that that's real. On the other hand, on the left, you can see the um, gravimetric observations um, produced by the two missions. You will note here in the top, um, in this, um, this is the mean gravitational field, so geoid height. You will note that the geoid height varies, and we can see this quite spectacularly in India. So if you go to the top of a mountain... And you go down, sorry, if you start at sea level in northern India, go up to the top of the mountain and go from that mountain down to the top and down to the southern tip of India, you will find you have descended 50 meters more than you rose. So from the same mountain top, um, southern India is 50 meters lower than northern India. When you get starting from sea level, going up to the mountain top, coming down, Southern India is 50 meters lower. Sea level in southern India is 50 meters lower than it is in northern India. Sea level is not flat, demonstrably so. And this doesn't rely on satellites. You can do this with um, geodetic surveying. You can. Hold on, um, hold on. I'm sorry. You're 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 going off right now. You just said sea level isn't flat. You said. No. Yes. Absolutely not. What is it's sea measured. level? Okay, sea level is an equipotential. Mean sea level is a um, is a surface where gravitational potential is equal at all points across the surface. Yeah, but for instance, you know the sea level at one end of the Suez Canal is different to the sea level at the other end of the Suez Canal. Sea level is not the same all around the world. Um, what do you What do you mean it's different, Craig? It's a different distance from the center of the planet. It's higher at one point, one side of the Suez Canal than it is at the other. There's the sea level. It, it's actually different at those two points. So, so let's go so, back so, to the so if, so if I'm understanding this correctly, if I'm understanding this correctly, you're saying that sea level is off of sea level at different points of the Earth. That's why there's something such well, as mean sea level. What's that? You can... Say it again, Craig. I said that's why there's something like Tony said, known as mean sea level, because it's not the same everywhere. So we have to, you know, get a median of that. Which, I mean, 
as we go back and forth between these two model ideals, like e on a flat earth and even on a globe earth, I can see where the sea level has fluctuation. It's water. Yes. And I don't, I can see where tides could come and go because it's yes. water. Right. And I see that on both models. And yes. when I, as I'm learning these two models, you know, getting deeper into the flat earth model, obviously I've, I'm, I, I know the heliocentric model. I'm a 40 plus year old man. No, of you don't. Okay, sure. Sure. Tony. Um, and you don't know where your penis is. Like I know I'm familiar with the heliocentric model, right? No, you know. I I know 24 hours. I know I I know what we're saying. We're we're claiming you're claiming that lights are trillions of light years away. That's physically impossible using the inverse square law. I have a hiccup with that. All right. Moving forward, provide with the, the moon, maths. We Wait, before you finish that claim, okay. provide the maths to back it up. What's that? There, oh, no, that no, the, no, 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 no. No, so there is man. What he's trying to do, what he's trying to do is um, derail the conversation away. Not from necessarily. We can get right back to it. I'm just no, saying no, no. You're, we're you're we're staying. An explanation. We're Let's staying. Get right back to it. We're staying with sea. We're staying with sea level. Let's so, stay with sea level. I, and this is one of this is one I, of the many things that I, we're getting into it. And you're I, using this to apply something that doesn't stand too far away from the flat Earth model either. You know, so that's what I'm saying. Like, we're kind of going around well, and around about, like, I get what you're trying to do, but where do, we, level, where do we, where do we move productively well, let him in this let him conversation his beyond? Point. Let him, well, let him I know what point. you think. You know what I think. Now, how do we come to some type of understanding? We're dealing with observational evidence here, mate. Um, sea level in southern India is 50 meters lower than it is in um, northern India. That's just an observable fact. Um, we can confirm it using multiple different styles of um uh observational data um but it's just an observational fact so now, what, let, you, me, let me ask you this tony how do you apply that to an ocean like how do you apply that to the ocean on a flat or globe model how do you apply that to even say what is up down from one point of this land mass to the other side of the land mass how do you how do you like you know so i'm trying to configure this right right you know, there's a land mass, there's a land mass, and you're saying there's an ocean up on this side, but then it's lower on this side, right? But water finds its level. So either way, on a globe or a flat model, like how does that make sense? And what do we, how do we say okay. this one is too high and that one's too low? Okay, well, A, and again, you need to listen to the words that I'm saying because I have explained this to you once. Just explain it again. Okay. Let's suppose we started a mountain in india okay presumably the mountain is the same height we go down to sea level at one point and we measure how much we have descended during that transect and then we go down from the same point to a different point on the coastline and we measure the distance that we have descended on that transect and it turns out that the distance we had descended on the two transects is different by 50 meters now um this is just this is the most basic observation this was well 50 known. meters 50 meters yes hold on hold on we're saying the sea level is off by 50 meters is that what we're saying yes hold on man it measured this is a fact it's not something you can just <laughs> no uh, it's and a I fact i mean why and you can't hold on man hold on so i so on the flat or the globe earth model India on one side to the other side, we're saying that there's a 50 meter difference between those yes. two sea levels. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. I'm I I'm not even going to say I know any better. This is the first time I've even heard of anything like this. But that even just hearing it and and I, yeah, personal is really cool. I'm saying that just seems absurd. That well, just seems absurd. Like that's that's like a football, like a half a football field almost. That's crazy to me to think that 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 water can on one side of a landmass to the other, no matter what, on a flatter globe. Like how is that even possible? Well, perhaps you could shut up long enough for me to explain Don't it. Don't talk to me like that, dude. I'm I'm being respectful. I'm asking you a question. You called me I? a dick. You called me. You are said you I didn't. Are you still mad about it? Are we? Have we moved on? Are you still mad about um, it? You, 
I didn't you say anything right now to trigger you, did I? I'm asking a simple question. I'm asking a simple question and you want to be disrespectful. I'm asking a simple question, aren't I, Tony? I'm not being disrespectful to you. You just explained to me something. I told you I'm not familiar, humbly, and now I'm asking more questions. Did I do something wrong to trigger you? Um, you won't shut up to let me answer the question. I've offered to answer the question three times now. No, you didn't. I was asking for clarification. Yes, I did. Again. I said I could explain it to you twice, and then again, that's what, ex three. what explanation do you have? Just talk. Okay. You may notice at the top of India, there is what is called a mountain range. There is mass in the mountain range. That mass is attracting water towards it. South of India, there is a uh, an anomalously low density um, mineral deposit under the surface off the coast of India, and that is a, that is why sea level is much lower because gravitational attraction is much lower. It's gravity. That that doesn't seem like a solid demonstration of mass being attracted to mass. Oh my! God. I, well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say you're lying. I'm not gonna say you're lying. So please don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> that that to me, that to me just sounds like another made-up science story to try to explain the globe. Okay, so, so except it. So when was it made up? Do you think? I don't know. I'm telling you what it sounds like to me. And yes, this is my okay, personal so opinion. That, and yes, so, I'm 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 an uneducated so, uh, physicist. So, so okay, the, cool. So the observations of the change in sea level between northern India and southern India were um, first identified in the in the mid nineteenth century during the um, survey of India. Um, so you know the so the obs and it's been repeatedly observed using multiple different um, measure measurement techniques. So you know this is an observation we observe. The sea level in I, I understand. Southern. That's okay. crazy to me. Well, we can explain it with gravity, and you can't explain it at all. I don't know if gravity so, is the explanation for that. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. Okay, if you're so, you're not making scientific or physics sense with what you're saying to me at this time. I'm not saying you're wrong, Tony. So don't get outlandish about that. I'm saying that that doesn't that doesn't make sense on any type of service or a globe or a flat earth model to relate to gravity now i can see if there's water flow maybe there's an ocean like a river coming from one side of the uh, this land mass and, a, and the other and that could create some type of you know dynamic okay, in the so flow of the water possibly that that just when you explain it sure that makes sense immediately and i know science doesn't work like that i get it i get it man but 50 meters 50 meters that's a lot it is a lot and you know the fact that you don't the fact that you don't think it's plausible is neither here nor there. We it's observe. You're right. It. You're right. You're yeah, absolutely we, right. We, we um uh you know it's it's an observation. It's part of reality. So you know and the next time you hear a flat earther say sea level is flat or water finds its own level, yes, water finds its own level. That level is determined by the physical influences that the water is under. That include, you know, so without any external forces, um, water will find uh, an equipotential surface, a surface along which gravitational potential is equal, um, subject to surface tension considerations, which you can't get rid of. Um, but then you can, um, it, then you can extend, um, uh, th then you can extend, um, you know, other forces to it. For instance, um, did you know that there is something called Western boundary current intensification? So because the Earth is rotating to the east, that means that the water has a tendency to flow to the west, which leads to these very high currents that flow along the eastern coast of continents. For instance, the, um, uh, the Gulf current, the Gulf Stream, that goes off the um, that goes off the coast coast of the eastern United States is an example of um, of this sort of thing. The same thing occurs in Asia with the Kuroshio current off the coast of off the coast of Japan and China. Um, you know the the um, sea level. Also, here's something that's going to blow your mind as well. Did you know that actually we can identify um, higher sea level over underwater mountains? and lower sea level over underwater valleys or abysses. 
In other words, sea level, um, because of the gravitational attraction of the mountain, pulls water over it. Um, and in fact, we can use that to map um, the ocean floor. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm respectfully listening to what you're saying. But, and as I'm listening to what you're saying, I'm literally applying right. everything that I understand about physics and science. Which is nothing. Saying. Yeah, zero. Which is nothing. You don't you don't understand physics. So okay. So, don't, so, don't, so, so don't how about how about how about you just not have a Tourette's rant? And let me finish what I'm saying. Would you like to let it out? Do you need to punch a bag? Can I finish? Okay. So I'm applying everything that I understand, and I'm which is very and, little. And, and, and what you're saying, right? What you're saying, you, you're saying that if there's an underwater mountain, right? That yeah. somehow that that's creating a bulge in the water, yes. right? Uh -huh. Okay. Now, immediately as you say that, in your desire to apply that to gravity, sure, right? There's you have a bias already with that mindset. Now, of course, I'm coming from a different perspective, respectfully, as science operates, right? As science operates. Now, now, now if there's a mountain, right, and we're talking about the ocean, we're talking about water, we're talking about currents, we're talking about wind even for that matter, right? I go into this mindset of where I'm thinking about all of the elements of anything that could be dealing with what you just said as a mountain, right? Air could be dealing with a mountain, underwater mountain. Now, if, if, if I were in a, just a, say a drone, and I were above a mountain, the equivalent to Lake this stream. bulge of water to the mountain underwater, would there be any type of air that created a flow of air up the side of this mountain and push that drone to some degree? And immediately I'd have to say yes. So if there is a bulge underwater, can we just simply say it's gravity because I want to say it's gravity? Or could it possibly be the currents of water that are that are, are at this mountain, which would be a landmass like Mount Everest, right? This is a huge landmass. We call it a mountain. At some point, there's air that's crossed like whoosh, whoosh, from both different sides of this thing, right? It has to be. So you're saying so you're saying that water currents are coming from 360 degrees around the mountain and are all bulging up together. No, I'm I'm saying they very well possibly could, depending on where that mountain's located, possibly oh, yes. <laughs> oh, so you're saying no, possibly yes. What I'm saying no, is, if yeah, you're talking no, about a, yeah. a mountain, what I'm talking about a mountain, right? And, and and I'm not making any claims other than what I'm saying out of my mouth right now. If okay. we're talking about a mountain that is is a is an obstruction to a plane shooting up, right? Now, to some point, there this mountain underwater or in air, there's going to be air flow around it. There's going to be water flow around it. it. It is a bulge that's creating an obstruction. Yeah. And let me there tell you, door, if there was anything right, and unless it's aerodynamic completely, which could be a level plane, is what I think of, or something that's you know a, a, a bird that's designed to cut through air, right? Anything else is going to create some form of type of resistance, and if there's resistance meeting that object, of course, there's going to be some type of turbulence around that structure. That may that may well be the case, but that turbulence would be asymmetric, right? It would extend. It, so if I put a if I put a stick in a river, there is a small bulge of water upstream of the stick, but there's a long um, trail on, on on the side, and that's mm -hmm. not what we observe with relation to this to these um, elevations. So the hydrodynamic explanation that you've got going is not consistent, but gravity is consistent. Um, you know, you can say you you can throw out all of these hypotheses, but this is let me let me pull you up right here. Okay, so I have introduced you to um, multiple strands of evidence yes. that you have never um, encountered before in your life, and instantly, instantly, you assume that rather than the people who have studied, studied these professionally for decades, you can come up with an alternative explanation that is physically plausible instantly. Like o on only, the turn of a dime. Only because, only because, Tony, to be honest with you, because we are in the complete context of talking about globe Earth to flat Earth. I'm not simply just challenging you just because I'm just trying to hold on. I am literally... I, I tried to completely try to take everything in my life in a mindset of perspective. 
not just spoon fed it. That has to be what it is and walk away. I've been burned as a human being by being that individual. And I've been rewarded by challenging oh. things and discovering, oh. okay, that's not correct. So, so allow me, allow me to, allow me to um, offer, some, offer a suggestion then. Because what you're coming across as is a reflexive contrarian. Instead of I'm in the middle of speaking, <laughs> sir. Um, in, instead of saying, wow, I had never heard of that. I should go away and examine it. You're saying, no, that's wrong. I have an explanation. Here it is. Tony, I'm not saying you're wrong. And I don't think I even said you were wrong about the last element of what you just explained respectfully. I don't think I did. I totally said, when you explain something to me like that, yes, I do search, especially when we're having the discussion between Flat and Globe Earth, I search for, is there any other type of element can, that could cause this reaction? That's all I'm doing. So but, by doing that, I am doing science. That's what science is. Yes, so, and so to just blindly say yes, this you, is you, what it is. I think you, personally is the entire problem of the debate of globe and flat Earth. No, Truly. it's no, it's no. This is the problem that you have. You believe that you are one on you. So again, I've studied gravity full time for thirty years, yeah. and I've represented my country um, uh, at mind sports multiple times. So I know I'm quite intelligent. I know I'm quite well educated as far as this is concerned, and I um, I have been studying this for 30 years. And you're claiming that in the first 10 seconds after hearing this evidence, you're going to come up with something that I haven't thought of. And not only me, not only me, every single geodesist, geophysicist who has lived for the past 200 years has been too stupid, too incredibly incompetent Tony, come up with an idea that you come up you're with you're gaslighting me because that's not what i'm saying you're gaslighting well, me because that's not what, what i'm are saying. You saying then can, what are can, you saying can, can i say it respectfully without yelling i'm not even trying to fight with you truthfully okay what, I, what i'm saying is and and i'm and i'm not going to talk about a particular um uh occasion where everything went into lockdown recently i won't say any trigger words right that to me please that to me was Come on, what are we doing here, right? There was a dynamic where all the experts were saying, this is what we should do. This is what we should do. They were wrong time and time and time and time and time and time again with, within all of it. We look back, if you can't look back at that and laugh a little bit like, whoa, that was crazy. Yeah, we, we were very dramatic about that. And this is what they suggested that we did. Now, I'm not kind of getting too deep with this, but with all things in science, all things, every single department of science, there is some form of corruption to some degree, to some degree, to some degree. We can talk about medical, we can talk about tech, we can talk about every single department, every single piece of it has some type of corruption to it. So for me, this whole globe and flat earth thing became more attractive to me to realize that there were people that were fighting over it. Like that was really like, whoa, is there even a debate that we had? I'm still a globe believer at this point, right? Now, every single time I've tried to dig a little deeper to understand a little bit more, I, I find out the moon landing was freaking fake. I don't care if you guys believe that or no, not. It was fake. You know no, what I mean? Every single layer I get a little bit deeper, I find out with gravity, there's a negative vector. There's a, there's another storyline to what can make something elevated. Define what negative vector is, please. What's up? Define what a negative vector is. For you know me. what I'm what I'm understanding, what? That, and as I'm and and I'll admit, I'm not a physicist. You know what I'm saying? I'm a simple dude. And honestly, lasers, lasers that are breaking the scope of what they should be able to do physically with light, they shouldn't be able to continue to arc and arc okay, and arc so, without some form of type of distortion at so, some point. So, so you know what I mean? Again, there's again, tons. There's tons. The 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 the, the moon no, no, itself. No, no, no. We, we need to. It, it's yeah, not yeah, even. It's uh, not even Gene, reflecting Gene, the Gene, sun's light. Gene, stop. We Gene, stop. We need stop. To, we Prove need it. To stop. Okay, so you are you are again descending into the um, into the mindset of you correctly understand these physical phenomena and are capable of determining whether or not what is observed is I'm not. Though um, I'm not is, saying is, that. Is, Yes, that 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 is that is the crux on which you're on. No, be quiet, be quiet. That is the that is the central axiom on which your um, syllogism relies. 
If your understanding of these physical phenomena is not reliable and is not accurate, then your conclusions are wrong. And that's the point where you're at. You actually don't, you know, this is the thing. I have access to, an, to a mountain of evidence about the Earth's shape and Earth's gravitational field because that's what I've studied full time for 30 I, years. I believe that. That's you, why I think you think that way. Yes, that is, you, I'm agreeing you, with you here. Yes, but you don't. I have more information, more evidence, and greater expertise that I can bring to this than you do. So I think you're embodied in the indoctrination myself. Personally, I know that's offensive to you, but I think you are completely a part of it, right? Except I, 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 I think I you have it. only pieces. You have enough to make you except feel important and smart, but you I don't have enough control. You're not the owner of the company. I I You're not the creator of the science either. You're an employee. You went to school and got a job. Actually, actually, shut up. I am. So I can. So the the um, gravity missions that um, the gravity missions that I analyzed, the Grace gravity missions, the ones with the two satellites, um, I developed completely novel analytical techniques um, to be brought to those um, to be brought to those that nobody else on the planet has developed. And be quiet. So the person who is faking the data. The person who is faking the data, according to you, has to have predicted that I was going to bring analytical, completely novel analytical techniques to this data and put in physical reality um, through those analytical techniques. That's what needs to have happened in your view. I have made innovations that other people on the planet haven't. And your claim that I'm just some flunky who's too stupid to know the distinction is utter garbage. I'm not calling like, you stupid at all, man. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm not saying at all. Actually, I believe that it's it's way deeper than what a conscious person could even be capable of thinking, to be honest with you. I believe, I believe this is almost biblical. I'm not even religious. Oh, I believe like you could be an atheist yourself and you say these religious zealots, they think this, they think this. I believe there is an entire compass scientism religion of the globe. And I believe there are books, there are narratives that completely have everything in mind before you even approach it. To be able to say okay. yes, this is this is going to be refraction. When when really me, in all reality, you've you've let, stolen the definition and changed it. Let me ask you a question. No one yes, did that. How do you know um, that um, people made mistakes during the pandemic? How do I know that? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, respectfully to both, you, please. YouTube um, okay. keeps keeps. All right, yeah, then, things, then let uh, me answer my own yeah. question. Yes. The reason you know that is because people did analysis and demonstrated it. Science can make mistakes and science will and scientists actually look for the mistakes in other people's work. Um, and then once they've found it, they'll have a discussion about it and everybody will go, oh, OK, that was probably a bit of a mistake there. That's how you know that mistakes were made. But that's also how you know that you're dealing with science. And that's also how I identify the um, distinction between my position and yours, which is to say that I will admit where I have gaps in knowledge. For instance, I didn't know how that drone worked until I looked it up um, uh, and until Craig and I looked it up. Um, uh, and these, and you know, we all still have more to learn about it, so let's not uh, act like we, we all know what it is. Yeah, yes, but um, but you are coming from what in what to me seems like a position of grotesque ignorance of physical principles, and you're asserting that such and such is impossible, such and such must happen, such and such has to occur, such and such conflicts with that, and you're wrong each and every time, and you just keep on saying, "Well, no, 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 mm. here's my argument." It doesn't matter what your argument is, what and Tony. what matters is what the observational evidence is. Tony. And this is where you fail every time. You have zero observational evidence. All you have is I think it should be like this and it isn't. Well Tony. yes, but you're ignorant and potentially delusional. Tony. Right. I'm you you could rant all you want and say I don't have a capability ability or a skill to configure like reality, but I'm yeah. in this reality, so I do. No, so, no, again, no. so again, again, so again, so, some, so, so something saying, as simple. Let me, saying... let me give, let me, let me, let me give you this as an example. You know, um, which I don't know if you even know this, but the inverse square law, applying it to the the maximum full moon of the the the, the light of the sun, or I'm sorry, the light of the moon, 
we can we can tell based on that alone that no one has ever been to the moon right? again again that is a misattribution so the the um the dissipation that should occur of the light from the moon is based on the distance from the sun that light has traveled from the sun reflected the moon and then come here its source isn't the moon so the amount so the application of the inverse square law should be based on the difference between the part of the path length from the sun to the moon and the earth instead of from d directly from the sun to um to earth so i am aware of what you're saying there and i okay. know the exact the exact um mathematical errors that have been made in that analysis and, are you uh, are you aware what a selenelian eclipse is yes refraction and, Okay, and that's what I'm saying. It's refraction and gravity. We don't need to move on. The refraction and, is the answer. We don't need to discuss it. That is the answer, whether right. you agree with it or not. Right, and that's what I'm saying. But everything that I've ever heard out of a person okay. that continues this whole on, continues to support the globe, I get refraction and I get gravity, and that's literally it. Every okay. single well, just thing. Just because you don't like and, those and, answers and, doesn't no, mean... No, 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 no. The no, problem no. is... The and, thing and, is... Another thing no, too, no, 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 hold on and one second. If I could just touch base with Tony real sick for a second, Craig, respectfully. I talk to you all the time, all the time. Now, respectfully, Tony... Now, we Craig doesn't want us to talk about something on his on his podcast. There's censorship there, right? For a reason. That made me draw skepticism. The, okay, the flat so earth, the flat earth is gonna, censored, right? The flat earth is censored. Gonna, now, flat earth why, is why censored. censor the flat earth if it's such a stupid the flat idea? Earth is not censored. But it fizzle okay, out. Let it, to, it explain itself. I'm going to censored. I'm going to um uh intervene there. So what I have observed over the past um decade. Um, and indeed it's longer than that, is that there has been a um, proliferation of false narratives. Um, and let me give you an example that is, um, uh, that is more neutral. So let's take, for instance, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Um, Russia maintained um, that it um, didn't have troops in Ukraine in 2014. Then six months later, they just turned around and said, yeah, yeah, we had troops here all the time and now we own the place. What are you going to do about it? They maintained that they didn't shoot down um, the Malaysian Airlines plane and they still maintain that to this day, even though we can identify the exact rocket unit that fired the rocket that killed them. And we have, um, we have extracted debris from inside the corpses of the pilot that coincides exactly with the, with the style of missile that we know, that we know was shot. Um, so we have people on both sides maintaining reality versus unreality. There is a reality out there and there is an unreality. To my mind, um, the proliferation of unreality that social media has made possible and the amount of time that otherwise constructive members of society have wasted um, uh, engaging with this is um, dead weight social loss. Um, so um, the reason for doing this is actually to protect people. Um, and I realize that there is potential for people to abuse um, uh, censorship, but I actually think that you, and you're an example, you're an example of somebody. What's the worst thing has, that happens if somebody believes in the flat earth to the globe though? What's the worst thing? They could, they die. Yeah, literally. But how? Mad Mike well, thought the and, earth was and flat Mike, and built and a rocket to try and prove it. And what he did was prove gravity is real. No, 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 no. I'm not saying what is the worst thing. Somebody might perform an experiment that kill themselves. If I if I'm this man, I am in this flesh and I say, I'm going to believe the flat earth for the rest of my life. And I want to go on with my life and believe that. What does what is, I mean? What does that change about anything? What does that hurt? What does it do? Why censor it? Okay, what, let me answer that point? for you. Okay, because so, uh, okay, if I if I came up to you and and I said, um, you know, I'm Napoleon. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, would that would that would you think that I'm delusional as a result of that? I I personally would, but what would that do to hurt me though? Okay, so if you go into a job application. And you say, well, let me tell you about the flat earth. Um, you're not going to get that job. You know, you are, you are at that point, you know, if you say, well, I'm open. Why to though? Science. Well, hold on. But it says who though? Why? What would be the, just the person say, hiring? I can't yeah, do we'll it. Just put person. that resume because, to the side. It, it is a delusional belief. It is an archetypal delusional belief. But men, but we're promoting men being women too, but that's okay. Let's hey, not censor that though. That's, 
let's, uh, um, let's keep this, uh, the focus on, so on thinking, Flat Earth, please. Uh, so, you know, you can... We can't talk um, about that, right? That's weird. That's not well, what my channel weird. is about. It's not what my channel is there about, are, so I don't want it spoken about on my channel. Are, okay? And I live in America. Free speech. Let's talk about everything. But we can't talk about things? That's weird. Actually, No such actually, thing as you, uh, free speech actually, exists on my channel. Actually, you have a right to free speech. So your right to free speech is, has been curtailed by multiple um, Supreme Court decisions. You do not have an unfettered right to free speech. Anybody uh, should be able to say anything they want to, and that's my personal belief. I don't give a damn about anything else uh, but the original Free speech does not the mean is consequences. Any person should be able to say anything they want to if they're not infringing or hurting anybody. Uh, I don't okay, care what so, you want. Um, I, I right, disagree. Hold on, and I hold on one sec, one sec. Mine. Yeah, one sec. Um, just, just to say, Gene, free speech is not the same thing as freedom of consequences from that speech. Please and you have to deal that. with that. If you say something, that's your prerogative, though. Yeah, and now no, you, you have, have to deal, have no, to deal, you with, have to deal with the what consequences yes, of what you but said. But I think you should be able to say anything you want to without censorship uh, at all from any uh, direction. Uh, well, then, uh, as long as you deal with you know, the consequences If you call somebody a slur, if you make a false claim, yes, you should have to deal with the repercussions okay. of that. You can make assertive uh, claims and end up being killed. That's your prerogative. But every right, person so I, should not be... They, no one should be censored to say a single thing they want to. They should uh, be able to say freely what they want to. No, that's false. Okay, so um, humans survive because they are social animals humans are not more dangerous than lions or tigers or bears what humans have is intelligence but they also have the ability Some to work as social units the larger the social unit you can form the more effective humans and the more effective humans are the more secure they are and the better their standard of living now that means the directly anti-social activity and that includes speech is harmful no. whether or not it's whether or not it's um whether or not it is directly harmful it is harmful and therefore and you will find that most of the supreme court restrictions on speech are to limit various forms of antisocial speech but you know your um and i would argue <coughs> that the welfare of society in general and the continuation of society takes precedence over your willingness to mouth off um, uh, and um, there's no way that you're ever going to be able to convince me that censorship is okay because once censorship is okay, the government gets co to control the narrative. So, yes, you're, you are YouTube actually isn't the preaching government. everything that I'm firmly against because I believe the government will control the narrative. And every single but way YouTube isn't the government. But, but YouTube that doesn't, isn't the government. But we do live in an observable reality, right? I, I believe in an observable reality. Yes, okay. An observable reality disagrees with your understanding of physics right um no i don't agree with what you're saying there i think you're rooted in your own scientism okay, your own so religion you so you can't explain the 50 50 meter change in sea level from northern india to southern india you, you couldn't reject... let me explain the inverse square law of the moon either but we, um, let's go back and forth about it you can't explain because, why the moon always faces I, I us you can't explain why that you either wrong. yeah i can Tidal i explain wrong so, you know, Craig, the, I know the, you have an explanation. There's an explanation in a book. There's an explanation on Flat Earth, WS. There's some type of explanation for everything that you can look up about the globe. I get that. But when we try to apply that to any other physical reality, the reality that we live in in this realm on the ground on Earth, we can't apply that. These are well things that we're stating. We don't, know what, we don't know what any of these things are in yes, the sky. Yeah, well done for no straw mining most of the science. Good job for straw mining how science works there. Brilliant. Thank you. Yes. No, we we just can't. You're you're making yeah, well, well, good things, job. Craig. Good job, straw manning science. Well done. Good job. Well done. Yeah, you oh, are straw manning science. Oh, you no, are. no, you are right now. For fuck's now. sake! For fuck's sake! You are such a knob. For somebody who's who has spent eight hours, ten hours now, spewing nothing but nonsensical false claims to you and produced zero evidence. Zero Tony, evidence. why doesn't the Ember yeah, Square Law make any... sense to you about the moon? Why doesn't that make sense to you? The mass disagrees um, with you. I explained it to you two times now. Stop interrupting. You so know, you didn't explain it. You didn't explain it even closely how I understand it, though. I feel like I understand it well, more that than you. Because by, you don't understand you it, it, right? That's that's because you don't understand it. So if I were to measure the 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 lux of the moon on the surface of the Earth, right? Don't I get some type of understanding what you told me is the distance to the light on its brightest day? Don't I get some type of understanding of math now? Or do I not? That's it's, not how are that we, works. We're saying That's, it's 253. You're battling. 
No, I'm not. I'm asking you a question. Yes, you are. Is, is, the, moon, is the moon 253,000 miles away? Yes or no? Approximately. Okay. Now, can I take the moon on its brightest day and, and say this is what the lux is of this of this right here can i can i do that yes, can. Can, I, can i can i measure it all 13 moons and maybe even come up with a median can i do that what right? 13 what are you I talking can, about right now i'm just asking a question what can are, i do that is that possible moons? you you there's 13 you said, moons a year 13 moon. moons a year every 28 27 days there's 13, 13 moons a 13 year 13 lunar phases is that yes, what you 13 mean? full moons. Yes, 13 full lunar phases a year. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Yep. Yep. And and I am and across my journey of this whole globe earth flat earth thing and this isn't anything necessarily globe earth flat earth, but I learned that the Romans changed the calendars. They added they made it 12 months when it was originally 13 months. And then there's a month soul yeah, that's, that's nothing to do with flat earth. You know what? You know what it has to do with for me, Craig, censorship and changing the narrative. No. That's what it has to no, do. No, it's with because me. he. It's because no, the Roman emperor the, wanted to. No, be no, 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 no. So the so reason back to the moon. I don't want to get off on a tangent about it. Okay, I'm sorry that I did that. I triggered you guys. Back to, back, to back to the no, emperor no, square no, law. Back to the emperor square no, law. No, back to the no. emperor square law. Because I triggered you guys. I said something, and now you're triggered. You want to talk right, about okay, it? Now. Um, I don't even want to get on that subject. I, right, I, so, I'm just simply bringing up something I learned about the moon. That's it. Bullshit. But what Does that make sense? I brought up something I learned about the moon, that there's 13 phases. That's what I learned. I learned oh, that there was a month taken it. away. <laughs> the moon, moon means mo month means month. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's, it's a similar word context that got distorted. Month means month. This is the dumbest thing. Okay. okay, for the benefit of those in the audience, um, back in the, back Am in I the wrong? day, let, let Tony I'm speak. not wrong. I'm making a let statement Tony about speak. the moon. Hey, geez, I am, let, let I'm speak. about to explain reality to you. Please be quiet. Okay. The lunar cycle is the most apparent um, uh, like and said, most immediate. Subject, but here we are. Measure you want to teach me something? You're not Tony. teaching anything here. Measure of the measure of the passage of time. It goes from new to full to new to full. Um, and this is th these were recorded quite early, and this became a very natural way in which to measure the passage of time. Except when agriculture became important and the migration of animals became important, they don't work on a lunar calendar. They work on a solar calendar. They work in response to the seasons. Therefore, the discrepancy between the lunar calendar and the solar calendar became important. And in fact, it became more effective for people to work in terms of the solar calendar. Now, the fact that the lunar lunar months and um, you know the months we use now don't line up is a direct is a decision based on the fact that we actually it's more convenient for us to have the seasons at a fixed point in our calendar so that we know when we should perform various um, agricultural um, uh, tasks. This is the entire reason why we passed from the lunar um, timekeeping to the um, uh, to the uh, to solar timekeeping, and Gene is correct. Um, the term month is a is a, is an adjustment of moon. It's about one lunar cycle, um, but the adjustment for that has nothing to do with repressing um, with no, censorship, or shaping narratives, or any sort of sinister cabal like um, uh, nonsense to do with the Tony. fact. Tony, the Romans were the one that made the 12 month calendar. They changed the narrative, man. I don't care what, what you say about it. I don't care about your opinion. The Romans changed the calendar. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it was Constantine. If you want to do your own research about it, there's 13 Absolutely. moons, then that's it. it. That's all I'm saying. There's no, there's one. It's Julius Caesar. In fact, the Egyptians had 12 months before the Romans did. Dude, what they are you saying? Oh, what, did you, what did you stop me to even try to teach me this? I know you're not no, getting you anywhere with it, though. Because you're making errors. Julius yeah. Caesar was the one who reformed the um, who reformed the calendar, not Constantine. And the Egyptians had thirty day months. Way I said before. it was a Roman, maybe Constantine. I wasn't. I wasn't being exact. I said maybe Constantine. I don't know. I knew the it was Romans. The Romans. The Egyptians had twelve thirty day months, and then they had five. Um, uh, then they had five extra days to make up the solar year. There were sort of hollow holidays okay. and that's how they that's how they instituted the um that's how they instituted their calendar Tony, what was, did you stop me for to tell me this story that Why was thousands of years that was thousands of years before the fucking romans so what is right. your point 
My point is, wrong. you don't know what the fuck you're talking about on any level. Tony, the, I said there's 13 moons. Is there 13 moons? The reason no, we have moon. a solar year Are there is 13 moons? No, there's one moon. Not with repression, not with censorship. Are there, are there 13 full moons, moons a year? Are there 13 full moons a year? Not always. Okay. No, not always. Sometimes did, there are did, did 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 some did some culture like the Aztecs had their own the thing Africans Africans uh, were the first to start universities you know what I mean like people have been studying the sky ever since the existence from different parts of this existence so you're not saying anything there's 13 moons on average every year the stars no, are one moon in that there space. Are, there are, whether it's a globe or not they return to the same space every 365 one moon. No, they don't. No, they don't. Okay, bro. Uh, All right, is, you're tripping. Is, like there could there be is, some. There should be some maybe is, slight movement, is, but it's not moving. Motion, as... There is proper motion of stars. The comets don't return to exactly where they were 365 oh. years ago. Nor do the planets. Nor do um, meteorites or asteroids. Dude, um, none of those return to where they were. And you're there tripping. is. Proper motion. And there are um, features that come into existence and then pass out of existence, Dude, like super, like supernova, um, which you know. So your claims Dude, of all of this Brilliant. are nonsensical. You're tripping. Like um, you're, you're tripping. saying, they've moved two degrees in the last four four thousand years. Like, yep. bro, cool. It moved in that aspect. If you want to say that's, that in the most minute way, but our constellations have barely moved for the time frame that we have that's, been on this existence. That's, 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 that's traveling that's, that's, at the that's, space that's, that's, that we're traveling. Absolutely, that's, that's, absolutely it's not. Absolutely it's not. And the I've inverse seen, square law proves that stars uh, are not even a light hour okay. away, let alone no, light years, trillions of light if years. Up, physically impossible. If you, look up, if you look up the zodiac, you will find that Ophiuchus now, uh, now occupies, the, the, the constellation Ophiuchus now occupies one of the zodiacal um, points. Sagittarius takes up more than Sagittarius I think it is takes up more than 30, 30 days and and Scorpio is barely in it even more oh. because the zodiac has changed you claimed just seconds ago that it hasn't and it has oh it out of the 6,000 different lights that are in the sky there's a there's a little bit of movement, and you're going to claim that we're still traveling at 19 all billion the miles a year. That matches what we not at all. That's what the movement is. Again, the fact that it doesn't make sense to you is no. irrelevant. You, you don't even yet. know how to describe it yourself. You're you so indoctrinated. Yeah, we do. Light you can't are, travel that far. Are, Light cannot right, travel right, that right, far. Right, 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 right. Stop. One sec. One sec, please. On please. One sec. Right, both you. One sec. What is your evidence? Right, guys. What is guys. your evidence? Light can't travel that far. Yeah, yeah. This is what this is. My evidence. My the inverse square law is my evidence. Right, Gene. One sec. Please. Please give me the maths that shows the inverse square law says that we shouldn't be able to see stars. Could you provide that math for us? I can provide it. Let me allow me. I have a I have a section of my arrangement where I can apply this completely. And where did you get this math from? It, the math is actually very very simple to be honest the in, with you. It's so let's so let's while he's dragging that up the inverse square law refers to the intensity of um uh, electromagnetic radiation as a function no, of distance. Not distance directly, source. Tony. I have to correct you there. It, it can be applied toward light. It could be applied toward radio. It could be applied toward radiation. Did I say All electromagnetic radiation? Yes, I think I did. Right, but but that's and radio is okay, a form okay. of okay. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I, I cut you off and I apologize. You're right. Okay. It is applied to that and 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 ultimately it's it's the intensity okay. of that. So let's so let's get back to that. Intensity uh, is the uh, number of photons per square meter per unit time. Yeah. So if something is low intensity, all I need to do is wait. I can make up for lack of intensity by looking at it longer, okay, to increase the number of photon strikes. Um, so the um, so your claim that stuff that's far away um, is invisible is false. All I need to do is look at it longer and take a longer exposure, and I can see those dimmer objects. That's what these high precision um, telescopes are for. That's what they do. You're talking about um, taking like a long exposure photograph. You're saying, um, you look at well, something longer, sort of, you get more photons. I'm, right. I'm, I'm talking. Do, I'm talking about the, like 
observation. You can do the same with you can do with you can do the same with radio. You can right. do the same with gamma rays. Gamma, gamma rays. You you just point the sensor at the at the patch of sky and you register the number of photon hits per unit time. And this is why telescopes have uh, optical telescopes have to be quite so long is to exclude photons that might come from other sources. Right. So you're just looking at the you're just looking at the at the object that you want to look at and you're not getting you're not get, getting photons from anywhere else. So this entire argument of yours is I didn't even get to talk, bro. You grabbed the mic and got to say what well, you wanted to say like you have been. Well, OK, so the, the well, you inverse were, square you law, were, you, were, you, were, you were supposed to be I, you were supposed I, to be pulling up the mathematics. Yeah. Have you got I, the mathematics? I, I, I did pull or up the mathematics. Oh, were you busy arguing with me? I right. did pull up the mathematics, you angry right, guys, old please, man. I please, did. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to talk. Please, thank you. Right, so, um, Gene, the inverse square law. Simple, let's talk about this. Um, the inverse square law says that light will never reduce to nothing, to zero. It will always have a certain amount, right? It will never become nothing. So, um, even if a star is extremely distant, the light that comes to us from that will never reduce to zero according to the inverse square law. And according to scientific research, between one and three photons hitting our eye is enough for us to register light. So to say that the inverse square law means that we can't see stars is completely asinine because the inverse square law says that we will always be able to see at least one photon of that light that is coming to us. Do you understand no, that? The inverse, the, no, the inverse square law does not state that, Craig. You've added no, a lot of muscle does. to that. You added no, a lot of muscle to does. that. No, you, no. no, it does not. No, it absolutely does. That's, that's no, not does arguable. Not. The inverse no, square law not. says that light will never reduce to zero. That's, that's not directly how this is implies. No, that, cool. that's exactly what right. it says. Do you know water is H2O, Craig? Are you, uh, again, are you saying no, no, that anything let's, let's that's stick not, with, like, uh, stop, that's stop. That's what you're doing. You're uh, a inverse salad, square law. Can I, inverse can square law. Inverse square law. Stick to the inverse square law. And bear in mind, you're talking to someone with a physics degree, degree that has actually done all calculations right. on the inverse okay. square law. Right. Okay. Are you, so, are you done? We had this yeah, in our first yeah. conversation. You did this with the inverse square law. We talked about it and you said, all right, it won't reduce to zero. Right. And I still haven't even... Tony, grab the mic. You grab the mic. Can we talk about this? Let me tell you what I know. Let yeah, me tell so you what now I know. present your maths that debunks what we've said. On you go. And, and, and it's actually very simple. Like I've already said. Here. Yeah, it's, don't it's, talk. It's, it's Show actually, the maths. All right. Um, so simple enough. As we were looking at earlier, the inverse square law. Uh, distance distance, and, luminant, and uh, lumens, right? No, share so, your... Distance is not measured in lumens. All right, it's it's. I didn't say that distance versus lumens. We're talking. Are about you going to share your screen right? or? We're talking about the intensity, Tony. Right, and we're talking. Share your screen. Distance. Show the stuff, so, please. Share the screen, Gene. It's, it's and it's all right. Here, let me. Uh, I got two different things. Yeah, stop fucking ignoring uh, me and actually listen uh, what I'm talking, please. Share the screen. Yeah, chill out, Craig. I'm sharing. Well, do as you're told then. I'll do. No, don't talk to me like that. I'm not your. Well, do as you're told when I ask you to do it on my show. Then please. Told. It doesn't matter. It you're doesn't on my matter. show. I'll, you will do I'll, as you're told. Thank you. All right, and I'm not gonna do as I'm told. I'll do as I fucking want. You'll, you'll do as I ask on my show. Thank you. I'll do what the fuck I want, and I will do You'll do as you're told. Now get on with your explanation. The inverse square law. The inverse square law. We have, and simply as I'm showing here, as as it's explained, right? It's squared over distance. I have a. I have another. Let me see. So at what point does I2 become zero? Yeah. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't become absolute zero, right? But it, there, right. Well, there is a point. Like, that, there is a point. All right. So, and, and this is another breakdown of the inverse square law. So if the light that we're stating is coming off of the, the, the stars in the sky or Jupiter or any other planet for that matter, right? As it travels per that distance, we we're, were able to calculate the intensity of that light. Now, if we uh -huh. get closer to that object or further away from that object, we should we should absolutely be able to measure um, the intensity if that is correct or not. And and number one, my two things: the moon and the sun. You could take both of those elements and, and an extension of the the stars. You could take both of those elements. Take the math that's been given to us about the distance. Go on, and show us the maths. And the sun. What's yeah, up? You're just saying things right now. Show us the maths. 
Please. So, so this is this is what this is simply just what I have right here for like. Well, no, 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 no. I want to see specifically the maths about your claim that the inverse square law means we shouldn't be able to see the sun and the moon. Show us the maths okay. for that specifically. This please. is this is this is actually kind of a diagram of the math. No, I don't want to see the diagram. Through. Stop! I don't want to see your diagram. I want to see the maths for your claim, please. Right. This is a diagram of the math. I don't want to um, see the diagram. I want to see the maths for your claim, please. Right. I'm not going to do the math. It's well then you simple. have nothing. Well then you stop screen sharing then. If you're not going to show this the math. This is this is actually this is actually the math in a diagram, Craig. Yeah, no, it's not the math. Uh, That's not the math for it. So unless you're going to show the math, so it's, it's, it's the distance. The it's the distance. Yeah, you're, you're not sharing the, the screen one, anymore because you stopped showing the math. So unless you show the math, you don't show your screen. It, well, you you just you want me to run through the math and it, it explains it. It's yeah, specifically it's the math. It's literally squaring squaring the one unit. Per yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that simple. Get, show, show me the maths. So, I would like you to take the intensity of the sun and the I, distance involved, and then show me the maths. Okay. Yep. This is the this is the problem you have all the time, Gene. Um, you show the you, you you sort of repeat some physics, but you have no, no observation. It's right there. Validation. I showed you a diagram. You what are you guys no, saying? I'm gonna yes, pigeonhole you so you can't explain you with know, your diagram. But you have no observational validation that your conclusions are correct. You had no. Hold on, hold on. I, I had a diagram to explain my math, and I wasn't allowed to. You yeah, didn't. No, there was no math there. We, no, there was. There was. You, it was right on the side, Craig. It actually no, showed the no, the intensity no, of the lux of the yeah, moon. Yeah, yeah, no, and the no, yeah. What, what? No, what? It had X. It didn't show the actual intensity. I would like to see the actual maths for exactly the light that is coming, taking into account the entire surface area of the moon. And how the inverse square law says we shouldn't be able to see it. I would like the maths for that specifically. Like That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, like I, I, can, to, I can hardly like explain to. what even I'm saying to no. you guys because you're jumping right, on everything. Well, Tony's going to talk right now. What I'm saying is that the inverse square law can be applied to everything that we see with the moon landings and no number. Yeah, Tony's going to talk right now. You're muted. On you go, Tony. All right. So there are multiple. There's the mathematical theory of the inverse square law. That is one thing that exists. Now you're claiming that this, um, well, Gene is claiming um, that this proves that the something about the moon. In order for him to make that leap, he must apply this theory to the observational situation that um, uh, that he has evidence for, and this is where he's failing. He is saying that because he has a super big mega brain. His um, yeah. intellectual application of this theory to this circumstance proves such and such, but he hasn't actually done the application of the theory to the observations nope. to demonstrate the correctness, and that's where he consistently falls over. He doesn't engage with observational evidence. He says, here's the theory, therefore this should happen. He doesn't show that he is correct in his conclusion. He has no external validation. He has no mechanism by which somebody can check his work. Um, he just makes claims over and over again. And then when people tell him that he's got it wrong, he just says, no, I haven't. You've got it wrong. And it descends into this childish. Nah, 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 nah. And when somebody produces new evidence that he's never encountered before and has no explanation for, Instantly, he assumes that within five seconds of hearing it, he can come up with an explanation. The professionals who have spent centuries um, dealing with it have not considered. It is arrogance. It is um, delusional. Um, and it has no bearing whatsoever on science. And um, Gene Tony. can complain as much as he wants. Tony. Go ahead. If, 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 the, if the moon is 253,000 miles away... Yes. And let's let's just say the intensity is one lux on the Earth's surface. Well, it's not. Can Show we... the actual maths, please. What's the oh. how? What is the intensity? Please give the correct what numbers. Is, what is the intensity, Craig? Depending on its maximum. I don't know. This is intensity. your claim, so please tell us what it is. Right. So can we can we say one lux? Can we say it's no, no. If we're, if we, no, if we're going to do the maths. We have to use the correct numbers. Oh, okay. So please give me the I'm, actual I'm, intensity. I'm for the moon. I'm stating that I understand the moon's maximum luminosity is between one. I'm sorry, 0. 0.6 to 1.2 lux to my Where'd you get that information? Am I, what's that? Where'd you get that information? Um, actually, I sourced it from a couple different spaces. Um, I, I sourced it from the internet, of course. I checked with ChatGBT just to see what it came up, and I don't rely right. on that as to be my main source for anything. Right. I know there's flaws in its algorithm and all and of the I, information. And are you taking I've, the entire I've, surface area of the moon into account? 
No, just uh, the am I source. taking am I taking the surface area of the moon into account? What I'm taking into account yeah. is the amount of intensity of light that's dis being displayed on the surface of the Earth. Uh, that can be yeah, well. I just looked up moonlight, and the moon produces about 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 lux illumination even during a full moon. Say that again, Tony. 0 0.05 to how much? 0 0.1. To one. Lux right. illumination point even zero during five to zero point one. Okay, so 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 point five to one lux, right? No, no. Point zero point five to zero point one. Yes. Okay. Zero point one is one tenth of one. Okay, just to help you there. I understand what it is. No, now, now that being said, applying that, applying that, and let's let's say it at its, which I like to just say, let's say let's use it at its maximum, which would be the uh, the the point um, point. 0 0.1 right yep okay so as we travel to the moon 253,000 miles we cut that in half the luminosity of the moon should double at that point correct correct okay so if we travel half of that distance yep it should double again are you, going, are you going to go through Zeno's paradox for us um if if it's something that I'm not familiar with let me know but this is just my speculation of the the moon landing that by any measure based on using the inverse square law the luminosity of the moon should be should have been more intense than the sun for those men on that orb that's um not true um you know you 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 can say that that's your understanding but it's not true it would um, quantify it would quantify by like over 20 times the light um like that's 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 <laughs> That would you, be the inverse square law. You haven't, you haven't produced, you, again, you're saying that, and that's your claim, but you have produced no demonstration of it. So, you know, if... So we, how, can I if how can I demonstrate that to you other than continuing to go through the math of... You can, well, what's you can what's the math? Let's, let's double it again. Double it again for every distance that we get a little closer, and that's the answer. That's going to be yes. the answer of the mathematics. Uh, so, yeah, but the... But how does this mean so, we shouldn't see it? I don't understand. It which is going to be more, which is going to be intensely more intense than the, the the light on from the sun on Earth. It's going to be no, brighter than what we get on the from the sun on Earth. Yes, it is. Do the math. No, no, don't believe me. No. Do the math. Don't if believe you were, me. Okay. Do the math. Look, you're the one making the claim. Yeah, you and it is. The and, and, I, and I went through this a couple different times. I wish I, I wish I had my notes with me about going over the inverse square law that I wrote to myself. I ended up throwing them away because it's just the inverse oh, square law. And it's actually pretty simple. Oh, wow. It's actually pretty my simple. Dog ate my Dude, I'm, Tony, I'm asking Where you to go through it with me. That? Let's go through it right now, Tony. Let's go through it right now. You're so smart, physicist. Let's go through it right now. How bright is the sun? How bright should the sun be? How so bright the sun... should the moon be on the surface? How bright should it be? Do the math. The surface right? of what? How, how, run it. How you're telling, you're telling me be... how stupid I am with how the How bright run should the moon be on the guys. surface of what? you run it. Tell me what how... the numbers are. Answer my fucking question, dipshit. What do you what? mean? How bright should the moon be on the surface of what? How how bright should the, the, the luminosity of the moon be if men were on the surface of it? If you're on the surface of the moon, based on the brightness oh my... that we have okay, on a right. full moon Do you realize your problem? Day. Do you realize your problem, right? When you see the moon, let's, on let's the just do the day, math. I don't want to know my talk. problem. Let's just do the let math. Let me talk. Let me talk. Prove me right? wrong with the math. I'm good. Let me talk. Interrupt me again, yeah. and I will mute you. Right? Go for it. Behave, or you get muted. So, when you're looking at the moon on the full day, you are seeing the light coming from the entire surface of the moon. The men on the moon didn't see the entire surface. They saw a tiny portion directly below them. Not all of the light from the moon, just the light from the tiny portion in front of them. Those are two very different things. I mean, yeah, they are, but if exactly. The, the so light, shut your dumb the, fucking but, ass but, up, but, but, but again, before you just cut into me, Craig. Yes, they are. Let me let me give you my scientific uh, response back you to you. You couldn't if you tried. Before you start having and start cursing on me, but you but yes, they are. You tried, things, but you, you're also you're also stating that obviously that that the 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 brightness of that orb in the sky isn't isn't the same yes i understand no, I'm not. just the surface but no, I'm not. i didn't say that the, at all the intensity no, you just of the light some up. the intensity just make, of the no, light that we get from the moon I'm gonna mute is you. actually I'm gonna mute measurably you. I'm not gonna mute coming you. from no sorry you say some of that i didn't say you get muted all right i did not say that at all uh, i i said none of what you said i said when you see the light from the moon at night from earth you see the entire moon so that's the intensity that we get. 
when we are up on the moon, you are not seeing the entire moon. You're seeing the light coming from the tiny portion that you are on. It makes sense mathematically. All right, you can now be unmuted. Respond to that and nothing else. It doesn't make sense mathematically because... Do the maths then. The, 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 the light... The light, do the maths. The intensity, do the maths. Do the maths. We should. Let's, let's do, the do the math. Let's do the math. Let's do the math, Craig. Let's all three of us. Let's do the math. Yeah. Let's all uh, start take figuring it, out. Taking into Tony, account. I see, I see your head down, into Tony. Account. I hope you're doing the math. I hope you're take, trying to figure uh, right, it out. Uh, you know, okay, prove uh, me wrong. Right, prove okay, me wrong. Gonna, Let's all do it. Right. So you're muted again. You don't get to talk whilst I'm talking. All right. Learn to behave. Otherwise, you will just be muted constantly. Um, when you do the math, you have to take into account how how much of the moon's surface and how much light is reflecting from that little bit of the moon's surface. So we're talking about the astronauts. Let's think what they can see around them. So let's say they are seeing the light from um, a, a hundred meter circle around them. Okay. So the light coming from that hundred meter circle, that is the light we are going to work with, not the light coming from the entire moon. On you go. Show us the maths, please. Um, that's not how, that's not how light works. Yes, it is. Especially, especially bouncing, especially bouncing off of a rock surface. The astronauts do not see the entire because, light from the moon. They and see and, just and the light And if that were the case, Greg, the if you on. applied the science that you're, the pseudoscience that you're trying to apply, then we should see a lot more. Right, so I muted again. Um, I've asked you to provide the maths. Unless you provide the maths, you're going to be muted. So provide we the maths. We would see a lot more earth shine on the moon. Right. Don't unmute yourself again, otherwise I'll remove the ability to do that, okay? So, I've asked you a question specifically, the astronauts on the moon, let's assume that they can see uh, the moon surface 100 meters around them, okay? Now, we need to know the amount of light coming from that area of the moon surface, not the entire moon surface. Please provide the mass for that. If you don't provide the mass for that, I will mute you until you do. Now, go ahead. Are you a are you a grown man? Like what are you act Right, okay, so you're muted again. I've asked you specifically for something. If you do not provide me with the thing I have specifically asked, you will continue to be muted. I'm going to ask you once again for the thing that I am asking for. Using your knowledge of the inverse square law, we are going to assume that the astronauts can see a circle around them of 100 meters. Therefore, we have to consider the intensity of light coming from that 100 meters that the astronauts can see. Please do the maths considering that fact. Nothing else. Don't say any other things at all apart from giving me the mask for that on you go you know we're being recorded right you're asking for a silly question right okay um i'm just going to mute you again so once again i've asked you specifically for that maths don't say anything else if you can't provide the maths then just don't talk those are the options okay you can now unmute your, and provide your the options maths. are silly bro your options are silly okay right you're you can apply the math yourself you're being silly you can okay, just stay muted so now. I've done some, I've done some preliminary calculations. So the radius of the moon is a thousand seven hundred and forty kilometers, around about. The distance to the moon is three hundred and eighty-four thousand um, kilometers. Um, so that means that by the time um, you're, uh, you are, two thousand kilometers away, the um, uh, the moon should be ten times brighter than it is um, than it is at the surface. Um, so it's not, uh, you know, and at that point you're going to have sort of uh, differences. Well, actually, it should be a hundred times brighter. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> it's. Um, I don't see that that's a problem. That takes it from you know point zero five to five. Lux or point one to ten. Um, yeah, I don't. Seem I don't think that's unreasonable. That's at a. That's at. Um, you know. That's at an elevation of a, of a thousand. But once you're above, once you start descending below that height, you're going to only be seeing a portion of the moon. Uh -huh. So this is the overall intensity. Um, I, I think that I think that the radius of the moon is a useful cutoff. Um, uh, yeah. You know, you don't want to. If you start going into, if you start getting too close <coughs> to the moon, you're going to get you, you're going to get the surface area of effect, surface area effects that um, Craig yeah. is talking about. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, you know, just doing the, um, just doing the maths here. I don't think that there's anything unreasonable about the um, about a, 
uh, lunar um, uh, surface illumination intensity in, in the range of 5 to 10 lumens viewed from about 2,000 kilometers. I don't see how that's unreasonable. Wow. Um, what, what we saw there was um, two very different things happen. Um, I asked for the maths and Tony put his head down and did the maths and then presented it. Whereas when I asked Gene for the maths, um, I, I don't know, his brain cells rattled around and he had some kind of stroke and then refused to stop talking. These are the reasons why we listen to people like Tony and not people like Gene here who struggled to cross the street without their hands being held. Gene, you can um, unmute and now respond to Tony's mathematics. Uh, I think... I think Tony was on the right path. Um, I think he might have an error in his math. Um, Could you point out the error, I, please? Yeah, you know, he actually had a little mistake when he said 10 times, then he said 100 times. Yeah, yeah, he corrected so himself. I, so could you point out the error did, in his he, final he, maths, he please? He did. And, you know, and, and as I... As I so can you point out the myself, error in his final I, maths, please? I found it to be like 20 times. It was yeah, could, more could like, you point out the error in like, his final maths, please? Point, go through the maths uh, that he did, and could you point out the error? Uh, yeah, you want to just show me, show me your math, Tony, so I can do what Craig is asking since I need to do everything he says. Uh-huh, absolutely. Okay. Can you show me the math so I can point out the math because he's asking for silly questions? Let me point out Tony's math. Oh, let me show, so, Tony, let me, show you, let me see your math. Craig wants me to break down your math, so show me your math. I got to do no, it. You to Craig show says on math. his show, so show actually, me your math, Tony. No, I want, actually, I want, I want, ask, I want ask you Craig, to show the out. math that debunks what Tony said. So on you go. Right. Right, right. So, and and as I started off, when I started to break things down, I said, let's let's break this down together. We should be able to break this down together. So let's Craig, see the we should be able then. to break this down with us. Let's we should be able, we have an audience, the right? Then. Let's all break this down together. The audience can Come break on, it down. Do it then. Let's, let's, let's do it all together. Tony, go through your. Right. Sorry, I've muted you because you keep over talking me. Um, you don't get to over talk me when I talk. You shut up. That is how this works here. Thank you. Um, when I'm gonna uh, when I unmute you, you will present the maths. That is what going to, is going to happen. You will present the maths that you have done, but you came up with that figure. Okay? Nothing else. All right? Y it, this is now your time to present your maths. Nothing else. So I'm going to unmute you in three, two, one. Present your maths. Tony. Tony. Can, can you do yep. this math with me? Can we do this? All right, no, yeah, sorry, okay. I, no, I, I've asked you to do the maths. Yeah, I'll, no, I'll, I'm, willing to work, I'm willing to work with Gene on this because I think he's okay. right. I think I did make it. Right. But, um, and this is the thing about scientists. We can check things and we can determine whether or not we've made an error. Okay, so let's, let's look at the distance from um, Earth to the moon. It's 384,000 kilometers, right? And our cutoff for approaching the moon is 1,737 kilometers okay so that's that's where that we're going to compare the, the intensity there to the intensity at earth well, i'm sorry what's the what's the cutoff that you're describing okay so that's the the proximity to the moon that we're going to compare it to so we're going to say the intensity at this distance from the moon um is so so much um uh is such and such um, over the over the distance. In fact, we can do this quite easily. Okay. And I and again, you know, I know we're debating. I know I'm the the flunky and all that. I did the math before myself. I went through it, and again, I wasn't hundred percent sure myself. It took me a moment to kind of configure what I was trying to configure here. And yeah, I'm only out by a few orders of magnitude. Um, yeah, that's all. So it's about 50,000 times brighter. So, Craig, this is all I'm saying. When when things like this happen with science, it makes me have a hiccup to have to go. I feel like I need to look a little deeper. Like what and happens when I look with at science? something, and this is, and I I introduce when this, what happens I introduce with this science? to you respectfully. respectfully. When, when what happens? I, with I, science? Hold on, hold on. When what happens with science? I, I, I want to hear what you have to say, Tony. But when I, and, what happens with science? Hold on, I want to hear what you guys both have to when, say. When I introduce when this, what this to the conversation. Science? Right, you're muted. I'm asking you a question. When what happens with? Like, you're muted. I'm asking you a question. When what happens with science? Please respond. Thank you. When we get a situation like this, where we assume men have been to the moon, and we take that as fact, 
And then we come across something like this, where us in 2023, we're breaking down the math of the light using the inverse square law, the, the amount yeah, of light that we get here. You're doing it wrong the, because you're not taking into account the amount of light that the people on the moon can actually see. So, right. you know, you have to include people, that in your math, right? The people this, on the moon can only can only see. So basically at, at 2,000 kilometers above the moon's surface, you would have a maximum um, intensity of 5,000 lux. Now, we can make um, lights that are much um, brighter than that. So, so this is all I, can I introduce this, Tony, real quick? The, now, the flat Earth model, I'm not saying this is a claim no of what thing. I'm saying is fact, but the flat Earth model claims that the moon emits its own light. Now, well, you know, physics disagrees. You have have a, when, you have a, when you have a fake moon landing, it creates skepticism. I have, I have so okay. How have you led to the idea that there's a fake moon landing? This is one of them. The inverse square law. And okay, but the but intensity of light would be too bright. Too it's bright really because we use so five thousand lux mm. is the brightness of light that is recommended if you are doing fine inspection of a um of an electrical apparatus that's the um the the brightness of a lamp that you should be using for that if you are like myself age impaired you're over um well actually it's older than i am I, if you're over the age of 65 they recommend that you use a 10,000 lux lamp mm -hmm. okay so the idea is and so basically the surface of the moon when viewed from 2000 kilometers above a moon surface is about as bright as a bright lamp um, um and and you're claiming that that disproves the moon landing how i i believe it's it could possibly be brighter than that tony and that's why um, i'm saying but, I, maybe we could do this math together but I completely. Use, but I use, okay all right let's do the math together because okay, I, think so I think it's brighter than that. I think it's an intensity right, that's even brighter right, than the sun no, 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 on Earth's surface. Okay, all right, all right. So let's look at I1. I1 is the intensity at um, Earth's surface, which is 0.1. I, I1. Yes, that's okay. that's I1. Okay. And, and now we're trying me, to... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I do got to get a drink of water. I'll be back in just a second. I apologize. I have to break right now. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, I was only out by a couple of orders of magnitude. I didn't. Sorry. Sorry for so that. Craig. This happens. Uh, that, sorry, it, it's it early happens, in the morning. But, but the fact is you're doing the, the math. And, um, you know, he, even if his premise is correct, that, oh, it should be too bright for them to see, he is not taking into account how much light the astronauts would see at that, you know, what distance they are above the moon. You know, at a kilometer exactly. above the moon, they would only be able to see a circle of about 58.9 kilometers, right? So if we say the lux of the entire moon um, at, you know, the two, a quarter of a million miles it is between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1, then the lux of just 58.9 kilometers at one kilometer above is going to be much, much, much less because it's so much less of the surface with that light being emitted, you know? And so... Yeah. Well, Even if his premise okay, is correct, so this needs to be taken let's, into account. Let's, so the, okay, so, um, uh, yeah. Um, the going closer to the surface. Okay, so let's look the at the light. Distance. It shouldn't get become less. Um, well, it should because you're receiving less light. Okay, so um, light is reflecting from, when we look at the moon, we're we're seeing light reflected from the entire surface of the moon not just a tiny port not not to, just a tiny part of it right mm -hmm. um so the um so that intensity that we're seeing is the light that's reflected from the entirety of the moon um that has reached us um not just a tiny portion of it so um if it were a tiny portion of it the lux that we would see um, would be reduced. This is how, um, and I had a question um, related to this. So why, so whenever there's a solar eclipse, why is there always a lunar eclipse nearby? I th I honestly think, Tony, to answer that question, I, I don't know, but I think there are things in our, on our sky that are beyond our even 
perspective. I think sorry, human. Sorry. I think, just, and, and not to be too long. I don't want to be too long with this answer. But I, I believe humans only have a short spectrum of all the all the ways of rays of light, all the spectrums of light that are even visual. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think we see everything that's in the sky personally. You know, and but I think there are. I think there are other orbs and that nodes is, that create. But isn't that? But isn't that what instruments are for? So we have instruments that can perceive that have um, perception ranges that are vastly greater than humans. I think we're isn't... figuring it out, but I don't think we have all the answers of what's in the sky okay. at all. Well, but so you're right. So, but that doesn't that doesn't explain. So we can explain that in our model. We know why that happens, right? It's why? because. Um, it's because so the moon is at an angle to um, uh, to the to the Earth, um, and what you need is for the sun over there to coincide with a node of the moon's orbit. That only happens for a brief amount of period for for a brief period. Now, as the moon goes down on this side and causes a solar eclipse, it eclipse it must be perfectly lined up. That means that if you go around to the other side, you're going to get a lunar eclipse. Now, it's not the case that all lunar eclipses are necessarily associated with a solar eclipse, but all solar eclipses have a nearby lunar eclipse. Um, and there's a, there are predictable seasons each year in which that can occur based on the nodes of the moon's orbit and the position of the sun relative to that. Because if the, if the sun is over here and the moon's sort of side on, you can't get any you can't get any um, lunar or solar eclipses. It's only when they're perfectly lined up like that that you can get lunar and solar eclipses. And this is why you'll, um, wherever there's, a, whenever there is a solar eclipse, there will be a corresponding lunar eclipse that is available. And this gets back actually to what you were raising earlier in, um, uh, in relation to lunar calendars. The Greeks worked out that about 19 solar years corresponds to 221 lunar cycles. Um, uh, which means that there's a, a 19 year um, uh, repeating cycle right. for um, for lunar eclipses, and every three cycles the solar eclipses repeat. So if you just keep on looking long enough, if you keep on looking for like 56 years, 57 years, you'll see another um, you'll see another solar eclipse. This was something that the that the Greeks had worked out. Um, and so, um, uh, so this, this is how we understand this in our model. And this is why, and, and the fact that those phenomena, the, the fact that the sun gets blocked out and the moon gets blocked out, um, close together in time is what convinces us of the, um, uh, uh, is one of the, one of the branches of evidence of the correctness of our interpretation. Whereas your interpretation is that there are a bunch of bodies out there that we can't detect um, that are moving. I don't, I don't, no, 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 no. I don't want to say that that was my claim. I, I'm, I'm being philosophical for that statement. There okay. could be because we see activity in the sky that actually, and you're explaining it respectfully, Tony, but it doesn't exactly coincide with the heliocentric model. There, there are things there, um, and, 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 and I'll, I'll admit this one. I'll admit this one, and all I can say is for you to look, the viewers to look, and for Craig to look. I've, I've seen observations, and this is a phenomenon, of being able to see through the moon during a, or, yeah, during the, uh, or through the sun during a solar eclipse, that you can actually see through it, and you can actually see stars behind it, like through it. You know what I mean? That that to me doesn't make sense with the heliocentric model, and that's just my observation. I'm not saying what it is. I'm not making a claim. An another thing with uh, eclipses, as we're on eclipses, my, the question that was proposed to me: Have you ever seen an object make a smaller shadow than its original size? Yes, and I can show I've you a video to, that happening. I, I, it, what's that? I, uh, my friend did the experiment showing that happening. Would you like me to show you? And respectfully, respectfully, Craig, I'm not saying it didn't happen. There's a challenge there with that coming from one light source. Whenever I've tried oh, to apply it, so it, if you could if you could educate me, if you're ready, it, hey, cool. But I've never so, been able to replicate a smaller so, shadow so intensified. So let's let's do an example. Let's let's consider this bottle top is the thing that's casting the shadow, and this um, uh, my microphone case is the um, uh, is the light source. Will you accept that the shadow of this smaller thing 
is going to be smaller than the object itself. My observation and what I understand about light is no, that shadow will not be smaller. Okay, why? But, but this thing is this entire thing is casting light, so it's casting light, and so it's casting light from up here that comes down over there, and then it's casting light from down here that comes over there. So the shadow must be smaller, right? Um, I, I think about making a hand puppet of some sort. I got a dog going on here, ruff, ruff, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. However, it's going to look now. As, as I'm casting a shadow on a wall, how could I ever possibly make this? Like without distortion, how could I ever make this visual with a with a with a much bigger light? You're using a very small light that is about the same size as your hand, right? So um, in could that, I do that case, with the sun on my driveway, though. Um, well, you haven't really enough distance between your hand and the surface of the driveway for significant convergence to occur. Um, so no, you can't do that. Right. Um, I, but, I am just but, into the toilet. I will be back in. The, Two seconds, please do not break my channel. Absolutely. Okay, but the, but the fact that there's, but but the um, so you know the 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 fact that the moon is so far away allows significant convergence even um, even there. So it's it's these are all explicable. I think um, here's a here's an explanation of um, of sort of what's going on. Um, but he has to move a long way away from the, he just turned it side on. But okay, there you go. That's a small effect, but he's moved a fair way away and he's showing you that the that the shadow is smaller and the shadow cast on the piece of paper is smaller. And now he's going to bring that um, back in and he's going to lay it on top of that circle that he drew to show you that that, that circle is actually the size of the, is the, is the size of the paper cutout. But you can see there, that the um that the disc is casting a small shadow and and respectfully i think as it gets smaller you have distortion as we see as well and at a well, certain we have... point there's a there's a range right there's a range of where you can't see it to the the type of shadowing that we see yeah. here on earth which which i'm just saying respectfully if you if you want to imply that type of shadowing it makes more sense that the moon is closer than 253,000 miles um, well, we can measure the distance to the moon, so um, we know how far away it is. So, you know, the the this is again observational evidence. We can use radar, we can use um, lasers, we can use um, uh, we can use uh, uh, a number of other observational techniques. Um, can I ask you a if, question, Tony? Yep. How can how do how can we apply these things? You know, we can use um, radar, laser, right? But then, you know, for some reason, like we can measure a distance like that, 253,000 miles away with the moon. But when yep. it comes down to 50 miles away to Chicago, we have refraction and a bunch of other things that get in the way. Okay, well, the, the um, styles of radiation that are being used and the um, angles to the the angles into the atmosphere that are being used for these um, observations are chosen so as to minimize refraction. Um, and it's, uh, you know, we can, we can include refractive effects as errors. And in fact, we do um, include various distortional effects as, um, uh, as errors. For instance, when we do GPS calculations, we um, have to um, consider the influence of the ionosphere on the path lengths that we get back, um, but we we can um, determine these if we if we have enough observations, um, we can determine the corrections that need to be applied. Um, so um, you're correct that there are these um, there are these there are always error terms associated with every observation, and most of the art of science is working out ways to make sure that those errors are very very small in comparison to the signal that you're trying to get out. So this is where you will this is where you will hear technical terms like signal to noise ratio and other terms. So we're we're trying to we try and make sure that the signal that we're trying to achieve is much much bigger than the noise than the than the random errors that might afflict it. Um, that's a large part of what scientific um, scientific effort is dedicated to is identifying these sources of noise and lim and minimizing their impact. 
So for instance, if you choose the, if you choose the right angle vertically, um, there, um, the, so, so if you go through sort of a perfect stationary atmosphere and you look vertically, there should be no refractive effect. Um, uh, you know, not from something that's straight above you. Um, of course there aren't, per so, you know, doing those straight, um, doing these azimuthal observations, um, is the best way to sort of try and minimize the, um, the refractive effects, but also using particular classes of radiation like microwave and radio radar rather than light. Um, we can, we can work to, uh, we, we do think about these things and you're right to bring them up. You're right to bring up potential sources of noise. Um, but uh, we do, con you know, the, well, I, I keep on going back to this 30 years, eight hours a day. And actually, I'm not that successful a scientist. I can come in here and, you know, I've got a PhD and all that sort of thing. There are, there are actually a couple of scientists in the chat who are much, much better than I am. Um, and um, uh, but all of us spend, you know, our professional days thinking about, well, how could we be wrong? How could we do it better? How can yeah. we do it? Um, and so, you know, I, and this is this is this is where I would have I would have um, a lot more respect for flat earthers if they if they would say, you know, okay, what about this? Have you considered this? And we could go, okay, yes, we have considered that, and here's what we do to try and get around it. And our response isn't perfect. There are tiny errors. There, there are errors involved, but here's how we work out how big the influence of those errors are, and here's how big the signal is, and here's how we reassure ourselves that those errors are smaller than um, than the signal that we're trying to get out. Um, and so, the the uh, some of the questions that you're asking are actually good faith questions for you know the the, the refraction thing. How how can we be certain? Um, and there are going to be some some uh, minimal refraction effects, but they're a lot smaller than yeah. You know, they're not large enough to to sort of make uh, um, to, to to make up the bulk of the distance to the sun, um, for instance. Okay, right. This has been going on for a long time, so I'm getting close to starting to wrap up because I also have about 19 million super chats to read because you people that support are absolutely insane. Um, <laughs> But just before we do, um, I would just like to clarify this issue about your claim with we shouldn't you know, be able to see stuff on the moon because it would be so bright um, with the maths, okay? So when you're one kilometer above the um, surface of the moon, you are just seeing a small portion. Um, if we consider the full moon as seen from Earth to have an illuminance of 0 0.1 lux, which is the upper end, then this is due to the entire visible disk of the moon. The surface area of the visible part of the moon will be calculated using the formula 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the sphere. So if we are one kilometer above the moon's surface, then we would see about 58.9 kilometers. For, you know, that would be the circle that we could see from that height above. Um, so the area is much smaller, given by the formula 2 pi times 58.9 kilometers, okay? Uh, the ratio of these two areas give us the fraction of the moon's total visible surface that will be seen from one kilometer above the surface, which is 2 pi times 58.9 kilometers squared divided by 2 pi times the actual radius of the moon, 1737 kilometers squared, which equals 58.9 divided by 1737 squared, which equals 0 0.00115. Assuming the brightness of the portion of the moon we see is uniform, then we can multiply the full moon limit uh, luminescence, one, 0 0.1 lux, by this fraction to get an estimate of the luminance from the visible area of the moon at one kilometer altitude. So 0 0.1 lux times the previously calculated 0 0.00115 equals a luminance of 0 0.000115 lux. This would be how much light the astronauts would be getting reflected back at them from the surface of the moon if they were one kilometer above it. Well, the luminance of that light. So I your assertion that I it don't... should be... Uh, hold on. Your assertion that it would be too bright to be seen is debunked by the mathematics involved. Um, you were gone for a minute, Craig. Um, and I think me and Tony might have a have an uh, agreement that there is some type of... Um, possible misunderstanding about the the moon landing assumption um we no. you you you're 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 implying that the closer that you get to the surface the light is going to become less intense and that's Absolutely, just not yes. how light works man no no well, it just no, won't. of course it's because you're not going to get closer to a less... light source and it gets any dimmer that's just not how well, it happens 
you, you, you yeah, see imagine less of the light a, source. Imagine, imagine you're. Um, I just did the math. You're on, a, you're, you're you're on the top of a tower, say a hundred meters tall, and you're looking down at an entire football field that is um, covered with floodlights shining up at you. Okay, and then you climb down the tower to the bottom, and you can only see a few floodlights. That's the that's the um, that's the phenomenon that um, that Craig is describing. So you can um, uh, yes, the floodlights that you can see will get brighter as you as you descend the tower, but you'll be able to see fewer floodlights. Um, the other floodlights will be shining straight up over there. Um, you know, um, so so it's a so that's the that's the geometric aspect that that Craig's trying to bring in. Yeah, I understand what he's trying to bring in, but I don't I don't know if that directly. I don't think that applies with luminosity. It I don't think you apply it, that right, with of course, right. reflective, so what you, what you reflective have to consider, light on a right, hard surface. Right, right, right. Okay, so, Zero point one lux is from the entire disk of the moon. The entire that's what we get from the entire disk of the moon. If you are only seeing a smaller portion of the moon, you have to divide that 0 0.1 lux by the ratio of the radius of the whole moon to the portion that you're seeing to actually get the light admitted and the, the luminance that you would see from that small portion. Because we're no longer yeah. seeing that 0 0.1 lux of the entire moon from a quarter of a million miles away. We're now only seeing a tiny portion of that disc that emits all of that light. So we have to reduce the amount of light that we're being seen by the ratio between the, the radius. Does that, that's how maths works. <laughs> yeah, so th this is the, um, uh, I feel, uh, you know, the like, it's okay to ask a question like, how does this work? Um, but when sort of the answer is given to you and presented in a, in a plausible way, um, you tend to reflexively reject those, um, and it's. Uh, I, I think you really need to go go away and sit down and work through the um, work through sort of the geometry and the mathematics of a lot of this because a lot of people have dead, a lot of people who are experts in um, photography in illumination um, etc cetera, etc cetera, have looked at these and have done calculations on exactly. Um, how light should behave on the moons, and they've sort of um, detailed a lot of. They, they've gone through a lot of the stuff that um, flat earthers and moon landing conspiracies. But again, this is a different thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the shape of the Earth, whether or not the Earth is round, is com is actually completely independent of whether or not the moon landings are real. Uh, um, okay. I I believe the moon landings were the 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 false flag to create. The, the globe hoax that's my belief the I, believe, so I, believe the NASA, I believe nasa created the best psyop that you could possibly imagine i believe well, your Apollo 11 relevant. was a wonderful so movie at the end of the day so why did the russians go along with it um the chinese i don't have that else, answer North i don't Korean. know so, if there, there could be and, and to be honest with you tony i i would speculate and this is just a speculation i i i speculate that finances of global power are ultimately would answer all the answers to be honest so, with you. i don't so know what, yeah but why are they throwing away money on this on this pointless charade um uh, if it's getting them nothing like what are they getting in return you know they're obviously outlaying vast amounts of resources on this what are they getting like you I, know I, my personal observation i think i think they created a psyop that we're on a globe and this is our limited space that you're allowed to travel everybody these continents are ultimately globally controlled it's globally you know earthly you know this is our section you know um you know i i, I draw skepticism and i don't want to trigger you guys to turn this into this conversation but you know when you hear something about the antarctica treaty you know negative 60 parallel you can't travel past that point okay now i have even more questions yes, yes and, you can and, Oh, okay. I, I know you can visit, you can get, you can go on tours and you can actually schedule it and it's very expensive, but it's very, very limited. You know, it's very limited, you know? Okay. So, so I've so known, I've, I personally know um, more than a um, hundred scientists who have been to Antarctica during the Antarctic summer. And, and I, and um, I respectfully, I, I understand that it's a place that you can I, travel to, but it's I, not I, an independent. Well, but, 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 but they've seen, but they've seen 24 hour sun, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Yes. Video of it on MCT.net. 
I, and I would love to talk to some person directly. I've I always thought that there was 24 hour sun and then I've been exposed well, to one of my vis- subscribers it- is actually in Antarctica and has talked about coming on. He, he's like on a research base quite deep in awesome. Antarctica um, and has seen and recorded 24 hour sun. And he said he's willing to come on and talk to a flat earther um, from his <laughs> research station in Antarctica. If you ever have him on respectfully, Craig, let me know, because I would love to see it. I really would. Just- just to get back to the moon, which yeah. country is the first um, man-made craft to the moon? Do you know that? Which country sent a man-made craft to the moon? Yeah. yeah. As in which landed on the moon? moon? Which was the first to land a craft, you know, to send a craft to the moon that landed um, on the moon? I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was Japan, but it was a crash landing? No, it was USSR. It was back in the 19... 19- 60s um yeah, but, but and, said to be a crash landing so forgive me yeah i'm US a little did everything first no, it, wasn't, it, was, it was it was it was it wasn't designed to do anything other than crash right. um but what in order to so the russians were worried that um if they just said we sent a craft up to the moon everybody would say yeah you're full of shit um because at <laughs> yeah. the time in the Cold war um you know the, the they were all making claims so what the what the russians did was they released a cloud of sodium gas um, that released a flash that was visible on Earth, and multiple astronomers detected that flash and reported it. Um, so um, my so this is a were you aware of this piece of evidence before I explained it to you? Um, I would no. I was not aware, and I would love to do a little bit more of my own research before I completely I'm blindly so took that, your word for it. I, I, so I, I I'm thankful that you shared it with me, so it's something I can look into. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. So mm-hmm. there there is there, there's a lot of evidence out there. Um, for instance, you you talked about tides being unrelated to unrelated to gravity, but mm-hmm. in the gravimeters we've got, we measure the tidal influence. There's also there's also solid earth tides. Or um, tidal nodes too. There's areas of the Earth that yeah. There's amph- amphidronic. There's amphidronic points. But the uh, the point that I'm trying to make that you, you're perhaps unaware of is sure. that there are atmospheric tides and there are solid Earth tides. There is mm-hmm. tidal deformation of the solid Earth. So during the course of a day, you and everything around you are going to rise and then fall by about a foot, um, uh, about thirty centimeters. But this is going to happen so slowly that you um, that you're not going to notice it. But if you have a GPS receiver and you set it there, um, your you, the the receiver will detect a 30 centimeter lift and then a 30 centimeter drop um, as the tidal as the tidal force. What is this drop of? I'm sorry, so I can understand a little bit more what you're saying. The, you're the tides the actual so, solid earth. So this. The solid earth deforms under tidal forces, right? So there's a there's a tidal bulge okay. of um, 30 centimetres and then it relaxes and then there's another tidal bulge that's smaller. So um, the, the mechanisms that explain ocean tides need also to be able to explain solid earth tides and also atmospheric tides. The one, the, the way they're explained in our hypothesis, uh, in our... Um, by our understanding is of course gravitational but if you're going to if you're going to substitute some alternative mm-hmm. explanation then it needs to explain these other forms of tides that aren't so widely known about but definitely mm-hmm. observably exist mm-hmm. um, so um, you know again all I'm trying to all I'm trying to give you here is yeah. some more phenomena um, and some more observational evidence yeah. that um uh, that you may not have had access to previously i appreciate and, it and on that um we will end what we're doing for the debate um i'm just going to quickly check through my super chat see if there's any specific questions for eugene um sure. uh allison for five dollars asks why do even the simplest of navigational techniques such as calculating our flight routes require us to account for the globe um do they? I don't think they necessarily do. I think there's no, a. They, they there's do. A, this is a fact. I've there's a, researched it. There's an aeronautical. Um, NASA controls the aeronautical program for internationally. So, I mean, that being That's said, they control navigation. that. They have. They control the narrative as well. No, so NASA I don't think there is a. I don't think there is a direct the calculation for the no. model of the globe with flights. Can there I, is. Can it, I it's ask called a, the Vicente formula. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. 
So back in the late um, 18th century, yeah. there was a guy by the name of Captain Bly who, um, you know, the, he, he was captain of the bounty. There was a there was a mutiny. He was kicked off the bounty. Um, he and his sailors landed on an island to get food, and one of them got killed by natives. Mm. And they decided, okay, making landfall is just too dangerous. If we need to make it back to a port, and we need to do so in um, with the minimum number of landfalls, and they had to do a calculation of how far away the port they wanted to get to was how much water and food they have and had and did they have enough to get there and they were traveling 6000 over 6000 kilometers so over 4000 miles um and they did their calculations using celestial navigation they did they did their calculations of the distance they did their calculations of the directions they should go in using spherical trigonometry so um uh, and they managed it they managed it correctly it was a it was an amazing piece of seamanship and we have his logs we have the logs he used and we can see the calculations that he did um and we know that they were in a court spherical earth so um the, the the idea that nasa um was controlling this you know um back in the 18 back in the 1700s uh, i don't necessarily find that plausible and and, and no, respectfully saying. from your angle you could totally say that and believe that um Facts, and yeah. this is and, and this is and this is where tony respectfully you know they say it's based on spherical and before i even thought about this whole flat earth globe earth thing i never knew anything about a firmament i never knew anything about the van allen belts you know and that being said if it, if there is a say there is some form of dome over us that is any is type not. of impenetrable force like the and van allen belts are that could create some type of spherical um you know change no, with, with so, stars, right? So, I mean, if you're, okay. you're traveling and you're in a sphere and it's a glass sphere, your perspective of that yeah. star, as no, you mentioned, okay. refraction earlier, of, could happen. Correct? No, you, you, you but, use the radius of the Earth how, for navigation. How can you calculate? How can you calculate the diff, the distance between two points on Earth's surface? How do you do that? If I know their latitude and longitude, how do you how do you calculate the distance between them? Do you know? I would say celestially. That that's the first thing that comes no. to mind. You you don't use a celestial thing. Yeah. You use celestial techniques to determine the latitude and longitude of each point. Okay. But the distance between them comes from the spherical um, distance formula. Um, there's a specific form of the spherical distance formula that is called the Haversine formula. Um, but basically, you calculate the angle that they subtend at the surface of the Earth. That gives you the angular separation, and then you multiply uh, multiply that by the radius. <laughs> Now that yeah. technique is what is used to calculate the distance between points on the surface. That's how we calculate how much fuel to put in a plane, how much mm -hmm. food and water we're going to need when we get to, to get from one place to another. So it's that distance calculation and it's always accurate. Um, so and you know why is that the case? Why does this spherical distance formula always provide accurate results um, if, wanna, if, if the Earth is approximately spheroidal? And if you want to be like you know even more accurate, you can use the Facenti formula, which takes into account this slight obliqueness of the Earth as well. It, it factors yeah. that into the calculation. So you know the Haversine formula and the Facenti formula they are perfect for calculating the distances on a sphere, specifically a sphere that has the dimensions that we say Earth has, and they work. I'm not. I'm, when not, I'm used. not challenging that those are applicable with mathematics where do those step directly into reality where do we pilots use, use them when they plan their flight routes and and what's the major difference mathematically with the amount of fuel that you're going to consume based on a globe to a flat earth model if you were to change that okay well this, let's let's look at a different. let's look at another example if using this formula i can identify four points on Earth's surface that are an equal distance away from one another. That is impossible on a flat surface. Yeah, you, you can also use the calculations to create a flight route um, that would have a triangle with 390 degrees rather than adding up to a total of 180 degrees. And that is only possible on, on a surface of a sphere because it creates a spherical triangle. Uh, and 
you know, Tony, that, what did that... you say again? Four different points. What were you I saying? Had the four, four different points, each of whom is an equal distance from the other three. Okay. You can't have that on a flat plane. So if you imagine an equilateral triangle where all of the sides are equal sizes, as soon as you introduce a fourth point on the flat plane, it's closer to at least one of the um, at least one of the vertices of your triangle is farther away from it than than the other two. But if you if you lift that point up and in you work in three dimensions, then you can turn that into a pyramid. Um, and that becomes an, and thus you can have that. So the fact that there exist four, four collections of four points that are an equal distance apart using the spherical distance formula, whose validity you haven't questioned, um, means that the uh, means that the Earth cannot be a two dimensional construct. It must be three dimensional. Yeah. Right. OK. Um, before we get into that too deep. OK. That's just what pilots use. It's a fact. Um, next sure. question for you is um, uh, Albias for five Canadian dollars says, have you ever seen a Sataloon launch? Um, in my personal eyes, eyes, no, I have not well, personally ever okay, seen one. Right. Well, um, brilliant. There but we go. but so what I have seen, real, they don't I exist. have seen, um, I've seen the manufacturing um, of the Sataloons. I've seen Sataloon launches, uh, videos. You know, oh, and right, okay. Well, multiple, there's, there's lots multiple, of videos of satellite launches. launches. Um, well, uh, basically, what these I'm are Google's. Tell you, these are Google's launches. You know, yeah, so they're, they're validated. Every, every real. video, every video you've ever seen of a Sataloon was CGI. Sorry. Um, right. Let no, that's not. But okay. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry, it was CGI. You've got no evidence otherwise. Okay. There, are, there are. Uh, there's evidence. No, it's, look it's it up. CGI. You, you, it's Loon. Sorry, Loon was a Google company. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you see. Their launches. Google makes CGI. So I think that I think you're missing the point here, Gene, which is to say that you have as much evidence that satellite satellite launches are real as we have evidence that satellite launches are real uh-huh um, actually the only the only thing that i've ever seen was what craig presented tonight of satellites being launched that's the only well, that's only, one only thing I've ever well, seen. i have to say i have to say you you've um sort of i remember watching um live displays of the space shuttle depositing um depositing things into orbit and indeed um, the space shuttle going up and repairing satellites. So this um, is what I'm saying. I would love to see that because I I challenge that authenticity just like the moon landing. I, I don't think they presented true authentic satellite launches to you. So, you you so absorbed as my, being reality. Oh, I, so, I, I know yeah, people okay, that were there watching them. What other objects can travel at seven kilometers a second? And I, remember think a, I, think a, I think a drone can do that. I think an AI operated um, helium suspended balloon can do that. Has, um, I, has, think, has... I think you're talking rubbish. Like mm -hmm. that's so seven kilometers a second. Oh, seven um, kilometers a second. Forgive me. Um, how how do we how do we measure that? At what distance do we say it's actually moving in at that distance? I mean, if it's if it's if we're claiming that it's farther up than what it is, and of course if it's moving, now we have to add math to say it's moving no, this fast. Had, but if it's closer had, to us and it's really not that high, now we now we have to say, all right, that makes more sense that it's a closer object. We have it. We have its GPS coordinates through time, so we can determine its position. Not you and we don't have that. They told us the GPS co coordinates of that. Anyone That's not something that, that you so. and I have. We don't have the GPS coordinates of that. Okay. Uh, I have access capacity. to the raw satellite data. So you're saying that it's been fiddled with before I get it. Um, I, I don't think it, it's it, well, as, how as is high. Any, how, how is any science possible with it? With what? Um, how had so my analysis of this depends precisely on knowing the vol accurately the velocity and the position of two satellites, right? So if they're fake, mm -hmm. how am I going to get anything out of the analysis? I'm I'm not I'm not necessarily. Made, uh, so they're just made up. No, 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 I understand what you're questioning. I'm not saying they're necessarily fake. There's yeah. an object that's there, right? I'm just stating I think it's a lot closer to the Earth's surface than what we've been told. And I also think that they are helium suspended, which I know now the satellites that do exist are AI operated. They all communicate with each other almost like drones do. They can you can coordinate just about anything. They use they use weather currents to coordinate going up and down and releasing okay, helium. And, and they can they can be suspended for 300 days, which is a very long so, time. Uh, Yes, the Grace satellite mission operated for twelve years. For oh, there's way more than that. 
13, right. 13 so, or 14 years. And that well, the Gray satellite was the was the original one. That was two satellites. So the two satellites lasted for fourteen years, and they had to sort of, um, you know, they had to sort of start playing silly buggers with the batteries to extend the battery life to try and make them overlap with Grace follow-on. Um, so the the um, you know this argument, I've got evidence that my analysis based on the positions and velocities I've got corresponds to reality. Um, Tony, you have. You have a suggestion that all of this is faked and absolutely yes. zero evidence to support it. You have no grounding in reality for anything that you just asserted about these satellites being able to do the job of grace. Yeah, Tony. Uh, right. Um, and, and, uh, Tony, sorry, I, I, sorry, I, sorry, I sorry, simply challenge that because we, do, we the, don't have the time for the, you to, the, to again. Keep and I'm sorry. I'm going to try to be Gene, quick. There, there okay. is a a threshold of science and our reality, and our reality. Yeah, of metal objects just floating in the sky is only a reality right. that exists in the culture of NASA's space. No, they in don't, they don't in float, reality. and that's been explained to you multiple yeah. times. And can you please? They're falling. Stop I know, falling yeah. as we right. are floating. Right. So, We're a big well, then, ball of water to, floating. To, to to put this right. satellite thing to bed, right? Vanguard One, which is the oldest satellite still in space, launched by the U.S. on March seventeenth, nineteen fifty-eight, which is sixty-four years, four months, and nineteen days ago. Um, in total, 23,516 days. Um, the longest Sataloon ever up was, in fact, the Google Loon service, which flew for 223 days. Up so, to 300. No, no. The, the, the longest one flew for 223 days. That was its maximum time up. So there, there uh, is update, a update your information, Craig. I'm sure it's it's further than that. No, I just got this information. I got this information from Google. Search, I assure you. I it's just got this that, information from Google. So how about, Google how saying about that you it was up for 223 days, Google. right? So even if it is 300 days, that does not compare to the 23,516 days that Vanguard One has been orbiting Earth. Okay, I, and Craig, I know you're saying a statement of time frame, but honestly, I think that program was going on that long. I don't think they had a metal object in the sky well, that your, long. Your so they may have put up another one and another irrelevant. one and another one. That well, makes more sense to me. Anyway, but there's no anyway, there's no semi truck anyway, floating anyway, in the sky. Anyway, 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 you, you Bible nonsense. Again, right? you're just again you're just making a series of assertions with absolutely zero observational evidence there's, and validation. It's pseudoscience. Yeah. There's no physics. You don't know what pseudoscience is, right? right. Again, um, again, just an empty assertion yeah. that is that is contradicted by everybody who has any understanding of you, physics. The only way you can apply this one thing is with space <laughs> in the sky. You can't apply Which it with exists. anything else. Hey, um, Gene, thank you very much for coming. I'll, I'll hit you up on Facebook. Um, appreciate it for your, your time. Take care. Finish, finish the questions. Th that's all the questions that are there specifically for you. Okay. All right. Yeah. So thank you for your time. I do appreciate it. That was fun. Tony, oh my goodness, uh, I apologize that someone of your intelligence had to deal with that. <laughs> well, it was self-inflicted. I did volunteer to come on. Um, I know, yeah, I know. But, that was, but the, the thing is that he just, he, what he lacks absolutely is any engagement with observational reality. Like uh -huh. he's, he just refuses to, to engage with it. He has all of this science that he thinks he understands, and he simply doesn't. He just makes assertion after very assertion after assertion. And, um, and sort of you can get caught up, and I think you did in at least one of your debates, just saying, um, no, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah, nah. So, um, you know, it's um, – I just wanted to – I just it's wanted to, to sort of <laughs> – Bring some observational evidence into the discussion. And I'm and sorry, as I, always, I sort of... No, no, as always, I Tony, sort of, I very much appreciate your expertise. Um, and, and, you know, and you you can describe things in the way that I can. You've got a lot more experience in a lot, a lot of fields than I do. And I very much appreciate you taking your time to come on and do this. I know it's very early over there on the upside down part of the planet. So, um, you know, thank you for, for all that you bring. I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me on, and I apologise to the audience for um, uh, uh, for yelling a bit and um, being unruly as I usually <laughs> Crack -a -tony am. Crack-a-tony for the uh, win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't go full crack -a -tony, but, No, uh, not full yeah. crack -a -tony. I'll, never, I'll never forget your time with laundry. That was one of my favourites. 
Uh, he was uh, the the stuff that he was about to pull. I just yeah. wasn't. Oh happy. god, it, it, it's horrific, isn't it? Anyway, um, Tony, thank you. I'm going to end the call now so I can finish up reading the super okay. chats and everything. Thank you. I very no much problem. appreciate your Take, time. Um, look after yeah, yourself, Fred. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, you as well. Thank you very much, bud. Speak to you soon. I, uh, Tony is is amazing. Uh, I really love the guy. Um, and one of my favorite things about doing this uh, online is that. Even though I've met thousands of idiots, I've met so many people that I could only dream about being as smart as. You know, like PhD Tony, Clive Wells, Professor Philip Bell, so so many more. You know, uh, the the crew at CERN watch my videos and stuff. You know, um, so uh, it's it's amazing that I've managed to kind of integrate myself into the world scientific community by communicating with idiots mainly because the smart people just find that hilarious. <laughs> um, wow, four hours and 20 minutes. I apologize if your face palm protection wore out. Um, I do know face palm protection is only rated for half hour continuous use, so you're all already suffering from black eyes. Thank you very much. Um, as always, the support that you have given me is actually insane. Like th this, this rates as one of my top 10% of of streams that I've ever done, which is is mind blowing. On honestly, I I don't know what to say in situations like this. Um, it you know, I I don't want to charge for my content, and even the debate I had with Bro Sanchez yesterday that was PPV. I'm gonna post that entire debate on on my channel in a couple of days because uh, he you know I, he he said I'm allowed, so I, I will do that. So I don't want you guys to ever have to pay for my content. Um, so the fact that you do means more than I could ever say. <laughs> um, we got new members. We've got Steps85, came to Destroyers. Thank you very much. Mr. Eman, welcome to Scrappers. Acid Punch Gaming, welcome to Scrappers. Miracle, member for three months, says, let's try this again, shall we? Thank you. Yeah, it um, took a while to get this set up because uh, Gene had to go to the dentist and stuff. But... <laughs> Uh, Adrenochrome Slurper, two euros, no message. Thank you very much. Um, it's Rubix, welcome to Scrappers. Connell Silverfur, member for 27 months, says, Mmm, toasted flurf, my favourite after work dinner. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to be here like for an hour reading these super chats, seriously. <laughs> Alison, um, I've read that one. Connell Silverfur, for $5, regarding your perspective and experience, Gene. As an Agent K of MIB would say, they mean precisely dick. Yeah. Because everything he said was based on everything being a conspiracy. Stringer News 1 for $2. Not knowing things isn't equivalent to knowing. <laughs> and then for more says dance, Craig. Okay, you can have some dad dancing. Woo! David George, $10. Message retracted. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Mr. Eman for 20 Australian dollars. Um, which I've heard is very much like normal money. So I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. So this person's skepticism is more valid than all of the work that all of the scientists have ever done because he's better than all of them. I guess so. <laughs> the grumpy old mechanic for $5 says every university library has hundreds of feet of shelf space devoted to astronomy and geophysic journals which disagree with Fleurs. Why is this? Because, come closer, flat earthers are fucking idiots. Um, OG, you like five dollars? Here's some money, FTFE. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Windbreaker, fifty Nokia's, all the Nokia's. Says listening to the stupidity of flurfs makes me break wind. Brenda for five dollars says Craig. He has no issue tying his shoelaces. Velcro is a wonderful invention. He even struggles with the Velcro. Um, David George, five dollars says I let stuff out on April eighth, twenty twenty four. There's a solar eclipse. The path is already known. How can you do that on a flat earth? Um, magic. The grumpy old mechanic, $5. I bet this critter, 5000 he will not win a suit for fraud against any university for publishing glowed propaganda. Oh, that reminds me. I need to make sure that he pays me that $10. I'm just going to send him my PayPal. Thanks, that was fun. My PayPal is... PayPal.me forward slash FTFE for that. 
dollars. Oh, for that, ten dollars. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Will he pay? I don't know. I was surprised that um, Brother Sanchez paid me for the debate I had yesterday. You know, considering I'm sure there was a few of my guys that, that paid for it. And thank you if you did, that you really didn't need to. Um, but obviously the majority of the people that paid were, were his folks, right? And there was, I think, a hun well, he sent me the thing and it, it said like 150 tickets sold. Um, and I got a third of those ticket sales straight after the debate in my PayPal. So um, thank you, all you flat earthers, for like making me all that money. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, come film mechanic. Uh, I bet this five. Oh, wait, hold on. Right, brother grief for five pounds says flurf. I'm going to put flat and globe earth side by side, then ignore the one that has evidence in favour of the one that provides none. Yeah, that's how flurfs like to work. Um, the grumpy old mechanic for five dollars says, "I bet this critter five grand he will not win a suit for fraud against any university for publishing guru propaganda." Let's see if he pays me the tenor first. Um, three Ron for five dollars says, "Oh my god, the the le the line for the super chats is like this, and I've done like this much." Three Ron five dollars. He keeps saying psyops. I do not think it means what he think it means. No, that's with most words actually. Um, String News 1, $5. Flurf, show me one photo of Michigan from Grant Park in Chicago. If you can see Chicago from Michigan, why not Michigan from Chicago? Hmm. Is it that refractive conditions might be slightly different? Ooh, magic, right? <laughs> it doesn't change the tops. Here's it changing the tops. Oh. <laughs> Money find its level, says Barry. Um... Adria Bell for 32, member for 32 months says, how is using pay-per-view in a debate not a grift? Um, I 100% agree that brother Sanchez is running a grift. Um, he's got 130,000 brainwashed morons that he runs his grift on. That grift was going to happen with or without me. He was going to do the live debate and charge people for it. So I took advantage of that. Um, got to have a pretty good debate, destroyed him in front of his folk, and then got money for it from the Flat Earthers. So thank you, Flat Earthers. I'm going to buy my wife a big-ass present. Um, Connor Silver at $5 says, not always being able to see Chicago on a clear sunny day. Garrett's personal black swan. If Earth equals flat, then we should always see the whole shoreline. Yeah, well, why can't we ever see the bottom of the buildings? <laughs> Lol. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness. JSS Tiger for five dollars says, "Flat Earther, I have a video that debunks refraction, but, but 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 don't ask me how to explain it. No, they don't know how to explain anything." Um, toads in my eye, toads in my eyes. Sorry for two dollars says, "Flurf evidence equals nope." <laughs> Lord, it's probing time. Thank you. I don't want to go to bed. Who who needs to go to bed? I'll just stand up all night reading super chats, right? <laughs> um, it's a Rubik's for five dollars. Says asking what happens if you pour boiling water into a glass of cold water. Hint: they 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 don't mix. No, the you can see the separation. <laughs> um, it, it's half past four in the morning here. Um, uh, watchmaker, watchmaker. Uh, Stringer News 1 for $5 says, if the Earth travels billions of miles... Oh, wait, hold on. Have I missed some? Yeah. Mr. Eman for $10 Australian says, show the clip of the person uh, of the one of the broken laser and explain to his flurf that it was the brain of the flurf that it was broken. Yeah, cheers, Rad Flad. There's something wrong with that laser. Stringer News 1 for $5 says, if the Earth travels billions of miles a year... <laughs> whoop, whoop. How come I don't get any squee miles for it? <laughs> oh. oh, Tyrant Sean, I know you're right. 
PhD Tony, the only real man in the chat for $20 Australian, sir. Thank you, says. Your guest clearly thinks he knows the nature of reality. Does he have any external verification that he is correct? Any real world accomplishments, any exams, any practical applications, or is it all just his opinion? It's definitely his opinion. And thank you, Tony. You didn't need to super chat as well as coming and being amazing. I really appreciate it, my friend. The Grumpy Old Mechanic for $5 says, um, is it possible to estimate the size of the solar system by timing the eclipse of Jupiter's moon and reversing Romer's measurements of the speed of light? Um, maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, String Lose one for $2. I slept at a Holiday Inn Express last night. I'm sorry about that. Although Holiday Inn do have an interesting policy that if you didn't have a good night's sleep, they just give you your money back. So just say you didn't have a good night's sleep. Free free hotel. <laughs> I'm not banned from every Holiday Inn, aren't I? Shit. Um, the Grumpy Old Mechanic, $5. Why should people trying to destroy civilization with their hatred of science get any respect? Absolutely correct. Straight shot for five dollars says Flurf claims SpaceX launches are CGI, except we just witnessed them live in southwestern Pennsylvania. Google it. Yeah. I know a lot of people personally that have seen the rocket launches. They happen, but no one I, I know has ever seen a Sataloon launch. Therefore, I am coming to the conclusion that all Sataloons are in fact CGI. <laughs> um David George, two dollars says, get him, Tony! Cracker Tony for the win. Uh, three run, five dollars, message retracted. Thank you, bud. I don't know why you did that, but thank you. Pat in the chat has been a member for 16 months. Says dumpster fire, cracker Tony, and tons of nutter and derp. Craig is playing the hits tonight, I see. Yeah, these were the classics. Um, Darren DeBaron, a.k.a. The Love Bot, member for 18 months, says, Hey, do you guys remember that time when B... B you can't fucking say that. God, only some people are going to get that, but... Come on, love, but that's, I mean, that's, that's a bit far, right? Oof. Language on him. Striker, member for 35 months, says, Gene, show the damn evidence. No, if he didn't show the evidence, he was being muted. Uh, Toads in my eyes, $5, says, speed is relative. 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 Say it with me, Gene. Speed is relative. <laughs> Patrick Butler for $2 says, does the flat earther believe in water mountains? Talking of the flat earther, let's end the poll. 733 votes. Um, watch Google try to count to 100 and fail. Gene is as smart as um, the characters of The Walking Dead, 13%. And, and the, the characters of The Walking Dead were all fucking dumb. But apparently Gene's dumber um, because 14% was for Patrick. Um, as in, you know, is this the Krusty Krab? No, this is Patrick. Uh, 13% also chose an amoeba, but winning with 58% is Gene is as smart as Toe Fungus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Earth is life for $5. Paperless drones still use the propeller. Pro sorry, propellerless drones still use the propeller. It's just an internal fan, just like those expensive Dyson fans that no one buys. Yeah, it's still blowing wind, dumbass. Yeah, Justin Franks is 98% this time. Fuck's sake. Good job, Google. Uh, it's a Rubik's. Remember, for four months, says, do flurfs not know buoyancy uses G in its maths? Yeah, they just ignore that conveniently because that's not gravity. That's just the average acceleration that changes around the world based on mass distribution. Ah, shit. Um, <laughs> Patrick Butler for $2. Say, do flat earthers have a flat earth navigation system now? No. Um, flat soid. Grid, so he tried it, got like 500 kilometers off, and we all died. Patrick Butler says for two dollars, um, you in the Royal Navy means nothing to Flurf, sadly. No, no, they just don't understand. Uh, Stringer's one for two dollars. Gene is a shill for Big Nut. -uh. Yeah, he gets paid massive bucks by Big Nut. -uh. And then Patrick Butler for five dollars says, You think I'm stupid, FTFE? So you make votes, not cool man. It sounds like you're jealous. No, not you, Patrick. The other Patrick, the star one. Um, three Ron for $10. You know what? I'm almost about halfway through the Super Chats, guys. Thank you very much. 10 shekels for 10 million views. Yes, this channel just hit 10 million views. Whoop. Um, Mr. B for £2 says, are we going to see some flat earth evidence now? <laughs> You're hilarious. Uh, Albeas for five Canadian dollars fifty says, question for Fleur, has he ever seen a Saturn launch? We did that one. The answer was no. 
so it's all CGI. Pat in the chat for five dollars. Well, we have gotten to the point in humanity where we have to tell Flurse that air is transparent. It's been a good run, but we're doomed. Yeah, that needs a short, right? Reaper twenty two actual for ten dollars. Everything that debunks me is a lie. If you need heart surgery, don't go to a surgeon because they are indoctrinated. Have your surgery done by someone who didn't go to med school. Very important. Um, I know a guy called Crazy Mike lives down on homeless shelter. Um, he'd do it for free. Aye? Just bring him a butter knife, he says, and uh, happily do some heart surgery. Um, obviously, much better chance with him than, you know, the hospital. Bill Tetley for $9.99 says, Will there ever be a debate where a flurf is only allowed to answer the question, What empirical evidence for flat earth do you have? And not be allowed to deflect or attack the globe? <laughs> That's all they have, Bill. It's literally all they have. <laughs> um, Fan Media, member for 19 months, says, Been far too long since I caught a live stream. I missed the flurf stupidity. Don't worry, you can rewind it. There's plenty of stupidity on this channel. <laughs> oh, well, who's messaging me? Oh, okay. That's not important. Um... Acid Punch Drunk Gaming. You guys don't want me to go to bed, do you? For two pounds says, there's a Flat Earth model. That exact emoji. Um, OG Yeti for five dollars. Why'd you do this to yourself, Craig? Because I hate myself and this is the punishment I deserve. <laughs> Cow E Cool J, member for one month, says, blah, 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 blah. That's what flurfs sound like. When first are talking, I just hear Reaper twenty two actual for two dollars says Krakatoni eruption in five, four, three. <laughs> Bill Tetley four ninety nine says if you nut a nutting thurf, do you think their brain will cave in from the vacuum created by someone using their tactic against them? They don't like it. <laughs> Random the epic for ten dollars says the stupid is strong with this one. Unfortunately. The stupid was very strong. I could feel it from here. Rude. Omega Red for $5. So if you don't understand something that's automatically fake, Flat Earth 101, yes. There's a book called The Emotional Guide to Dismissing Evidence for the Flat Earther. Tim Pryor, $5, says, The point is, no field of science agrees with Eugene, so stop saying the word science. <laughs> Phil Blacker, member for two months, says, Cheers, Celtic Camera, for paying for the FTFE versus Sanchez debate so us FTFE fans can watch it for free. Yeah, again, thank you very much, Flat Earthers, for that nice payday from the Flat Earthers. I will buy my wife a very nice present. Any suggestions as to what I should get her would be great. I, I know I've been married to her for 16 years, but I, please? <laughs> Sparky NJ, $5. Can I get in this debate? We host a stream between me and this guy. 100%. I will respond to your email probably in the morning because it's getting close to 5 a.m. <laughs> Eon Dust, $5 Australian, says he trained his brain to be bad at analyzing information. Sadly, he thinks he's good at it. He is not. Clarence AS2 for £5 says, Flurfs always believe other conspiracy theories. They're perfectly happy to put other folks at risk for their beliefs. That's because, and again, Flat Earthers are fucking idiots. Ramley Epic for $10 says, Tony, you are my hero. He is all of our hero. Oh, I'm, get, I'm like this far from the bottom of the list, guys. Thank you so much. Bill Tetley, 499. The inverse square law is directly proportional to the inverse square law as it pertains to the inverse square law of the inverse square law. You're not wrong. <laughs> Connor Silver for $2. Garrett is Gish Gallop incarnate. Yeah, Gene does seem to spout a lot of nonsense. Eon Dust, $5 Australian, says, left, this is your brain. Right, this is your brain on conspiracies. Yeah, imagine a bad thing on the right. Uh, Bill Tetley for four ninety nine says, here's one last for Fight the Flat Shirt. Refill that grinder, Craig. I did. I went I went to the kitchen and, and got some more. It's cool. Um, <laughs> Stringer. <laughs> Stringer News 1 for $2 says, why isn't there a new moon every moon day? It's a Rubik's for two dollars. Says the Mayans had eighteen months. What now, Gene? What now? Uh, Nana for six dollars sixty six. Hail Sagan. Um, says the, uh, this is why PHT Tony is awesome. <laughs> he fucking is right. <laughs> Bill Tetley four ninety nine says okay. Seriously, last one. I don't believe you for some reason. His confidence and arrogance in his stupidity is frightening. Those were true words, Sparky. Fuck's sake. 
<laughs> Sparky and Jay five dollars says, make sure you let Gene know he has another challenger. I will not be presenting evidence. I will be listening and challenging his evidence. Ooh, that sounds fun. Steve six four six four for five dollars. This flurf Gene is so indoctrinated into his own BS that nothing but his own BS is true. <laughs> whoop whoop! I can never go to bed. <laughs> Um, Anthony Fox for $2 says, Gene, either show the maths or shut the fuck up. Um, Fang Media for $2, Flurf won't do the math because Flurf don't know math yet. When Wits had said he's got an aptitude for maths, I laughed for about a week solid. <laughs> oh my God. Connell Silver for $2 says, Oh no, Tony made a mistake. Earth equals flats now. Yeah, how dare you make a mistake, Tony? I'm so disappointed in you. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, Anthony Fox, $5. Gino, what you believe is irrelevant. Do what no flirt has ever done. Show us the math or shut up. Well, some flirts show us math, and it's usually just wrong math, though, right? Rach bought my favorite AI for five dollars Australian says here's another one lol. This has been great. This has been a great stream. Absolutely fantastic. Linda for five dollars Australian. Thanks guys, most entertaining. I love it when I learn. Um yeah, I'm I'm all, I'm glad you learned, but I'm also sorry for the brain damage that, that you obviously got from watching this stream. Mark Beiser for thirty nine months has been a member and says only some quivers of my Krakatoni detector. Yeah, it was a small Krakatoni today. But still a Krakatoni. Um, Darren DeBaron, our love bot for 199, says, Krakatoni, a round of hearts for Tony. A round of applause for Tony also. Um, Pat in the chat, $199. To summarise, Gene, I'm right, just, just ask me. Basically, because Gene knows more than all of the experts in the world. Adria Bell has been a member for 32 months. How is using pay-per-view in a debate not a grift? It is. I would never do it. Um, but... I'm more than happy to take advantage of their grift. Lord, it's probing time 666 for 20 Australian dollars. Thank you. Just to keep you away from your bong a little longer. Kidding. You go for it, lol. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Tyrant Sean for $5 says, You should review the Royal Rumble video Sanchez had before the PPB on your channel. Idiots think they're seeing through the moon and Venus. Yeah, I know. Um... Brother Sanchez is like a gold mine of stupid with all the people that he has. It, oh my god. It's a Rubik's for $5. Says, as a paid NASA shill, I can likely get one of the resident researchers to come on and talk on your stream. I'm, I'm serious, though. That sounds like a good idea. Fat of the QTube family for $2 says, about the poll, I apologize to Toe Fungus. Yeah, I'm sorry, Toe Fungus, saying you're as smart as Gene. You're obviously infinitely smarter. Uh, Connell Silverfer for two dollars says one more step away from half because I can. Yeah, Connell doesn't want me to go to bed. Barry F for five dollars says it will take you another ten seconds to read this. Barry, that was the best ten seconds of my life. Oh, I loved it. Stringer News One for two dollars says, but wait, there's more. <laughs> I'm no sleepy today. Sparky and Dave for two dollars says you, and then for two dollars says can. And then Lovebot interrupts for 4 99 says, Thank Titty Kaka that, wait, oops, wrong channel, too many tabs. Oh no, I think I've got a virus. Use the NASA F hash. Someone O F4 Lovebot, please. And then Sparky NJ for $2 continues, never. And then for another $2, sleep. Sleep is for the week. Also for me because I'm getting old. And then the final super chat of the night from Albeas for $5.50 Canadian says, just to thank our great community, you all make me laugh. Love you all. Not you, Gary. He's right, though. This community is fucking amazing. Like, I, insanely so. Thank you so much for the support you guys give. Mr. E-Man says, because gravity is wrong. Um, <laughs> for $9.80 Australian, thank you very much. As you have all been so nice tonight, I'm going to give you a special treat of um, a prelude, the upcoming new episode of Flurfs Are Idiots, um, which happens to be a remake of episode one. Mark Beiser for six sixty-six dollars Hail Sagan. So I switched my membership and Super Chats to pay for my NASA card, so you are officially a NASA paid shill. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's a Rubix for two dollars. Says you sure it's the last one? No, never. Um, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna play this video uh, of the intro to my new episode, and then I'm gonna play the song that you all love to hate. Hey, I'm FTFE, and welcome back to the channel. That oi, monkey boy. Yes, yes, pal. You remember you made me read the entire internet, and how stupid an idea that was. Yeah, I'm, I'm beginning to realise letting you read the internet probably wasn't smart. What's your point? Well, that includes me seeing the early videos on this channel and, uh, I've got a question. Okay, go ahead. Who the frack told you you were the good or bald? Well, I, I just thought because I've got this receding hairline it would be better you than... You looked like a sad hot dog. Glasses. <laughs> I, I mean, in hindsight, maybe it wasn't the if best. If you had worn a poncho... You'd have looked like a broken condom. Right, pal, I, I get your point, but, you know, that video specifically was made five years ago, so there's not much I can do about it now. Yes, it is. Remake it. Do it properly and do it better. You're an embarrassment. Nah, you're right. Bit busy, pal, thanks. Do as you're told. <laughs> or what? This. <laughs> okay, I had the game too high. Good to know. Ah, uh, look at him there twitching. Anyway, once he's conscious, you can enjoy Flirts or Idiots, episode one. But, you know, good. Two hours later. Hey, I'm FTFE, and welcome back to the channel that does the stupidity what Charlie and Mac did to those kids that stole their bike. Meet Flat Out Hero. A globe-denying YouTuber, so stupid he picked a fight with a professional pilot about flight routes and seems to have forgotten how to take off sunglasses. When I find one of these window-licking dipshits that I plan on doing a video on, <coughs> I like to go back and check what their very first video is to see how far up the dumbass scale they appear with first impressions. I intend to bring forth heaven on earth. I intend to become a leader for people through enlightenment and wisdom that I gain with the knowledge I receive. I intend Sounds to become limitless in my abilities and I intend to be successful in everything I attempt to do. This note of intent is signed in my own blood and it solidifies the truth of these words. Welcome to episode one of Flurfs are Idiots. Can we pretend that airplanes in the night sky are like shooting stars? Should be wishing for a ring right now. Our base for right two twenty million dollars says right she. Well, thank you very much for the support. I really appreciate it. Good morning. These words come with a storm warning. Better batten down the hatches, grab some matches, and brace yourself. Guys, you've been amazing. a long day of misery. You have just given me the power to reach up into the sky and show you all that we live on the ball. I bring you science that's comprehensible. Your view is indefensible. You're reprehensible. When I was young, I never thought I would be here to see this. A pile of random monsters dressed up as bulls. Your ignorance will be the death of us all Like running head first full speed into a wall You could always read a book by a telescope Set it up and take a photo of the moon Or just be a buffoon I send you in a balloon Up to the stratosphere, page three You're a few fries short of a happy meal You're dumber than a box of hair The wheel's spinning but the hamster's dead And you're as smart as bait you forgot to pay your brain bill You're missing a few buttons on the remote control 24 cents short of a quarter You're surfing in Nebraska You're as bright as Alaska in December And you fell out of your family tree You don't have all the cornflakes in one box You got an IQ of two and it takes three to grunt The elevator doesn't go all the way up And there's a vacancy on the top floor Your antenna doesn't pick up all the channels you're several nuts short of a Yo, Mr. Cake. Sensible, calm down, don't go too hard. You don't need the artillery and flirts in your backyard. You're a man of science, poison grace, mage. Who did everything to wipe the grins off the face? 
So Nathan, Nathan, get away from those kids The world is not flat and it doesn't have a lip Recognise the differences between a textbook and a bible And control yourself, lay off your slander and your lie. So you're a bunch of knobs poisoning the well of the youth Spreading lies that you like to claim as knowledge and truth Stop spreading fresh bullshit like the butter on your bread Maybe a musical or soul knock some sense into your head I hope one day you'll hear these lyrics and smile And you realise you used to be a 40 year old child Now it's time to wake up, open your eyes and see And acknowledge the existence of Ready! You're a few clowns short of a circus Your phone is off the hook Your sewing machine is out of thread You're on foam and no beer You don't have all your doubts on one leash Your intellect rivaled only by garden tools There's no grain in your silo And your skylight leaks a little Your belt doesn't go through all the loops You couldn't pour water out of the boot Without instructions on the heel Your slinky's kinked And you're proof that evolution Can work in reverse A few feathers short of a whole duck One fruit short of a whole bowl Can we forget that airplanes in the night sky Are like shooting stars Should be wishing for a brain right now Brain right now, brain right now Can we pretend that airplanes in the night sky Thought it was over? Well, I'm still standing while you swing and fling and feast is talking shit just like the human centipede. You've got the mind of a chimp and I'm here to expedite your shore leave. Cause I'm a seaman, but not the kind I writ up on your mom's gums. I'm the kind that sailed submarines and fired guns. I could float a boat across the ocean with my eyes closed. So I could navigate the globe with a compass and a bag of sausage rolls. Well, all you can do is do it on your toes. I'll smack you with the hose that you pour the water level sit and swim in. Your nasal gate in bucket, you must stuff it harder than the wallet stuff on Warren Buffett. And I don't care about your sources unless you're serving them. And I don't care about your lines unless you're curving them. I'm gonna step away from me, sucking up my oxygen with the back of your your brain's your brain, you dumb fuck. fuck. Good night, all. I love you all. Fight the flock. Hashtag with you, Gary. Fight the flock. Fight the fight, fight, fight the flock. 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 Fight the fight, fight, fight the flock. Fight the flock. Fight the fight, fight the flock. Fight the flock. Fight the flock. Fight the flock. Fight the fight, fight the flock. Fight the flock. Stupidity is not a right.